Yeah, good morning and a warm welcome to viewers on Lanks TV, live from Southport and Burtdale Cricket Club. It's another beautiful, warm day for the second day of Lancashire against Hampshire in the LV County Championship. Not a cloud in the sky. Again, it is beating hot on this uh, Monday morning. And uh, we are broadcasting from just in front of the tennis uh, pavilion. There we are, um, and underneath two brollies uh, that are well secured, uh, thanks to uh, the excellent work of George Franks, uh, Lancashire's uh, outstanding photographer. We had a bit of a brolly incident, but we'll, we'll brush over that, shall we, Kevin? Good morning, mate. Yes, yeah, very good morning. Yeah, it's uh, the, the umbrellas are. Are tight. It might not look tight if you're watching the no, TV, but the, believe me, they are much more secure than yesterday. <laughs> and we're very confident they will stay where they are yes. all day. Well, I hope so, because today is a day where there's little shade around the ground. It's a hot day. So um, if you are coming, if you're planning on being here a little bit later on uh, today, then it's advisable to bring a hat and some sun cream. There's not much shade around. If you can position yourself underneath a tree, that's probably about the best you can do. Uh, as for the game, well, uh, Lancashire enjoyed an outstanding first day and they're going to resume their first innings on 139 uh, for George Balderson, the only batter out so far for 51 ball by Liam Dawson. The players are heading out uh, to the middle. Hampshire certainly, Kevin, will be hoping that uh, it's not a long, hot day in the field. Yeah, poor day for them yesterday. Great day for uh, Lancashire and, yeah, Hampshire are way, way behind the eight ball here. And uh, I think we did see, I mean, to very quickly sum up the wicket yesterday, there was a little bit of help for the Lancashire bowlers. They certainly gave themselves every opportunity to bowl uh, Hampshire out, which they did. And um, through some very good batting, and I think just the nature of the wicket as the day went on, it appeared to get a little flatter. And uh, the Hampshire's much vaunted seam attack need to find something here because very quickly on day two, they could find themselves even further behind and then they are under massive pressure for the rest of this game. Yeah, the, 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 that, that trio that they've, that they've got Hampshire um, in, their, in their seeming attack, is, as we know, is, 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 is outstanding. has been a fantastic success, hasn't it? Abbott, Abbas and Barker. But I wonder how much do you think spin's going to play a part because so, it's that they are three spinners that hampshire have named so they're going to have to bowl you would think quite a bit today well they are yes one uh, spinner named named in the lancashire side so you can see what they think about the wicket and three named in the hampshire side so you can see the opposite view uh, who's right uh, at the moment the seamers have dominated the game or certainly up until lancashire batted they dominated the game uh, hampshire brewing the fact that they dropped phil salt on four uh, it was a very simple slip catch one you would expect to be taken 49 times out of 50 and Phil Salt I think has looked particularly good 76 not out uh, we know him as a white ball player we, we see him thrash the ball around but actually we saw him yesterday in red ball cricket play a proper innings where he defended when he needed to defend and was very quickly on the attack when the ball was sort of near near that area I thought it was a very very good knock but he should be back in the hutch he shouldn't be walking out this morning no no he shouldn't yeah a chance that I'm sure Hampshire were ruining last night Kevin so it's uh, Barker to uh, Phil Salt. And Barker comes in, left arm over and bowls. First ball of the morning and Salt is immediately off the mark. Strokes that through extra cover. Mason Crane again is fielding in the deep. At deep point, so he's running around away to our left. They think about three. They decide on two and the deficit now between these uh, two uh, is down to just a single. Yeah, it was excellent work with the, with the, with the bat by Lancashire yesterday and I agree with you Kev I thought Salt was outstanding it's just a really really impressive knock that ability to I mean, he's been playing white ball cricket for months and months T20 cricket but yeah. he was a, a great example that you, you, you can go from one format to the other uh, he was pretty immaculate in defence he chose his attacking shots really well it's a very impressive innings yesterday I'd be hoping to go on and get a big score today well you wouldn't bet against it would you really I mean this wicket is probably going to play at its best for a while yet so Lancashire can cash in here and get a long way ahead of Hampshire 78 salts on Hampshire just tinkering with the field on the offside trying to get that right because salt's been particularly strong through there here comes Barker in once more right to left as we look and he edges oh it's gone through third slip there's two slips in the gully and it's gone in the gap that's gone across salt there he's driving at that one but the edge has gone in the gap. Yeah, it did. 
you know, slightly frantic spin around the shoulder, wasn't it, from, from looking over his shoulder from Phil Salt. Ball disappeared between second slip and that, that gap to third slip. We'll see it back on the re replay now. It's a positive looking shot from Salt, that little look over the shoulder. It was, wasn't it? He was concerned. And he was worried. He needn't have been, because Lancashire now are ahead by three with nine first innings wickets remaining. And 82 now to Phil Salt as Barker comes in once more and bowls. Salt's on the back foot. Perfectly straight back presented as it goes up towards uh, mid off. Yeah, it was a real feature, wasn't it, of Salt yesterday? That really calm approach to defence. It was, he felt kind of utterly in control, didn't he, really, for the, when he was out there batting yesterday? Just that one mistake in the first over, and after yeah. that, he was virtually immaculate, wasn't yeah, it? It was, yeah. Keaton, who? Luke Wells, who? <laughs> you got Phil Salt. <laughs> Keaton Jennings, I saw just uh, walking across the pitch before the start of the game, talking to Carl Abbott as Barker comes in again, and it's another good length ball, but Salt's equal to it. Top score for Lancashire of 97 for Phil Salt. So he's uh, contemplating the possibility of uh, his first. Uh, first class century for Lancashire, it would, if he gets there, be the fifth of his career. Parker's just taking his time to walk back to his mark. Still wicketless, Keith Barker overnight. Uh, he was uh, eight overs, none for 44. A few more this morning to add on to that. He goes to cart, misses. Bit of extra bounce there from Barker as it goes through to Ben Brown. It's called a wide. Mm. That's the umpire, Neil Mallander, with his arms outstretched. Signaling, waiting for the scorers to acknowledge. They are yet to, are oh, they've just acknowledged. So a wide there from Barker takes the total into 146 for one, having started at 139 for one. We're in the first over of day two. Promises to be a little hotter, a couple of degrees or so. As Barker comes in again, bowls and Salt leaves that one alone. Outside of the off start, no swing for Barker at all. It's just going across the right hander at the moment. Fortunately for Hampshire, as we saw in the last couple of hours of the day yesterday, that this wicket is not holding as many demons, although there wasn't a lot of demons when Lancashire were bowling, but certainly not many now. And it's going to be a day of toil looks that way. for the same bowlers. Yeah, it potentially looks that way. The spinners are going to have to play a really, really big part here, aren't they, for, for Hampshire? They are. Let's just hope it's dried up even more overnight as Barker bowls edge. That's a good diving stop in the gully by Fletcher Middleton, takes the pace off the ball. As the ball goes out towards Crane, throws the ball in, two runs are taken. And that will be the end of the first over of the morning with uh, Lancashire on 148 for one. Salt has 84, 12 to Bahannon, who uh, didn't face a ball in that over. And uh, that lead now is nine. We're not on our own today, Kevin. Probably I thoroughly enjoyed spending all day with you yesterday. Mm. But we've got help today, which is nice. We've got Callum Flynn, who's with us again for Lancashire supporters. Um, I've known Callum, he's been with us for a couple of games now through the early part of this season for Hampshire fans. Callum is the captain of England's uh, disability team and he's part of our commentary team today. So we'll bring Callum in in about half an hour or so. So uh, we've got additional, additional help for the past today, which is always nice. Got uh, Mohamed Abbas to open up the bowling from the Grove in the road end, albeit. Mike on the PA described it as being the Paul Edwards memorial end, something like that. Over the Paul, he's Edwards. still alive. Well, I thought that. Yeah, I thought it was a bit harsh. The Paul Edwards tennis court end or something like that. Yeah, cricket writer whose club this is, he just lives around the corner. So he runs away from the, uh, the tennis court. Some balls. Oh, that's chipped Ooh. away into the onside by Bohannon, bouncing just in front of uh, Mason Crane at mid wicket. Looped up, and for a second, Crane was in the game. Bounced maybe two or three yards in front of the uh, Hampshire leg spinner. Maybe the first uh, example today of uh, the two pace nature in the pitch. Yeah, yeah there's just a little, perhaps, example of that through the course of yesterday, wasn't there? Yeah. But Lancashire consistently bowled a really good uh, line and length and just kept the pressure up all day. It's chopped away by Barnum. Bouncing out to Backwood Point where Felix Organ fields and there's no run. Yeah, a few of the edges sort of dropping short yeah. of the slips when the others sort of going through at a nice 
nice pace. But uh, you've got to remember that uh, starting day two, this ball is already into its 37th over, so it's not like Hampshire was starting with a new ball yet. That's true. Quite an abrasive outfield too, isn't it? You think you're going to get uh, battered a little bit through the course of the day. Shot. Runs for Bahn and cut away through the offside. In front of square, and towards the, uh, the boundary. For four runs, brings up uh, Lancashire's 150 as well, 152 for one. Bahannon's out there actually, which is good to see. He got a nasty blow on the arm, didn't he, at the back end of yesterday. It's quite a long stoppage while uh, Bahannon's forearm was uh, was assessed by Sam Byrne, the Lancashire physio, but thankfully nothing untoward kind of developed from that overnight, and he's okay to resume. Leaves this ball from Abbas, taken by Ben Brown. And there is uh, no run. One five two for one, so the lead of ten. 42 all out. What was the view from the, the Hampshire camp last night, Kevin? Um, well, uh, uh, poor day, okay. bad day, yeah. uh, and other uh, sort of adjectives that would uh, right. go around that. Yeah, I mean, they know, they know they've had a bad day. It happens, unfortunately, but uh, it's how you come back from that. Abbas comes over the wicket and balls to behind and left. Taken by Brown. Again, there's no run. I think what was very interesting, apart from the fact that one side <laughs> selected three spinners and one side selected one, is that <laughs> even though Lancashire won the toss and put Hampshire in, Hampshire would have batted. Yes. Yeah. Now, when you see the way the pitch played first two sessions and then the last session, taking nothing away from how well Salt and Bahannon played, that really, you know, Hampshire had the hardest part of the pitch to play on. The bass to... Bohannon just shuffles back into the crease, leaves it to the gloves of Ben Brown. It's the end of the over, four off it, that uh, shot that Bannon carved away through the offside for four. So he's on 16, Salt on 84. One, five, two for one, lead of 10 for Lancashire. The other problem Hampshire have, as well as being way behind in the game, is that you, you, you just look at the respective run rates. In the Hampshire innings, they were scoring at less than two and a half and over. So that's just how much hard work it was for them. Their innings uh, ending in the 61st. And Lancashire here, are scoring over four and over. So the run rate itself is a bit of a problem for Hampshire because the game just gets away from them a bit too quick. But it just shows that how much easier Lancashire are handling the situation and, and the batting conditions than Hampshire did. Here's uh, Barker, he's bowling to uh, Salt. Salt as he edged that nearly through to the keeper. He was having a little flick at that one outside the off stump. It was a wee bit of good fortune went Lancashire's way yesterday too. I mean, Balderson got a very nice 50, didn't he? But he played and missed it quite a few. Did. A little bit of a good look along the way, perhaps. Yeah, the new ball did a little bit, yeah, Hampshire, no doubt yeah. about that. And, um, yeah, on another day, I mean, as well as he played, he would probably have been out for a few. But uh, on the day that Hampshire were having, it was really going to happen. Weird how that could happen, isn't it? It is, yeah. Match situation dictates the luck that you have, isn't it? Here's uh, Barker, box to Salt. That was left alone outside the Austin. Got wide and sort of got even wider. Yeah, he's angling it across the right hander here. I mean, Salt hasn't started quite as confidently as he played yesterday, but again, that happens overnight. It's, you know, you feel a little bit different at the crease, and the match situation which you get wrapped up in probably takes a little time just to sort of get into it again, but uh, Salt looked very compact yesterday. Not, maybe not quite so in these early stages. Barker looking to exploit the angle across the right-hander, comes in again, and bowls, and salts off the back foot. That's gone out to point. How many times has he played that shot? That's why Hampshire have the deep point. That's Mason Crane there. And that position has been employed virtually the whole time Salt has been out there. It's clearly an area that uh, he favours, but clearly in an area that Hampshire want to keep the runs down to a minimum. Quite happy to give them a single, but don't want to be conceding too many boundaries through that spot. It's probably an element of um, probably an element to what we saw yesterday, wasn't it, with regards to boundaries that were conceded? And there was quite a few. Yeah. It's probably a little bit too 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 many for Hampshire's liking. The scoring rate was, as you say, kind of four and over. There was 12 boundaries for, for Balderson in his 51. There's just too many of that, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, you know, in a four-day game, four and over is too much. Yeah. You know, in, in no matter what the situation, even if Hampshire were on top, it's, it's still a few too many. Yeah. Two, you know, just over two, which Hampshire, which Lancashire kept Hampshire down to. That, you know, that's manageable, isn't it? Even if you're not taking wickets for a little while, yeah. the, the game's not moving very far forward as 
That's turned away by Bahanon on the leg side down to a deep backward square where Mohamed Abbas is fielded. It was 35 overs yesterday and we had 24 fours, something like that, wasn't it? It's in, it's in that. Yeah, it's too many. In that region. Yeah, there was just not really much sense. I think towards the. I think when Balderson got out, there was a period where you felt like there was a bit of control there for the Hampshire bowlers, but there wasn't much before. And uh, even with a new ball that did a bit, there was a bit of good fortune for a couple of player misses. Still, you felt there just wasn't much control, really. That's right. It's Salt back on strike to Barker, who bowls, and Salt's just played that way on the onside. He's trying to play that a little straighter. Bahannon has 17, Salt 85. They started on 12 and 76 respectively, just about 11 minutes ago. So the runs are still flowing. Mm. A couple of plays and misses from Salt, being an edge. You get value for it, though, here, won't you? It's a piece of pretty quick outfield. Do. Still very straw coloured. It is. And it will get even browner by the end of today, I should imagine. Somebody was suggesting there might be a thunderstorm later on, or late on. So, oh, he tries to cut that one, and that's gone through to Ben Brown. Uh, Salt is not quite his uh, compact self that he was yesterday. 154 for one at the end of that over. A Lancashire lead on the first innings by 12. Well, I mean, the, the, um, there is a, a, a weather kind of warning for the possibility of thunderstorms, but it, it suggested nothing until kind of after 6 o'clock on the Met Office website. Well, hopefully with three spinners in the Hampshire side, we'll be off the pitch yeah. by then. <laughs> Quite a long day, isn't yeah. it? Was it we about 25 to 7 or something like that? It yeah. didn't help, of course, because Bahannon had that painful yeah. blow, which took a quite a few minutes to get sorted, which is fair enough. But it was about 25 to 7, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Good crowd in yesterday. I was speaking to the um, chairman of the cricket club as a bass comes in and bowls. It's left by Bahannon through to the keeper, no run. He said about 1,600 inside uh, the ground yesterday. They, they're kind of hoping across the four days they'll have in the region about four to four and a half thousand coming in to, to watch cricket here. So he was pretty pleased with the yeah. numbers that were inside the ground. And we've got good numbers again. I'm sure it'll build through the course of the day. Feels the same number. If, yeah, uh, they're looking around, actually, the potential to go a few more, yeah. One, five, four for one. A bass to Bahannon. It's left. Uh, fizzes into the gloves of Ben Brown and there's uh, no run if you're watching on the live stream now little uh, you could just see the, the the plastic fold away chairs that are uh, dotted all around the uh, edge of the ground so you, you obviously can bring your own chair but there are the plastic foldable chairs that are probably four or five rows deep which um, so you'd, you'd, you'd be hard pressed to find some shade. Yeah. You're going to be in the sun for most of the most of the day. A bass, Bahan, and off the back foot. It's pushed away into the offside. Nick Govins fields at cover, and there's uh, no rum. Yeah, there was a group of Hampshire supporters. I mentioned them once or twice yesterday that uh, were just to our left. Sort of a, a, a group of about half a dozen that go to a lot of the away games, and they were in the sun all day yesterday and they said they felt it and they've, they've gone right to the other side uh, of the ground where they think they found a little bit of shade and it uh, really was that sort of day yesterday and uh, it's very much going to be the similar day today so you need to be very careful yeah, the harrow drive end of the ground is the kind of north facing side of the ground so you, the sun is going to be behind you and there are some trees separating the ground from the houses so you might get a bit of shade there it's a lovely drive Shot. by Bahan and that's four runs Shot in the morning, early on. Ball disappearing past the media tent. <laughs> and uh, down towards the, uh, the the boundary. A lovely straight drive by Josh Bohannon. 158 for one, Bohannon to 21. That's where all the good Wi-Fi is down that tent. <laughs> you had to go down there, didn't you, last night to yeah. finish, finish working? Mm. Yeah, the great and the good of the written media in there. Nicked all the Wi-Fi. Nicked all the Wi-Fi, nicked all the sandwich bags as well. Oh, was there some of those? Yeah, there were some sandwich bags, yeah. Paul Edwards had them both, I think. Had our sandwich bags <laughs> yesterday. It's his ground, though. He can do what he wants. It's his man. And does. <laughs> <laughs> 158 for one. A bass to Bahannon. Just presses forward. The ball deflects off the inner half of the bat. Joe Weatherly comes up from back with square leg to 
to field. Bannon jogs through for a single. I think you can still see actually forearm strapped up there by the looks of it. I think it's a nasty blow. His right forearm is a bit of strapping there from uh, carried on from last night. Clearly was pretty discomfortable, wasn't he? He was, yeah, it was. quite a lot of pain. There was a little spot there, wasn't there? Because I think a ball after that, very soon after that, sort of yeah. just bounced a bit from just short of a length. But actually, either side of that, not really anything to, of note. I for Williams about it, actually, um, who had a good day with the, with the ball. A bastard completely over, left by Salt. And, uh, one, five, nine for one. And he said from the top end, from the Harrow drive end, there's just a little extra bounce than there is from the, from the Grosvenor Road end of the ground. And that's the end that just maybe got just popped a bit on... Uh, on Bohannon and hit him on the uh, on the forearm. So he's still got the strapping there as uh, Josh Bohannon. On five, nine for one. 22 to Bohannon, 85 to Phil Salt. Those trains of the uh, game going past. Indeed, yeah. Very quiet, which is nice. In keeping with the surroundings and the ambience of the ground, the train. It's I'm almost sure. as if they've taken that into account. I suspect the residents of Burtdale would be up in arms if they had noisy trains. Yes. With their very expensive houses. I must admit, I drove the wrong way out of the ground last night. Here's Barker, comes and... Edge, oh, past the diving gully. Oh, it's gone very, very quick. Probably a little too quick, really, to be a real chance. It was well wide, but... Again, Salt's just having a few problems outside the off-stump here this, this morning with Barker angling it across him. He's... Uh, He's, he's going for it, he's driving, he's cutting, but they're not always uh, either hitting the bat, it's going through to Ben Brown, or it's off an edge, or it's been one or two decent shots, but it's been a bit of a mixture out there. Moves on to 85, 163 for one. That's Felix Organ in the galley. Comes Barker again then. In the bowls, and a little straighter this time, as that's worked up to mid on, a little fuller as well. Uh, don't forget you can get in touch with us. Several of you are. I know the wife <laughs> mentioned the Wi-Fi again. Uh, they, 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 they sort of uh, they're not there for a while, and then something happens with the Wi-Fi, and all of a sudden four or five drop. So we will get round to them as always, as we did yesterday. We had a lot of fun with the emails. Solidcricket yeah. at gmail.com is the email we're using today. Could you just say it slower, please? Yes, of course, for our northern <laughs> listeners and watchers. Solent, S-O-L-E-N-T. Uh, that's if you've got a pen and paper as well. Solent cricket at gmail.com. Yeah, I know. I remember two years ago at Liverpool, I had a lot of emails saying that guy with the southern accent, we can't understand him, and he's saying it too fast. <laughs> See, I don't think I've got an accent. No, no, is this everybody up here? Has yeah, <laughs> here comes Farker, it's left alone by Bohannon. Nice Take carry again, change of line that wasn't it, Barker? Yeah, going out. Around the wicket, sort of over the wicket this time to the right hander. Uh, Andrew John has emailed solentcricket at gmail.com. He says, uh, Morning, guys. He says, Glad to see that the quality of the coverage is back to normal. <laughs> it's very nice, isn't it? <laughs> um, to match the quality of the commentary, he says. Oh, that's talking about the stream. Uh, we've even lost the old Trafford logo. Yeah, see, Colin actually has yeah. taken those yeah. comments on board. It took him yeah. a while. He had some good feedback yesterday, yeah. didn't he? It yeah. seemed to take a while for it to sort of sink in. <laughs> That's outside the off-stump as Barker's around the... Uh, uh, we did remind him a lot of time. We did present him with a list that all the watchers and listeners had sent in that were wrong. And uh, once he'd gone through it, which took about 10 minutes, uh, he, uh, he, he's he been slowly working through it, hasn't he, really? Yeah, he has, yeah. Uh, he had a lie-in this morning. He did so have a lie-in this morning. Yeah, yeah. he was uh, in way after us. He missed the morning run of uh, pastries because he had a lie-in. <laughs> They were nice, weren't they? They were. Yeah. And so Parker's round the wicket. Oh, he's taking the bat away, but it's actually hit the bat and it's gone to the ground. Dawson can't take it cleanly at second slip, and they'll come through for a single. But uh, yeah, Colin. Yeah, he's well. He's obviously taken the logo on board, so that's gone. Because it was saying Emirates Old Trafford, wasn't it? Yeah. And we're definitely not at Emirates Old Trafford. We certainly aren't. We can confirm that. Uh, the other one was Blatherwick, but we haven't had Blatherwick the batter yet. No, couldn't get his K on, could he? No. It was too, the surname was too long. Yeah. Well, hopefully the uh, strap line at the bottom of the picture feed will be okay. I'm sure it will. I think they could fit Blatherwick on there when it comes yeah. out to have a, it comes out to have a pan. 
Let's hope so. It might just be B apostrophe wick. <laughs> it comes. Parker bowls to salt. Let's push that square on the offside. So be prepared for that, everybody. If you're watching the picture feed, it might just be B wick that comes out <laughs> lower down. Assuming he gets a bat, of course. Uh, he may not even get it. End of the over from Barker, 164 for one. I think a word to all the uh, camera operators today. This is uh, mentioned the supporters inside the ground, but the, the, the guys providing um, the live stream coverage, Badger and Coombs team. This is a hot day for them as well, not too much shade. No. I feel a bit for Frankie here to our left hand side. Well, she's in the shade. Well, I don't know. It's, it's, I think I think she's going to get quite a bit of sunshine there. Uh, there is a well, there was a spare umbrella. Oh, there is a spare umbrella around here. Maybe bring an umbrella yeah. over. Oh yeah, there, there we go. Right in the sunshine, to, just to our <laughs> our left. <laughs> Plenty of sun cream on. Don't worry. I'm keep. I'm I'm, I'm slightly concerned. So I'm keeping a close eye. And there's us. <laughs> We're, we're all right, yeah. we're in the shade. Quick half a second of us. <laughs> Here comes a bat in the balls. And Bohan off the, the back foot, plays it into the offside for no run. Don't want to show those pesky commentators. Oh, that's the last thing you want. Well, they've got, they got an easy gig, don't you? Show them. <laughs> 27 to Josh Bohan. 164 for one. We're underway, day two. Southport and Birkdale Cricket Club. Josh Bohannon, who's had runs here in the past, actually. He's got a century here, I think, for Lancashire a few years back. He's waiting for a bat with a couple of slips in place. That's left. And gathered by Ben Brown. And there is um, no run. It's a good leave, that, isn't it? There's just a little hint of movement away. Certainly a little straightening there from... Abbas is not a lot, but uh, just enough that if Bahannon does actually decide to go at it, and if he's not quite in the right position, then uh, he might be in trouble. But it's, it's, it's a little hint of movement, but that's about all. Sets off again into uh, Bahannon. That one's gone a bit more. Yeah, Brown takes it and a little skip to his right, gathers it and runs actually across James Vince, who's at first slip. Again, behind him. Good lead, just a little shuffle back, not interested in playing at that, watchful. Both batters having to kind of restart again. 64 for one. 27 to Bohannon from 50 balls which he's faced. Just whipped away through the onside. Barker with a pickup and throw. Left-handed throw towards the keeper's end. Bohannon gets successfully through for a single. He moves on to 28. And score now on to uh, 165 for one. So lead of 23. Bring Salt back on strike. This is his first um, first class match for almost a year. For Phil Salt. Last played in a game in Bristol in June of last year, back end of June last year. Looking out towards the leg side, there's a deep square leg and there's a fine leg. The two fielders on the boundary there. Two slips and a, and a gully. There's a deep point. Cover, mid off, and mid on. Forward goes Salt. Defends. Ball scooped up by Nick Gubbins at, at cover. And there's uh, no run. 65. For one, Gubbins was a bit unlucky yesterday. The LBW decision that wasn't great in truth. But uh, a bit of a rogue decision, didn't it, Gubbins? Yeah, it was a shame because the two actually Hampshire batters at the top of the order, Gubbins and Vince, who really did battle it and work hard and batted for quite a while, both actually. The batter completely over to, to Salt. Takes a single through point. Moves on to 86 and the score to it to 166. For yeah, Gub Gubbin sawn off and Vince probably got the best ball of the day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the ball that Williams bowled to Vince. I spoke to Will Williams about it last night. So I was expecting to say I might not bowl the ball like that again. Pretty impressive knock from 
superb delivery from Will Williams. 50 run partnership, 96 balls between Salt and Bohannon. Um, so they're, they're, they're batted very nicely together there. And 66 for one, half century partnership between those two. Uh, got a uh, email here from Patrick Atak, sunkcricket at gmail.com. To that as Barker from that uh, Harrod drive end bowl. Salt pushes that up to uh, mid on. Uh, actually, before I do that, I'm talking about, you know, I turned the wrong way actually out of the ground, do I mean, oh, yeah. there are lovely houses around here, okay. but actually, if you go left out of here and a bit further up, which I didn't need to do, mm. there's even bigger houses. An even wider road yeah. with an even bigger sort of green in the middle. It was just amazing. I think there's a couple of ex Liverpool legends that live there. Oh, is it? Yeah, the old houses there. Uh, a couple of kind of famous Liverpool players from the, the era when they were winning everything in the 80s. Oh, right, yeah. Because it's, it's a big sort of round circle, so you, you wouldn't go that way unless you actually either got lost like me <laughs> or you were going to one of their houses. As uh, Salt's playing a missing. Outside of the stump, there is actually no other reason to go up that road, so uh, I suppose that would be obvious in a way. Uh, Patrick Atak says, "Nice commentary today." Uh, he obviously wasn't listening yesterday. Uh, must be boiling in the box today. Uh, we're not in a box, but it is boiling. Uh, hope you have a fan on. We haven't. Uh, just a little poke in jest about your comment, re not having an accent. Ooh, here we go. I like these emails. <laughs> I haven't read what's coming next, which is maybe not a good idea. You like to stir it up, you do? Yeah, I do. Yeah. It's a bit of fun, isn't it? <laughs> Here comes Barker into uh, Salt, and Salt's playing and missing again. He's trying to play that too square for me. I know, he, I know he likes that area through point, but for me, that's just a little too square that he's playing that one. It needs to be, he needs to be in behind that a little bit more. Um, as a brave man once said, said Patrick, an accent only proves that you've been brave enough to move away from home. Perhaps this is your moment of realisation. Keep up the good work, lads. He says, please don't read out the surname, I already have. Um, I have moved away from home. I'm actually from London originally. Here's uh, Barker. Oh, just comes back in a fraction. Just trickles out on the uh, offside. I did move about an hour and a half away down on the south coast, but stayed south. Yeah, well, obviously. <laughs> obviously. You don't want to be venturing north here. That's the last thing no. you want to be doing. No. London was as far north as <laughs> I wanted to go. Thank you. Maybe Hertfordshire at a push. Oh, steady on. <laughs> Certainly not nor more north of the Watford Gap. Absolutely no, not. That's, that's, no, that's dizzy going past there. So uh, I've stayed down south. There's Barker again. The salt's playing and missing. That's a good ball. Well, he's been a little bit unlucky, I think, here at Barker this morning. Salt's perhaps been a fraction uh, lucky. He's continued this line, hasn't he, over the wicket to Salt. Yeah. Two <laughs> slips and a gully in place. He's not been far away, has he, Barker? Oh, yes. on, on another another morning, and he could still nick him out here, but on another morning, he's probably he's probably got rid of Salt already. Yeah, it's just a little bit of indecision from Salt a little bit. I think uh, not quite sure how to play one or two of these. He's tried to cut one, didn't he? He missed that. It's Barker again then. Left arm over the wicket of Bowles to Salt. A little straighter this time. And that's flicked down to fine leg, and Mohamed Abbas has given that one up. He's rolling over this very quick outfield for four runs. And not the end of the over that Keith Barker deserved. One seventy for one with Salt onto 90. And I've got to disappear. No worries. Let's bring Callum in for uh, the next little passage of play through the first half an hour of this uh, second day, 170 for one, which is for, for 50 partnership as well, 55 from 102 balls between Salt and Bohannon. Good morning, Cal. Good morning. You OK? Yeah, it's not bad, is it? Not a bad day. No, nice. A bit warm, though. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just a little bit. Just, a little bit. <laughs> just walked to the van to get my glasses and right. video. Got a sweat on. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I've run like a 10K or something. Yeah, so you've got to find a bit of shade and sit still, don't you, today, really? Here's a bass. Run down to, to third man, or at least the attempt is there by Bohannon. Just tried to open up the face of the bat. Stops at gully, and there is uh, no run. Been good by it. These two since the dismissal of Bobberson late on last night. There's been a, perhaps a little bit of good fortune first half an hour for Salt. I reckon he's not had 
too many opportunities where he's had to restart as he's innings. He's normally tends to about five, six, seven in the longer format, so it's probably quite new to him having to restart. Here comes a bass to Bohannon. He's beaten through to, to Brown. And there's no running. It's 12 months since his last first last game, and he batted at six in that match uh, at Gloucestershire. Chance to open the batting this week with, uh, well, Lancashire missing their, their first choice pairing at the top of Luke Wells and Keaton Jennings recovering from um, injury. So Keaton Jennings this morning, he's having a net this morning. As he continues his uh, recovery from injury, a couple of laps of the outfield as well before play started. Abbas to Bahannon playing forward, the ball snakes away past the edge of the bat through to the keeper, no run. So hopefully Keaton is on his way to recovery, and he clearly is. I'm sure he's still a few weeks away from a, a return. Yeah, the Lancashire fans will be dying to have him back, won't they? He's such a, such a good run scorer at the top of the order for Lancashire. Same with Wells, though. They've got a great partnership when they bat together. Yeah, they can seem to kind of kind of balance each other out quite nicely. Come again off the inner half of the bat as Bannon plays off the front foot. Ball squirts away through mid-wicket for a single. 171 for one. I mean, the boot, the two tall left hand no Very towers. Yeah. yeah. But I think dif different styles, different ways of scoring. Yeah, Wells is very much goes at the bat, uh, goes at the balls, doesn't he? D tries to not let him settle, tries to really get after him. And then Jennings is often the one who plays the anchor and gets himself in and, uh, and looks to play the long innings. This was the ground last year where Keaton Jennings scored his triple century against at Southport. A memorable day that was. Salt goes back and that comes off the inner half of the bat again. Just deflects away to, to the leg side. He's a little uncertain as to where the ball had gone there, Salt. He was a little frantic and kind of spinning around, looking over his shoulder, trying to work out where the ball was, was heading. He's into the 90s. 90 not out. He has reached... 90 before for Lancashire, I think it was 97. He's got four first class centuries, but his top score for Lancashire was 97. It's a bass to complete the over. Salt off the front foot, takes a single. Just eased away in front of square on the offside for one run. And moves on to 91, so it's 172 for one. Salt on 91 and Josh Bahannon on 29. It's a day for some big brimmed hats and sunglasses. Shorts and t-shirt weather, but not without plenty of sun cream. <laughs> <laughs> be a fair few bottles in the recycling bin later on, I believe. <laughs> I would think so. Not all alcoholic. <laughs> We're, we're, again, we're by the side of the media market, at the uh, corporate market, and again, just like yesterday, it starts very civil, it's very quiet, very gentle kind of chat going on. After tea, that's not the case. There's <laughs> <laughs> Barker, left arm over the wicket, bowls. And so pushing forward away, Barker turns at the end of his follow through, kind of shoulders drooped a little bit as he sees another one angle past. Phil Salton into the gloves of Ben Brown. Just sending it across Phil Salt really well here at the moment. Just looks like he's trying to push him across and then straighten one up to him. Um, like I say, Phil, Salt, Phil Salt's played a miss at a fair few now. Just looks a little bit anxious in the night. Is. Barker looked a little bit frustrated there. Still searching for his first wicket of the match. Barker to Salt. He's dabbed away into the onside. Chunks through for a single. 92 to Salt. 173 for one. To bring Josh Bahannon back on strike. 29 not out. I guess you're looking to, well, bat all day, really. Second day of this game and lead at 31. Forecast set fair for the remaining days in this game so plenty of time for Lancashire to bat 
well and back big in their first innings. Barker to Bohannon, left, through to the keeper, and there's no run. I think now they've got the opportunity, they'd love to bat once, wouldn't they? With yeah. Especially if Hampshire choosing the three spinners they've That's got right, in the yeah. side. Um, obviously an out ground, so often the wickets might tear up a little bit quicker than than your old Traffords and your your Aegeus ball, so it could be quite tricky to bat on fourth inning, so Lancashire should be open to bat all day, maybe a little bit into tomorrow. Yeah, that was the talk of yesterday, was the team selection, actually. The, well, the, the, the contrasting views, it would seem, from the selection of the both of both 11s as to, to how they think the pitch will, will play. Front away to bat with point by Bohan. For one run, he moves on to 30, 170. Four for one. And Liam Dawson, Felix Organ, and Mason Crane. In the uh, Hampshire the team, and, and Tom Hartley in the Lancashire 11, which in the squad did include Jack Morley, who got wickets here last year, the left arm spinner, and it included Matt Parkinson, the leg spinner, but neither making the final 11. So. They normally have the luxury of Luke Wells, don't they, in the That's side true. who yeah. often bowls a bit of spin. So, like you say, it would have been a tricky uh, team selection for Lancashire yesterday, but. It's worked well so far. Two balls left of the over for Barker. Salt takes another single here. Nidged away to mid-wicket. Moves on to 93, not out. 170, five for one. Lead now of 33 runs. opening spell here. This is his fifth over sent down this morning. Abbas and Barker starting off for uh, for Hampshire. This is over number five of the spell for Barker. Come for 22. He's been the more expensive of the two bowlers. And him, Bohannon beaten this time. And uh, through it goes to the keeper and Barker can't believe it. He's, he's beaten the bat on umpteen occasions through the course of this five over spell from the Harrod driver but has not yet found that little nick to the keeper or to the slips. And uh, I suspect a rather frustrated fast bowler in Keith Barker. 175 for one at the end of that latest over. We've had 44 of the Lancashire first innings. I've been handed the, uh, the email mm -hmm. console from Kevin. Because Kevin's having a break. <laughs> He's put me in charge of, of of sorting through the emails. I always find a, a little extra pressure on this. Here's a bass to salt. It's chopped away down to uh, to backward point. He's hurtled through the first salt. Comes back for the second as well. So salt moves on to 95. It's four. Ticks along to 177 for one. Dave Farrer has emailed with regards to Lancashire accents. <laughs> Dear commentators, it's quite formal, isn't it? <laughs> Lancashire is blessed with three distinct accents. I'll come back to it. There's uh, a bass. Balls to Salt. Salt might want two again here. No, just settles for a single, played out towards square leg. Moves on to 96. 78 for, for one. The Liverpool Scouse accent, the ancient Lancashire Burr, Central and East Lancs, and the Manchester Salford softer tone. Thank you, Dave. I don't know why we got onto accents. Well, it was Kevin, wasn't it? That's it that he didn't, doesn't think he has a. That's the first time I've heard accent. a Salford accent being described as a softer tone. Oh, I think it's a bit harsh, can't it, really? <laughs> 71, 178 for one. Bad and back on strike. A bass balls short. <laughs> it has uh, Bohannon ducking and diving out the way of it. Got uh, Bohannon's knees pumping. He's chittering and chattering away to, to Phil Salt, who's come halfway down the pitch. Short ball sent in by Abbas. Seventy-eight for one. Three balls left. Of the over. And it gets right in behind and defends. 
the offside no run Stephen sent an email to Lancashire venues it's awesome to see matches from the outer grounds and the coverage is superb thank you he's asking whether or not uh, in reality is Sebba in Lancashire so that's a thorny subject is that mm, yeah it's a touchy one yeah, as well with some Lancashire fans we're just broadening the uh, the game Lancashire slowly encroaching on Cumbria it's like the Roman Empire they're taking over here's <laughs> Abbas in and balls to uh, Bahana that's off the back foot and pushed away into the offside no run they are building that ground is it in Cumbria is it, is that no I see it's, it's in Penwood oh, it's in Farrington that's near Preston right. that. that's the second ground project yeah yeah that's near Preston yeah because you're going to build a kind of a secondary base in which I think kind of the Obviously, they'll be able to play a host of to first class matches in the long term, and it will be a base, I think, for the women's team and the academy as well. Yeah, looks like a really good project, actually, yeah. from, from the pictures and the, the plans. So, that's just outside Preston, so that's kind of central Lancashire. Final ball of the over, Abbas to Bohannon, left and through to the keeper, no run, 178 for one. And uh, Steve says, looking forward to the day's cricket from the shade of his home in Manchester. He also says that when he was 11, he was playing rugby. At, uh, his first competitive match was against Sebba, so it's a ground obviously he's been to, or at least a, an area of the country he's been to previously. Thank you, Steve. So you can get in touch, solentcricket at gmail.com. Solentcricket at gmail.com. Get involved for the course of the next uh, few days. 178 for one, so Salt on 96. He's one run away from matching his previous top score for Lancashire. Here's Barker to Salt. And that's left and through to, uh, to Ben Brown, and there's no run. Need of 36. He gets a much better line there from Barker. The more he's coming straighter, I think Salt's a lot more comfortable than going across him. He's just looked a little bit uncomfortable this morning. Don't know whether to play or leave him. I think that's the way to go with Barker. He just send, keep sending it across Phil Salt and, and bring them slips and gully into play. Here it comes again, Barker. Yeah, two slips in the gully. Salt will run this away to backward point. Moves on to 97. Does match his previous highest score for Lancashire in first class cricket. 179 for one. I think that 97 came on his debut. I'm, I'm certain it was the game at, at, uh, at, in Canterbury last year. Might have, maybe it was the second match of the season. I guess. I'll lose track, but. Certainly, the very start of last season. I think it may have been either the first or second match of last season. It was 97. Left again by uh, Bohannon. Taken by Ben Brown. No wrong. We remember Riley had a pretty solid year in the, in the longer format, Phil. So I know he's mm. he's tipped to be more of a white ball player, but he played some quite vital knocks for Lancashire last season uh, in the longer format. But in it, like like you say, six or seven, yeah. he, was, he was mainly at last year. It's a great example, isn't it? The ability to, to, to go from one format to the other. Mm. He's obviously had four months in the IPL as well as the yeah. these blast fixtures. So it's not like coming on the back of a little blast campaign. He's had all winter playing it. It's pushed up to mid on. Fielded by Abbott. And there's no run. It's totally different as well because you look at them white balls these days, you're probably you're lucky to get two, two overs of swing out of them. <laughs> if that. And these red duke balls, obviously, they swing a lot more uh, for longer. So it's a lot, a lot more challenging on the technique, but Phil Salt's really adapted well um, yesterday and today. Lovely counter-attacking innings so far. He's at the non-striker's end. Bohannon on strike. Beaten on 30. Barker to Bohannon. He's gone for a shot, allows that one to angle across him. To the gloves of Ben Brown. Two slip fielders there with, with, with Vince at first slip and Dawson at second. Little gap to uh, Fletcher Middleton, who dropped Phil Salt yesterday in the first over of the Lancashire innings. Colin
costly drop. Final ball of Barker's sixth over of the of the morning. In two, Bahannon forward. Pushes away into the offside. Pick up and throw towards the stumps by Nick Gubbins. But they are safely through for a single. And Bahannon pinches the strike. He moves on to 31. It's 180 for one. Just looking elsewhere. We nice to uh, what's going on in the other the other games. Everybody playing? Yeah, everyone's up and running today. Yeah, issues, I think, in Bristol yesterday with a bit of rain and wet outfield, but all the other games are in play. So Essex against Somerset. Essex are 388 for six. In their match at Chelmsford, uh, Sir Alistair Cook made 128. Matt Critchley out for 121. He was not out overnight, Matt Critchley. Surrey 18 for two. As Abbas comes back into Bahan. So the Pledgy away from point. He's bouncing on the ground. That's gone for four runs. Quite time as well as he's hoping for, I don't think, Bahan. But he, he takes four nonetheless down to, to backward point. Just beyond the reach of Felix Ogan at backward point. Just reaching quite in front of himself there, Bahanan. But Abbas is such a highly skilled bowler. He's constantly challenging your technique and, and your footwork. And He's bowled a pretty good spell this morning without any reward. 184 for one. Bahannon moves on to 35. Back into uh, to Bahannon. And this runs again through the offside. Might be four more of them out towards the train line end of the, the ground. Indeed, it is another boundary for Bohannon disappearing away through points not where he was aiming for no it's like for like wasn't it yeah. he just tried to turn it into mid wicket I think and he just just gone a little bit too early on the ball footwork not quite getting down the pitch and just a leading edge for four again and now they've put deep point out 188 for one but Hannah moves on to 39 lead now is 46 Frustration continues for the Hampshire bowlers this morning. Bohannon off the back foot, pushes into the offside, and there's no run. So 21 for, for two, Surrey, in their match at Canterbury. Kent making 301. In fact, maybe a little delay there, just in that flash up on my screen in front of me. And Warwickshire are 416 for six. They're taking on Nottinghamshire. Sam Hay made 100 for the Bears. So Warwickshire 416 for six in their first innings against Nottinghamshire. That's the uh, other games in uh, Division One. Abbas balls to uh, Bohannon. The ball deflects away to square leg. Any bat? No, leg by single by the umpire. So <laughs> Bohannon <laughs> remains on 39 as Abbas. Just checking the edge of Bahannon's bat. <laughs> 189 for one, lead of 47 now. Keep seeing him walking back to his walking back to his mark. He's just got that awkward, frustrated smile. That just well down where you go. What what else am I meant to do? Bring Salt back on strike. 97 not out, Phil Salt. A bass balls. And Salt plays forward the ball. Goes past him through to Ben Brown, and there's no run. Seven to Salt. It's been a real measure of, kind of calmness in this innings. His approach yesterday he was immaculate in defence. Just looked in absolute control. He was dropped early on in the first over, but since then he's, he's looked assured. But if anything, a, a little bit, a little bit scratchy at times this morning. It's in behind this delivery from a bass in defence away to the offside and there's no run that completes the over 189 for one need a 47 yeah I think Lanky should have been a little bit nervous actually about um, Salt opening because he's not really done it in the longer format too much um, they've not
quite got it right, you'd say, with the batting this year in terms of the top of the order, not posted too many big scores. Um, but Phil Sutton's played a lovely counter attack in innings where he's just backed his straps. Um, and that's sometimes what you need on a wicket like this, where it's doing a little bit. You've got a very good team attacking Kyle Abbott, Abbas, and Barker, who, who don't really give you anything. Um, so often, them counter attacking innings are the best ones to play instead of just just sitting there and, and knowing there's going to be one ball with your name on it at some stage. Yeah, I think the, the, the way that Salt and Balderson batted actually yesterday, that kind of combination, not too dissimilar to the, the approach from Wells and Jennings yeah. that they've been together. You know, that Salt would play kind of the Wells role and Balderson more the, the, the Jennings kind of yeah. role. Yeah. Been really impressed with Balderson this year. I think he's been, he's been excellent again for Lancashire. Yeah, he's had a really good year, hasn't he? Contributes with the ball really well. Lots of runs as well for Lancashire. Bowling change, Abbott into the attack. Ending that spell from uh, Keith Barker. He's unlucky this morning, Barker. Six overs for, for 25, but he's been replaced by Abbott and Bohannon defends that first delivery. There's no run. Just taking through some of the Division Two scores while we're, while we're around the grounds. Uh, Yorkshire, 313 for five. Lead Derbyshire by 202 runs. And five wickets remaining. Durham, 34 for two in reply to a Glamorgan total of 390 all out. Abbott to, to Bahannon. Deflects to the right of second slip. Dawson and going to his right at second slip and Fletcher Middleton to his left at gully. Uh, Bahannon, Bahannon tried to withdraw the bat there, I think. Deflects with the face of it down to Right of second slip, good stop by Dawson. 189 for one, it remains. Abbott from the Harrod drive end. Balls to Bahannon. Edged and gone. Dawson takes the catch. Barker probably thinking, what have I done wrong this morning? <laughs> As he comes out of the attack and just the third ball sent down by Abbott does find the edge that Barker was so desperately craving for and Bohannon departs for 39 and Lancashire lose their first wicket of the morning it's their second of the innings 189 for two yeah it's probably just rewards for Hampshire that they've been excellent in terms of the line of length this morning Lancashire have been a little bit um, lazy outside the off stump quite a few player misses and this time Bohannon's nicked off to a great catch actually from Liam Dawson Never easy slip catches, and all. some of them look quite simple, but uh, the pace it travels at, never easy. Yeah, yeah, low down to his right hand side, both hands on it, tumbling away. I hope your boys will feel a bit better. Breakthrough at last. 189 for two. Dane Villas, the uh, Lancashire captain, comes uh, out to join Phil Salt, who remains unbeaten on 97. The, the, the two other games in, in Division 2, at Gloucestershire, 149 for five, and taking on Leicestershire in Bristol. And Worcestershire have started their first innings, 27 without loss. They're replying to a Sussex total of 348 all out. So you're up to date with how things are looking elsewhere in divisions one and two of the county championship. Well, Velas has not had the success so far this season that he would have been hoping for. He comes out to bat with the team at 189 for two. Yeah, Lancashire will be hoping he spends quite a lot of time in the middle today and finds a form that he's, that he's shown in recent years for Lancashire. He's been absolutely tremendous um, for Lancashire since he signed for the club and They'll be hoping he finds that form again. Yeah, he's had an outstanding run, hasn't he? Four years as captain. Just uh, scratching around for a bit of bit of success for the bat this season. But he's on strike. There's three slips in place, so that gully position has gone to a third slip. So three slips. Vince, Dawson and Middleton. There's Abbott to Velas. He gets off the mark straight away, just leaning forward and opening up the face of the bat. And running the ball down to back will point for a single score moves on to 190 for two and that brings Salt back on strike third slip moves away to his right 
back to Gully. Fletcher Middleton. And the deep back will point. Mason Crane in that position. Again, just down in front of us here. And there's a deep square leg. There's a fine leg as well. Abbott, wicket so far in his first over of the day. Salt on 97. So pushing forward and the ball goes past and through to the gloves of Ben Brown. And there's no run. Vince is looking ever more and more frustrated in the slip. <laughs> Hands keep going on the head. Hat off. Every time Lanky should just play a miss at one. Improving the mood of uh, the Hampshire captain. Got an absolute jaffer from Will Williams yesterday. Oh. Did you see that? Yeah. How can the ball move that far? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Abbott to Salt. Maybe he just brought the bat inside the line. And, uh, good bounce and carry. Through to the keeper, that completes the uh, the over. It's 190 for two. Salt 97, Villas on one. Yeah, Jack back a mile, didn't we? We're having to look back on the replay to see whether we actually got an inside <laughs> edge onto that. I don't think many are, uh, are playing that, are they? Not really. I think it takes a special delivery like that to get James Vince out at the moment. Yeah, Kevin was saying how much form he's been in this this year. An outstanding year in both formats, both the blast. And the county championship is edging up towards 800 runs. He's averaging 70 in the championship for, uh, sorry, almost 500 runs, averaging 70, 350s and a century. Top score of 186. So Hampshire captain's having a stellar year again with the bat. Abbas, just waiting for Villas, who's uh, taking guard. Four slips in place. As Abbas comes in from the Grosvenor Road end, balls to Villas. Eased away through the offside. And come back for a second. I even think of a third here. Yeah, they're going to run three. He's quick, he's Villas, and Salt knows it. He was determined to try and turn two into three. It's nicely run on a hot day. Yeah, it's brilliant running. You'd think straight away when he hits it, there's no free. Never out there. Don't want the biggest boundary out there either. Uh, push it into the gap and it was an excellent there. Rattled through the first two, you can sense that he fancied coming back for a third. Velas moves to four, 193 for two. Abbas to, uh, to Salt. Oh, that's glanced away down towards fine leg. Will it reach the boundary rope? It does. Has it come off the bat? It has. It has. Four runs and a century for Phil Salt. His first for Lancashire. Back in Lancashire's championship team for the first time in almost a year. Back in the batting this time. And back with a bag. It's excellent for Salt. 101 not out. 132 deliveries. And a little glance down to fine leg for four. Brings his first century for Lancashire. Absolute brilliant innings from Phil Salt there. Exactly what Lancashire would have wanted after bowling. Hampshire out pretty cheaply. And they'll be hoping he, he goes on now and scores a big daddy one. 101 not out. 197 for two. Lancashire's lead is 45. That was subtle, wasn't it, by Colin? We've had an hour of play. Here comes a bat in and bowls. Don't move my monitor. Forward goes Salt, pushing into the offside. No run. Colin, the managing, what's your title? Managing director or something like that, of Badger and Coombs. Team behind Likes TV has just come and plonked himself next to me. There he is. I've got no idea why he's here. He's clearly got nothing else to do. He had a bit of a line this morning. It's been a very, <laughs> chill, it's been a very chilled out day, hasn't it? Now he's just watching a bit of cricket in the sunshine. He tells me he's busy all the time. Here's a bass in and balls to salt. That's nudged up towards mid on. And through they go for a quick uh, for a quick single. Salt moves on to 102. He's 198 for two. Lead of 56 now. Brings uh, Velas back on strike, but a memorable moment for for Phil Salt. Fifth first class century for Salt. It's his first for uh, for Lancashire. A 
bit of good fortune at times this morning. A few plays and misses from Salt, but he's reached those three figures. This is left by Villas, taken by Ben Brown. There is no run, so one ball left of the over. And then uh, and Bass might be coming towards the coming towards the end of his um, of his spell, perhaps his ball through the the morning session hasn't he yeah this is his seventh over and I, th I think he is known for bowling at times quite lengthy spells for which is not unusual is that edged oh it is and it's not taken by Dawson oh and has that deflected through the fingertips of Dawson and hit him somewhere on the mouth by the looks of it he has oh well, let's hope he's okay and that flashed away off the edge of the bat from Villas it he was certainly hands on it from Dawson. I wonder if he's pushed that up and the ball has hit him somewhere on the uh, in the mouth. We'll bring Kevin back in. I'm doing an update and Callum will join you. Yeah, just waiting for the physio to uh, come on there. It doesn't look particularly nice. He's trying to stop the blood with his shirt. So uh, we'll just wait. I'd love to see a replay of that as well. Uh, that flew a bit there, uh, Callum, didn't it? Yeah, it certainly did. I think it's unfortunate. It straight onto the face as well. There we go. We're just watching the replay now. And oh, I'm just wondering if it came off. Actually, Fletcher Middleton's hand is deflected onto his face. Middleton next to him just put out a left hand, and I think it's deflected off the fingers into Dawson. And it was going at pace as well. Dawson, in the end, was just had no chance Dawson's at second slip here we go again in slow motion if you're watching the live picture feed have a watch of this look at Middleton left of the picture I think that's come off his hands into his face yeah straight off onto Dawson's face and I've got a feeling Dawson might have just been coming on for a spell as well I don't think Ab uh, Mohamed Abbas would have been carrying on for much longer so Hampshire will be hoping Dawson's pretty quickly back on the field because I reckon he's got a big job to do for Hampshire today bowling Burn long spells in this heat. Well, <laughs> I was just thinking just before I came back on commentary, Callum, that uh, while everybody was applauding Phil Salt's 100 and quite rightly as well, and it's well deserved, that probably one person on the field there who probably wouldn't have been enjoying that would have been Fletcher Middleton, having dropped a fairly simple catch, you have to say, in the slips when he was on four. And, uh, and then just a few minutes later, there, he's had a hand in another drop. Yeah, it's a lot more difficult than that one, you have to say, but. I think Dawson will certainly be letting him know that he dropped him for the on the legs in the bar. That's always the point. That, that's always the thing that I don't know about. I don't know where you. Where do you feel normally? Oh no, I don't go in the slips. No, the goalie, no. I try to go point. I like it a point. It comes quite fast, but you can you still see quite clearly where I try to avoid the slips. It's such a difficult position. It's a, it's a highly skilled, and you have to do a lot of training for it as well. I think. In the, you know, you go, you go to the club cricket and stuff, and the slip catches, they probably, they had never trained for it, but in the professional game, they, they're training consistently. Um, and like you say, they, they, they do make it look a lot easier than the job actually is. That's always the thing that worried me in the few times that I filled in in that position, is because you've got other people close in on you, and you kind of do, you know, if, you're, if, you're, if the catch is sort of coming your way, you really do have to be committed and of course if it's in between you and somebody else and you stay there and they stay there then it goes in between you it looks awful and of course if you both go for it you can get in a bit of a tangle and and we've just seen there where Dawson started a move Fletcher Middleton's already stuck a hand out and of course the deflections with ball at balls at pace that's always you know that that's where there's a worry isn't it yeah like in, in, the, in front of the bat and, and in the outfield, you've got plenty of time to put your name on it, haven't you? If, you? if you're going for the catch, but in the slips, you've got no chance of, of saying mine, of saying your name. Um, you've just got to literally just reactions, and, and sometimes you've both got a goal like that, but it's a very unfortunate accident. Hopefully, like I say, Liam Dawson's back on the field pretty quickly. Yeah, well, we'll try and get a, a, an answer properly uh, about lunchtime, which is 55 minutes away. I think I saw Ian Holland uh, onto uh, the uh, pitch, the substitute field. I do. Uh, he's gone into uh, the gully area, so we're ready to get underway again. Salt is 102, Velas is four, had a life, and uh, ironically, spookily, uh, he's on four, and that was the same score that Phil Salt had a life in the slips. And it's 198 for two, and it's Abbott from the uh, Harrod uh, drive end, bowls, and he's playing and missing outside the off stump again there, Salt. There's been a few of those this morning. Yeah, well, uh, Hampshire will be very frustrated. More and more, you look at Vince, hands on his face again. Arms crossed. 
You're just hoping one of them just just takes the feather and, and goes to the wicket keeper's gloves. Not at the moment, though. With uh, Lancashire at 198 for two, leading by 56, and in a very very good position. And they're in this position because of a very good day on uh, day one. To Abbott turns once more, comes into bowl two salt and salt. It's a leg ball, which he pushes out into the covers, and that's fielded by uh, Felix Organ. Uh, got a couple of emails to read out here. David Sheiky, um, afternoon to you. It's just about afternoon. Uh, Solidcricket at gmail.com. He says, the first ever cricket match I attended was at Southport. Uh, the International Cavaliers were taking on the Jamaican 11. I remember shyly asking Eddie Barlow, the great South African all-rounder, for his autograph. And Dave's in Chester, you, uh, way before you, Karen. Oh, yeah. Eddie Barlow. I think he... I don't think he was quite before me. I think he was coming towards the end of his career. I, I don't think I ever played against him, but I think he might have been in the last couple of, uh, couple of years. I think he was at Derbyshire. Here, here's uh, Abbott Bowles, and that's a nice drive on the up by Phil Salt. Goes out to Weatherly at Widish mid-off, and the Lancashire total onto 199 uh, for uh, two. Yeah, Eddie Barlow, a very, very good uh, all-rounder for uh, Derbyshire and uh, South Africa, of course. Sun is out, and the hospitality tent next to us is in. F so it's in full flow, but it's winding up. Yeah, I don't think it'll be far off. I've seen <laughs> someone having a red wine just before 11 o'clock. I thought that's early. Red wine in this heat. That's early. Yeah. Here's uh, Abbott. He's walking down the wicket there, and he's playing a miss in there. That's uh, Dane Villas. Well, he's always on the move, and he's always looking for something. Dane Villas, isn't he? He's a very busy player at the crease. Yeah, very busy, very fidgety as well with some of his um, superstitions that he has with his bend of his knees and stuff. But just trying to look like he's going to go aggressive here and just try and hit himself out of form and try and play that character attacking innings like Phil Salt kind of did yesterday. Yeah, he's having a poor season by his standards this year, isn't he? Yeah, not not up to the standards that he set in the previous years, but. You just get the feel of his class, though. He's only averaging 12 in the championship this year, but uh, he is a very fine player. That's outside the off stump. Again, it's good carry. I think it's every bit as good carry today as we've seen. And in fact, at, at times, it feels like it's going through a little quicker. It's The sun is really baking this pitch hard. Yeah, it's um, them three spinners for Hampshire. If Hampshire can somehow get themselves back into the game today, them three spinners for Hampshire could really have a big say in third and fourth day in the, when, when Lancashire have got a bat fourth. But they've just got to make sure Lancashire actually bat for um, his language is just be open to bat, bat once I think from this position yeah I think you're right and that's the worry from a Hampshire point of view because there is plenty of time left in this game we're only in day two and still 50 minutes from lunch as Salt leaves that one alone from uh, Abbott Abbott he's into his uh, well that's the end of his 11th over he has one for 34 he's taken the only wicket to fall this morning for Hannon Caught in the slips. Great catch, Liam Dawson diving low to his right. Yeah, excellent catch. They're never easy, especially when you're diving. Um, like you say, I'm sure he'll be dying for Dawson to get on. He's a big key in that slip, in that slip card, and he's going to play a big role today as we see. Is it Mason Crane coming on now? Looks like. Oh, oh no, it's Felix Organ. Felix Organ with a bit of off spin. He's back in the side. Uh, not because of really runs. He was in the side at the start, opening the batting, and really didn't sort of cut it and. So he made way. Uh, Joe Weatherly back in the side opening along with Fletcher Middleton. But Felix Organ is playing this game mainly because, well, Hampshire playing three spinners, expecting this wicket to turn at some point. It hasn't really been doing. And um, and with Keith Barker bowling, and it's no coincidence, Keith Barker having bowled quite a few overs, especially this morning from that Harrod drive end. No surprise that Organ with his off spin coming on at the Grove of No Road. Exactly. Nice big. Um Big dust balls from uh, where Keith Barker has been bowling. A lot of marks on the pitch. He'll be hoping to, to produce a bit of spin yeah. out of them. They've got, I think they've got a short length straight in there as well. So I would expect uh, sort of Phil Salt and Dane Villas to be sweeping quite a bit. I would, uh, uh, that's assuming he's going to turn match out of the rough anyway. We'll have to wait and see. Dawson got one to turn out of the rough when Balderson was out yesterday. Left arm over the wicket to the left-hander. Was able to just throw it out there a bit and it got between bat and pad did come back a long way but that was out of the rough yeah but it could be a really entertaining little period of play here actually because I don't think these two will, um, will look to go defensive against the spinners I think they'll be looking to uh, really put them under the pump yeah I think you're right Cameron there so here we go then Felix Organ bowls and 
It's just a quiet ball on its edge along the ground. Good diving stop in the slips by James Vince. So Salt is 103, Villas is 4. Lancashire 199 for 2, lead by 57. One wicket yesterday, one wicket this morning. That's all for Hampshire so far. We've had exactly 50 overs. This is the 51st. That's uh, Oh, Dawson, oh, I think he's caught a first slip now. They're going to appeal, they're celebrating. In fact, they're not even bothered celebrating. Salt is taking his time to turn back to the pavilion. I'm not sure if that's because Salt is disappointed or he feels it's not come off the bat, but it's gone to first slip. The umpire's just having a chat after they're giving it. Salt's having a chat with the umpires just to check. Did he think it didn't carry? It looked from here it carried. Yeah. It was a good grab from Vince. I'm not sure what the problem was. If you're watching the live picture feed, have a look. Here it comes. There's forward, is Salt edged. Oh, I think he probably thought that may not have carried, but if I'm honest, I think he's hopeful. Yeah. Brilliant that goal from Phil Salt. Exactly. Certainly has. His first Red Bull 100 for Hank Lancashire or his yeah. first 100? First Red Bull 100 for Lancashire. Might be the first 100 as well. I'll just double check that uh, at some point, but uh, a second wicket uh, of uh, the morning and uh, Spin has taken another wicket. So uh, two wickets to Spin for Hampshire, the other one taken by Kyle Abbott, but that actually didn't really turn. I think he just played down fraction down the wrong line. Yeah, he's, I think he's just been trying to have a look and then I think, he's, like you say, he would have pulled out the, it's quite a good sweeper of the ball, Phil Salt, and so has Dane Vilas, and I think but they had the options that they would have gone to, but he didn't want to go too early. And um, Felix Hogan's bowled a really like, nice length in the first two balls. He's got the edge of the first ball as well. It was identical second ball, but luckily this one carried to James Vince for Hampshire. And they'll be looking to pile a bit of pressure on now as Daryl Mitchell comes into bat. One of the most probably informed batsmen in world cricket, you'd say, at the moment. Yep, Kiwi. This is uh, only his second uh, four day game. Uh, this season averaging 105 though got 100 yeah previous one well oh, that's driven down towards mid on and that's gone through the hands of james fuller and that has gone for four well he's not hanging about no he's um his play's been really well in the in the first county championship game and, and also the t20s that we've seen um in the past few weeks and like you say he's i think he's going to take the attack straight to straight to Argon here and try and hit him out the attack I think and try and get the seamers back on yeah, first ball he's down the track he's not hanging around he's already shown us his intentions James Fuller's just put back a few paces deeper at uh, mid on there is a short leg in and the slip as Organ bowls down the wicket again is Mitchell there's a more conventional shot that's it through extra cover four runs that's a beautiful shot against the spin coming down the track trapping the spin as well and then just playing it lovely through the covers for four beautiful shot it was. Now, if he's going to keep using his feet like that, then Felix Organ does have a little bit of a problem. I say no real spin for him yet, or not that we've seen. Eventful over. Mitchell's already on eight. Here's Organ again, and bowls, and Mitchell comes down the wicket again, and he walks that high over mid on six runs. And that's into the uh, fencing just behind the boundary rope, well over the head of James Fuller. And again, he's down the track. Well, He's not going to let Felix Organ bowl at him at all. No, he's, um, Felix Organ's fair enough to him. He's, he's tossed all five balls up. He's not, he's not um, shying away from his game plan here. Um, but he might have to just dart a few in quicker to Mitchell now. Yeah, three, exactly right. Three very convincing boundaries there. Yeah, he's going to have to bowl it quicker to try and stop him coming down the wicket. 14, Mitchell. <laughs> Organ. And there's a forward defensive, which actually has come off the bottom of the bat, and it's squeezed past Vince at first slip, and that'll be a single. So uh, he's got a wicket organ, but his uh, first over has gone for 15. Yeah, he's done his job though. He's got that breakthrough for, for Hampshire. So James Vince will be certainly won't mind the 15 runs um, when he's um, when he's already got that wicket for Hampshire. So Hampshire will be hoping to squeeze now with Abbott from from this end. 
Well, it's an interesting because uh, the, the, the three spinners are all very different in their own rights, and you've got Felix Organ turned it into the right-hander. So if you're going to use your feet, that's the safest bowler to be doing it. You've got Liam Dawson, who's off the field at the moment, but left-arm spinner turning it away from the bat or looking to. So that's you've got to be a little bit more careful coming using your feet. And then Mason Crane, who's got both deliveries, the googie and the leg spin, and unless you're picking him, then coming down the wicket really is suicidal. Yeah, you'd say Liam Dawson is the most controlled spinner as well out of the three, wouldn't you? So. You'd say um, if they can attack Hargan while Dawson's off the field, I'm sure they'll just be panicking a little bit. Yeah, we'll have to turn to Mason Crane if that's the case. So Darren Mitchell will face a bit of pace then for the first time. And uh, he's well forward there. He's not like taking, taking a pace down the wicket there as he was facing that uh, delivery. He's played uh, 18 tests, 25 one day internationals, and 52 T20 internationals for uh, New Zealand. Yeah, he's been excellent for New Zealand in the past few years, hasn't he? He really burst onto the scene. He's played some fabulous match-winning knocks in high-pressure games. The World T20 semi-final against England was one that I always remember. He played an excellent knock, and mm. um, he's carried that form into Lancashire, and he'll be hoping he can bat most of the day. He's Abbott again then to Mitchell. Which gets wrapped up the pad. Big shout for an LBW. Neil Malander says no. Well, if you, you could probably bet your bottom dollar. If Neil Manard has said no, <laughs> uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it is an out after what happened with Nick Gubbins. I'm, I'm sorry to say that about Manard because he is a big mate and uh, we've known each other for an awful long time, but uh, I'm not sure the Hampshire players would have much confidence in him after yesterday's decision and maybe the Lancashire players were a bit worried there as well. He had a long think about it, didn't he? <laughs> he, did. he had a really long think. It was one of them double appeals where you always go, oh, the double one might get the finger up here. Um, especially in club cricket, it normally often does. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite in the professional game. You do get the feeling, though. Another big shout in this over might be interesting. Here comes Abbott. Bowls to uh, Mitchell again. And Mitchell drives down the ground. <laughs> My word, that's a superb shot. He does look in Nick, and he does look very, very confident. He's just taking his um, T20 farm into, into the county championship here. Absolutely terrific stuff from uh, Mitchell already. He is being in good form in the T20s, isn't he? I think his lowest score, I can quickly look, is 18 for Lancashire. He's had an 85 not out against Knotts. 105 came against Somerset at uh, Old Trafford in the, his first class game. Here's uh, Abbott to Mitchell and left alone. That goes through to Ben Brown. It's well, right he's certainly providing some entertainment, Callum. Yeah, he's right down the pitch to, to Abbott here, just trying to produce some extra extra pace for himself, make it a little bit easier. And just try and take that C movement away. Yeah, he's on 19 already. 218 for three, so Lancashire lead here by 76. I'll tell you what, Hampshire don't want to see uh, Darrell Mitchell out here by tea time this afternoon. It could be, the game could be way gone by then. He's been very, very positive indeed. As Abbott comes in and bowls. Mitchell drives, and that's back to Abbott. I thought that had gone past Abbott and down the ground, but Abbott had just stuck a hand out and certainly saved four runs there. Yeah, certainly the strike rate that he's going at, they'll be putting a lot more pressure on Hampshire. They'll be opening after that wicket. They could relax a little bit and, <laughs> right. and put a bit of pressure on themselves, but unfortunately it's, it's probably played in uh, Lancashire's favour even more at the moment. It certainly has, yeah. He's going to get the game going forward, that's for sure. 19 off nine deliveries, that is T20 striking. And they've all been proper shots as well. Here comes Abbott, bowls to Mitchell once more. Mitchell gets a link ball and pushes that up to mid-off. And that will be the end of uh, that over. 218 for three. Dane Villas just standing at the non-striker's end and admiring the Kiwi at the moment, as we all are. Yeah, as most of the spectators are in the ground as well. So, it's like you say, he's striking just short of 200, but... The shots are just proper cricket shots. He's, he's played nothing daft. He's played every ball off its merit and just played proper cricket shots so far. Barker and Abba, Abbas, wicketless, which is uh, not often you say that about uh, the uh, Hampshire big three seamers. I mean, they've bowled, uh, what, 14 overs for Barker, 18 for Abbas, and not even a wicket between them. He gets the rate they're going at as well, especially Barker. He's often very economical, isn't he? Yeah. And Abbas is just typical Abbas, isn't he? He's constantly on a length often. He hardly ever um, misses that le six foot length, as they say. So, Felix Organ is going to bowl to Dane Villas, and he's probably relieved about that at the moment. 
as uh, he comes in and bowls and Velas just pushes forward in into the gap in fact well, not even really a gap it's gone to extra cover but they're running and that will bring Mitchell back to the strike and Norkin's probably thinking to myself oh dear here we go <laughs> uh, so Fuller is right back on the mid on boundary now I'm not sure that's far enough the way Mitchell was striking him in the previous over this short leg comes out so Mitchell's done a job you want to get rid of the close infielders he's done it already yeah and I'm surprised he had so many men out to Vilas as well, that first ball. Um, thought they might have cramped him a little bit more then. Here comes Organ then, bowls to Mitchell. Mitchell goes for the reverse sweep. But there is a man on the, the 45. Well, that's something a bit different. <laughs> they just play it so casually these days, don't they? It's just like a normal shot for the batsman these days. It's just a normal forward defence these days for them. Isn't it? A normal shot in your armoury. 2.19 for three then, Felix Organ. Can't keep your eyes off this is a battle. Morgan comes in and Mitchell just pushes forward, gets a thickish edge which rolls along the ground down towards short third. They'll pick up a single. And Mitchell moves on to 20, 219 for three. The lead is 77. I'm sure too many in the uh, hospitality tent to our rides are uh, actually intent on watching the cricket. They seem to be happy to have a natter, most of them. I hope they do well, Mitchell's striking it at the moment. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> God, I feel like saying to him, just put down what you're doing, just watch. <laughs> when Mitchell's facing, watch, because it's entertainment. They are exactly in the hitting arc as well of uh, Dane Vilas and, and Mitchell. They're both quite big sweepers of the ball. Yeah. Well, Hampshire fans will certainly remember uh, Dane Vilas sweeping two years ago at uh, Liverpool to get Lancashire top of the table. Hampshire saying came so close to winning the championship on that occasion as Vilas quietly pushes out on the offside and picks up another single. What he's doing well is actually getting Mitchell back on strike. Yeah, I feel like that's just too easy for Vilas, though. I feel like with the form he's in at the moment, I feel like um, the field should be a lot more attacking. If he does it a couple of times, maybe you can put your men out then. Yeah, yeah almost sort of risk it, force him into doing something. Mitchell comes down the wicket, drives back to Vaughan. Certainly not shying away from tossing the ball up here. Right? No. I, like, I like that he's got the confidence to keep, keep putting a bit of flight on it and and hope Mitchell makes the mistake. Yeah, good point. Mitchell's 20, facing the next delivery from Morgan. Just a slip in close. As that's full, Mitchell just drives that between the bowler and mid-wicket. He's got the field back, so there's a comfortable single. He can do that all day long if he wants to. And he moves on to 21. He keeps the strike. 2-2-2 two, two, two for three. This morning, Lancashire resuming on 139 for one. Josh Bahannon for 39, Phil Salt for 103, the two wickets to fall, Carl Abbott and Felix Organ respectively with their uh, scalps. Liam Dawson off the field after uh, getting a nasty blow in his face. I think it was somewhere around the chin area, I think, wasn't it? Cam? Yeah, there was a bit of blood on the shirt as well, so hopefully yeah. it's just a case of letting the blood um, stop and then new shirt on and then back on the field for Liam Dawson. Well, I hope so. I think he's still off though, isn't he? He's yeah, he's still off at the moment. Yeah. That came about because of Dane Villas edging into the slips and Fletcher Middleton just sticking out a hand and it ricocheted off his fingers into Dawson's face. Here's Abbott, bowls, and he's playing a missing outside the off stump there, Mitchell. First mistake of his, good bowling from Abbott. I think he's actually nicked that as a second slip. Oh, was he? Oh, sorry, apologies, I missed I that in the light. Yeah. Did that not carry? He could be right, actually, Callum. Again, example of, you know, every now and then the ball just does not carry. It's quite weird because the carry is normally lovely, and yet at times the ball doesn't carry for some reason off the edge. And Especially with Abbott, with probably the quickest out of the three seamers, you would say. Yeah. But, you know, it, 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 this pitch has, they're saying, it's, yeah, it can be a bit too paced at times here. Yeah. Comes Abbott again. Bowls to Mitchell. Mitchell gets a shorter one and just sways inside the line. Have you played here a few times, Carl? I played um, a bit of junior cricket here, actually, um, when I was at a local college, my school college in Preston, and I played just some um, under-18s cricket while while I was local. Um, whereas, like you say, it was a lovely ground. I don't think at the time they was hosting Lancashire games at that time. Um, but in the recent years, it's become a permanent fixture for Southport yeah. and Birkdale Cricket Club. And... The facilities um, are excellent for club cricket. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> yes, yeah, perfect. If you're playing at club cricket, wow. A good spot. Abbott comes in and Mitchell drives in the air. He's got underneath it, but he's also got a bit of distance as well. And that's gone into the crowd. About two rows back. He's just absolutely hit that like a golf shot. A golfer with about 100 yards to go on the green. It's just come from nowhere God. as well, hasn't it? He's just 
just ducked and swayed out of a balance. So he's just got a length ball. He just freed his arms up, backed himself, and he's cleared the ropes. Wow. That's a serious shot, that is. Just a free flow of the arms through the line of the ball. And it is. It's like he's playing T20. Yeah, it's such puts us such um, James Vince in such a difficult position now as well because they've just got a wicket and they would want to put a lot of pressure on but he's going to have to spread the field soon he is Abbott comes in again to Mitchell length ball Mitchell forward punches that up to mid off where Weatherly fields so Mitchell is 27 Villas the quieter of the two on six I think it's probably just as well we don't want him going at the same pace I don't think we'd have uh, enough puff it's too hot to be calling both these players batting at that <laughs> uh, pace uh, 228 for three a lead is 86, having started the day three behind. So they're making good progress here, Lancashire. We are only in the fourth session of the game. Plenty of time left. The weather's pretty good. I think somebody said there might be a thunderstorm latish today as Abbott bowls. Mitchell gets one. It bounces a bit, keeps it down, but works it on the onside into the gap. Yeah, I think there was one due potentially around 7 p.m., but I feel like it might have changed again already. Oh, is it? Um, like you say, this picture is just going to keep getting drier and drier, isn't it? It's the sun baking down on it. Tomorrow in the fourth day it will be quite difficult to bat because it'll become really too paced, and the, and the slower bowlers will come into come into play a lot more. They might do, but I think it might be too late. Yeah. <laughs> By then. <laughs> That's what Lancashire the Lancashire fans will be hoping for. Yeah. Well. I think it's heading that way at the moment, and this Hampshire can find something from somewhere. As Abbott comes in again, Mitchell leaves that one alone, and that is the end of the over. Abbott has one for 45 uh, five from 13, 229 for three. Bella six, Mitchell 28, and that's come off just 19 deliveries, and uh, the lead is uh, 87. I think Scott Reed will be back shortly. Yes, Felix Organ's taking his cap off. Now, James Vince is having a chat with him. It's interesting what uh, Cannon Flynn was saying there, that uh, he's got to think about maybe changing the field and going a bit more defensive because uh, Mitchell at the moment is uh, looking very, very dangerous indeed. Yeah, it's, it's certainly not what you want as a captain. The, you know, the game's uh, difficult enough as it is, but then when, you, when the kind of controls out of your hands, it really does become um, an hard game to to lead and Vince will just be open Argon can just gain a bit of pressure back here so here he is then bowling to uh, Mitchell oh Mitchell was going to sweep that and in the end just pushes the bat down and he's very full <laughs> and that goes out on the 45 Alex Ivory was getting ready to sweep I think they were, I think they're looking um, I think they would be comfortable to play sweep shots but the length that Argon's bowled at the moment is really full and I think if he did play sweep shot it'd probably be well then where it sneaks under your bat and actually bowls you but he's bowling that full yeah, he did well to readjust there, Mitchell. So it brings Dane Villas back on strike. 2.30 for three here in a very, very hot Southport and Birkdale Cricket Club. Just down, just near the coast. As he's playing forward there and he's caught behind. Was he bold? Yes, he's bold. And Dane Villas just whacks the bat on his pad. He's disappointed with that coming forward and he goes for six. And Felix Organ has picked up his second wicket in Lancashire go to 230 for four if you're watching the live picture feed have a look here's the replay organ bowls and it's always oh, gone between bat and pad and that's out of barker's rough yeah it's an absolute ripper that it's turned a good a good three or four stump length should say um really outside off stump and i think i think credit to james vince there we were saying um how he's left deep deep cover out and it's quite an easy single but often that's how you get the batsman out. Uh, Dane Vilas probably thinks I can just prod forward, just kind of angle my bat into the covers there, get an easy single, um, and that's where the gap comes. And he's and he's spun it through the gate and bowled him. So credit to James Vince and the bowler there. Organ's really not shied away from giving it a good um, giving it a good flight um, since Mitchell's really attacked him. So. So it's been excellent from Morgan to, to keep his nerve, keep tossing the ball up and keep trying to game, keep trying to game that um, advantage. Rob Jones is the uh, new batter. Callum Flynn is just going to take uh, a bit of a break and then uh, in alongside uh, me is uh, Scott Reid, who's uh, back, and then I'll be back shortly. No worries, Kev. 
Yeah, it was a good delivery, that wasn't it? That's um, a delivery that's spun back in, and landing in the footmarks created by Keith Barker, who's been bowling his uh, left arm seam from over the wicket. 2.30 for four. What's the lead now? Bottom of the screen, 88. Lancashire's lead. Rob Jones is the new batter. We've got about, well, almost exactly half an hour, actually, until we get to the uh, lunch uh, interval. Uh, morning sessions bounce along quite nicely, hasn't it? It's uh, been uh, Lancashire... 140 for, for one resuming this morning, so almost added 100 runs effectively. Three wickets have gone down. That's an eventful morning session. Felix Organ with his second wicket of the, uh, of the day as well. So Jones, a new batter. And he gets in behind this delivery and defends into the offside. There's no run. Wickets of Salt for 103. Bohannon for 39. And Dane Bellas for 6. This morning, here's Felix Organ in. Balls to Jones, who's right forward. Defends again into the offside. And there's no run. Yeah, Lancashire closing last night on 139 for 1. So, yeah, pretty much uh, 100 runs in the session. And three wickets to 4. It's a full of ball, which uh, Jones strikes back down the pitch and gathered by Felix Organ off his own bowling. No run. This is a slip and a short leg in place for uh, the new batter, Rob Jones. Organ bowls again. Whipped away into the onside. It's in front of square. Down towards... Uh, Mason Crane for one run to, to Jones. That gets him going. His uh, first run of the match. In fact, it's his first run of the county championship season. This is his first game in uh, the county championship this year for Rob Jones. 231 uh, for, for four, a lead of 89 between the two sides. Lancashire with six. Wickets remaining in their first innings. Their first match for Jones, this. He's played a couple of T20 games for uh, for Lancashire, but first ch time to play four day cricket. Some scores in Lancashire's second 11 this summer. Injury creating chances in the first team now. Abbott to Jones, that's down the leg side it's a good take by Ben Brown, tumbling away to his left score remains at 131 uh, for four As Jones comes down, there's a little bit of gardening about uh, 25 minutes until lunch. One more would be handy for Hampshire here, wouldn't it, in the final 25 minutes of the second day, the morning session. Jones gets forward, defends again, and there's no run. It'll scout around the, the grounds elsewhere. Essex, 456 for nine. In their first innings, they're taking on Somerset this week. Two centuries in that game, one for Salester Cook and one for Matt Critchley. Essex, four, five, six for nine. Kent have, have got Surrey at 40 for four. In reply to their total of 301 all out. As Abbott bowls to Jones. It's on the front foot, just shapes away a little from Jones into the gloves of the keeper. There's no run. And the other game in Division One is Nottinghamshire against. Uh, Warwickshire. Warwickshire 455 for seven. In the game at uh, Trent Bridge. There are four Division Two games all in play as well. Yorkshire lead Derbyshire by 240 runs at 351 for seven. Durham 94 for three, trailing Glamorgan by 390. Gloucestershire 188 for six against Leicestershire. And 
Worcestershire 68 for one. Now, but balls, and that's defended by Jones, is no run. Worcestershire 68 for one in reply to a Sussex total of 348. Uh, all out here, 231 for four. Jones on one, Mitchell on 29. Kevin's back alongside me. It's gone a little bit quiet since uh, Villas' dismissal, hasn't it, really? Yeah. I'm not sure how much uh, Mitchell's faced the strike recently. But even so, uh, he's very watchable, isn't he, Daryl Mitchell? Yes, he is. Can't keep your eyes off him. That six he hit, that straight six he hit earlier on, that's been... I mean, he's played that shot umpteen times already, this season, in both formats. So strong down the ground. Jones gets forward and defends, no run. He's looked at class above at times, Mitchell. Yeah, this, yeah the six off Abbott. <laughs> Wide mid on. Cool. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, he can hit it, can't he? It's not like Abbott's bowling badly. No, it's just, no. He just sees the length early, doesn't he? And then just knows that he can hit through it. And it's a safe shot. It's a great shot. It's the best of his shots. And he's played a few already. He's an 89 for Lancashire. Abbott to complete the over. Five dot balls. Sent down. Jones has defended them all. Left a couple. It's four to this next delivery. The ball ricochets away back down the pitch of the pad of uh, Rob Jones, who got nicely forward outside the line of off stump on that front foot. Well, not had chance this season too much. Rob Jones to contribute. First game of the championship season for him, but lovely chance, the opportunity to try and see if he can try and get his four-day season up and running. Just peering past Scott Reid there. Hello. S sorry, Kevin, I'll lean back. No, no, but please, no, I just don't uh, want to... Don't want to st didn't want to steal my picture, did he, really? I don't, I don't want to steal your, your, your picture, no. <laughs> uh, I've neglected the emails uh, a little bit, so uh, I'll try and get through one or two of these, because we are I think about 25, just under 25 minutes till lunch. But I must keep an eye on Mr Mitchell, because mm. it's Felix Organ on. He's just tinkering with the field on the leg side. Abbott's just not quite on the boundary at deep backward square leg. So here's Felix Organ then with his off spin bowling to Mitchell. And Mitchell comes down the wicket and just turns that away down towards Abbott. Picks up a single. 30 moves on to 232 for four. Howard Chambers has emailed silentcricket at gmail.com. He says, as a keen Lancashire fan exiled in Greece, I have to follow Lancashire around the circuit by various live feeds. Not wanting to gloat, but the Lancashire stream is certainly one of the better feeds around, in my experience. Uh, great to have the commentary sync with the pictures. He's also included his Greek phone number on the email. I'm not sure I'm, not sure I'm going to need that, if I'm honest. But anyway, that's turned away on the leg side by Jones. And quickly across is Nick Gubbins, but a single it is. I mean, if he wants me to phone him, I will. I'll use your phone. <laughs> <laughs> you could pay the bill. Use the work one. <laughs> I'll use the work one. Yeah. But thank you for that one. So, 233 for four. And Darrell Mitchell is back on strike. What's he going to do here? Felix Organ bowls, forward defensive. Great contest between these two. It is. Felix Organ's picked up two. Whether he would have been actually on at all with Dawson off the field would have been interesting, but he's picked up two for. Two for 23. He's into his fourth here. Bowls and Mitchell comes down the wicket but just plays the forward defensive. Obviously, felt he wasn't quite to the pitch of that and mid on and mid off a back, so he knows that if he uh, goes aerial, it's got to come out somewhere near the middle of the bat. Ball gets back to Organ. Just takes his time, looking to bowl into those footmarks of Keith Barker's. There's the reverse sweep for Mitchell, goes in the air. Just down the leg side, fractionally, Vince was scrambling across from first slip, although it looks like it's come off the pad. It has. Umpire Rob Bailey signals so, and it's 234 for four. The lead for Lancashire is 91. That brings Rob Jones, and the field comes up a little bit. Mid on and mid off come up. Short legs in. Jones. Shot over the top on it if he wants to. Just pushes forward there. It looks an all game when somebody else is batting and not Mitchell. And you just feel there's a boundary sort of around the corner when Mitchell's batting. It just feels a little different when, certainly when Jones, although he's in the early stages of his career, so, uh, career uh, his, his innings. So he's just trying to get the feel. Darrell Mitchell didn't bother getting the feel. He just came down the wicket straight away. Yeah. 
went down and gave it a wallop, didn't he, straight away? He's in great form, though. Both in the red ball and white ball teams for, for Lancashire this season. Looks it too, doesn't he? 39, not out. <laughs> type of player where you, he's out there for kind of 40 minutes or so and already he's got 35, 40 to his name. Without too much kind of drama. Good contest this, isn't it? Top high class contest between Abbott and, and Mitchell continuing. Mitchell just pushed up towards mid on where Barker feels. Chucks through for a single, moves on to 31, not out. 235 for four, so a lead now is 93. Field changes a little bit for Jones. They're going to have a few more reinforcements behind the batter. They've got two slips and a gully. And Crane just comes into back with point. There's a cover, mid off. Mid on, mid wicket. Fine leg. It's run down to third man by by Jones. Over the boundary rope towards the front row of spectators, just beyond the rope. Four to Jones. He moves on to six. Two thirty-nine for four. Let's just seen those spectators there behind the ball when it went over the rope. They looked hot. They did a bit, didn't they? These plastic chairs that they're sat on, too, that, that could be quite a sticky afternoon, <laughs> there, couldn't it? Might take a bit of prizing off those chairs. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, dear. The ice cream van is on the far side of the ground. That'll be doing some business today. Ooh. Abbott to Jones, that's defended again. Rolls out towards Mason Crane, who's just back with a point and there's no run. In fact, there's a queue forming at the ice cream van already. Yes. Is it the same ice cream van that was actually to our right yesterday? Because I'm sure there was one to our right. What? And I think that one was yellow. And this is kind of like a, like a pinky colour. Oh. There it is. Actually, I thought there was a queue forming, but there doesn't appear to be. There's, they just, uh, some people just stood there by eating their ice cream. There's nobody having an ice cream right now. I think there's two guys there just going to... Having, a, uh, having an ice cream, but there was nobody in the queue. This, oh. this is the time to get to the ice cream van. Yeah. You need to be quick with the ice cream today, don't you? It melts all the way down your hand. <laughs> Jones waits for Abbott. And that's off the front foot and defends again to mid off, and there's no run. I, I mean, I would have bought you an ice cream, but, but by the time I yeah. walk back, it won't be around. It'll no. be gone. So only for that reason. Okay. I won't buy you one. I think that's actually, even though you had no intent of buying me an ice cream whatsoever that is actually quite a genuine reason not to i think that's i think that's acceptable it will have completely melted by the time you get back here so it's a beautifully timed excuse thank you perfectly waited for this hot day <laughs> can't get you one it's going to melt away down my hand two three nine for four eased away to the offside by jones not picked up cleanly by mason Crane. And uh, Jones can just sneak through for a quick single. Moves on to seven. 240 for four. So the lead now is 98. Brings Daryl Mitchell back on strike. And, uh, Felix Organ disappearing out towards the deep square leg boundary in front of the railway line. There's a fine leg. Crane drops back to the point boundary just in front of the corporate marquee. Two slips, gully, cover, mid off, and a mid on. Final ball of the over for, for Abbott. Mitchell doesn't offer a shot. The ball's, it would appear, has come back in. Ben Brown, the keeper, takes it away to his left hand side. Mitchell didn't offer a shot, allowed it to go past. Maybe just a little bit of late movement back yeah. in as, uh, as Brown took it. There's certainly a reaction from Brown and from the bowler. The end of the over. 240 for four, like a lead of 98 runs. We've got 15 minutes left of the morning session. Email here from Jerry St. Clair, sonantcricket at gmail.com, under the uh, heading of Fun Cricket Event. Uh, he says, afternoon. He says, enjoying the game on this sunny Monday lunchtime with some corned beef sandwiches in the garden with my friend Brian. 
Uh, we're planning a cricket day at our club, the Phoenix, which is in Bolton. Does that mean anything to you guys? No, they both. No, they're both shaking their heads. Uh, if you guys don't, I certainly don't. Uh, which is going to feature talent recruitment by Dougie Hayes Talent Agency. Other talent agencies available, of course. Indeed. Uh, but uh, on this particular day, it's the Dougie Hayes one, as that's uh, pushed forward by Rob Jones out on the offside. Start of a new over from Felix uh, Organ. And um, uh, this is for anyone interested in playing uh, there on the day. So really appreciate you reading this out. Uh, so uh, it sounds like there's some invitations going there if you want to play as that's driven out towards uh, mid-off and there's no one. The event will also have live music, entertainment and catering. So it will be a great day out for families. We're also looking at getting the event hosted by David Lloyd himself. Oh, good. Thank you very much, gents. Loving the game. Hoping for a Lancashire win as Sorgan comes in. Bowles, Jones on the back foot and misses. Tries to push that away. A bit too square on the offside. It was a little too close to him for that one. Uh, but sadly, got to go to the doctors this afternoon for a scan, so can't watch much more. Take care and thank you very much, says Joey. Good luck with the scan this afternoon. This organ is ready. 2.40 for four in a game. Bowles, Jones drives back to the bowler. There's not so much happening when Jones is facing Felix Organ. You just... It's almost as if you're anticipating Mitchell getting back down there end and seeing what he's going to do. Just being a little bit more cautious. This comes in again. Jones drives. Actually, he's found the gap through extra cover. That's a lovely shot. Just slightly overpitched there from Felix Organ, and Jones had the confidence to hit through it. And he picks up a boundary, moves on to 11 2 44 for four. Yeah, that's a good shot, wasn't it? It's reaching for it, Jones, forcing the ball away through the offside. So, the lead now is 102, so it's over the 100 mark for Lancashire, and they still have six second wick innings wickets intact. He's well forward there, Rob Jones, in fact, so far forward, he fell over himself. And that is the end of the over. Phoenix Sorgan now has two for 27 from five. Yeah, 13 minutes left of this uh, morning session. And quite an intriguing start, hasn't it, to, to the second day? Mm. Runs have come for Lancashire. They've, they've added over 100 through the morning. Lost three wickets in the process. The fact that spinners are in tandem, ball's turning a bit, certainly out of the footmarks, and the ball has follows through. Inevitable, we're going to see quite a bit of spin today. Hampshire have gone with three frontline spinners in the team, so. The three seamers and the three spinners, six bowlers in, being used, and Crane and Organ and Dawson whenever he, he returns. Hopefully yeah. not too hopefully not too long, and hopefully he's okay. The minute Crane and Felix Organ are going to have to shoulder a bit of extra responsibility. Now this is the contest I want to see here, Scott. <laughs> Uh, Daryl Mitchell, is he going to use his feet to Mason Crane? Is he going to pick the googly? Is he going to pick the leg spin? Is it going to turn? A lot of questions there. Mm. Let's see, let's see some of the answers. In comes, he goes on a little paddle. There's uh, Mitchell down towards fine leg and shuffles back for a couple. As Crane starts his uh, first over of the, of the day. Mitchell moves on to 33, 246 for four. So he's got uh, long off and long on back. Crane in and bowls. Yeah, just looks to paddle it around the corner. He's in position nice and early to play the shot, Mitchell. Deflects away off the face of the bat. Runs down towards Abbas. Gets through for a single. Moves on to 34. Score moves on to 247 for four. The field has changed with, with Rob Jones on strike. Crane going to bring up his two fielders on the boundary, long off and long on. So it's mid on and mid off now. Crane in, bowls. Flashed away through the onside. Good stop at mid wicket. It's Felix Organ. That's a good low stop away to his left hand side. Jones went to meet it on the fall and flashed it away through mid wicket. Crane again. To Jones, plays forward. 
going to get through for a quick single. He just pushed away into the offside, out towards point. Middleton comes up and fields, but Jones and Mitchell were on the move nice and early. And they get through for, for one, 248 for four. I have some news of Liam Dawson at the end okay. of this over. Okay. Two balls left of the uh, the over. The first one from, from Mason Crane. Mitchell's on strike. Took the back foot and drives nicely down the ground for one run. Moves on to 35. Yeah, Dawson off the field. There's a chance in the slips, which as the replay showed us. It was a, it was Middleton at third slip who pushed the ball, deflected the ball onto. Liam Dawson, it caught him on the mouth and he had to leave the field with blood flowing. It's defended by Jones, and into the offside for no run. It's the end of Crane's first over. 2.49 for four, lead of 107. Yeah, so it, it, it went at pace, didn't it, off it did. Villas's edge? I think it was off a, a bass. And, um, yeah, deflected straight into um, Dawson's face. Uh, off the fingertips. Uh, the news is uh, not great. Uh, he's gone to hospital. Apparently, it's split the upper part of his lip to split it open, and he's gone to have some stitches. Yeah, it looked pretty nasty, that didn't it? As yeah. As it happened. Which is not surprising why he covered his whole sort of mouth yeah, up with exactly. his shirt, really. I guess uh, they, they, I've just been told it, it looked pretty horrible. Right. So I don't think it's the sort of thing you would have wanted to sort of been looking at. Uh, here's organ. Here's the organ Mitchell show. Comes in the game and bowls, and Mitchell just turns that away behind square on the next side. Very quiet shot from the Kiwi, moves on to 36. And that's the 250 up for Lancashire, and that is a batting point. Which some in the crowd appreciated. <laughs> Not many in the others, corporate marquee. Others are still thinking, gosh, isn't it hot? <laughs> Not many in the corporate no. marquee, no. Um, we did read out the table list, didn't we, yesterday? Should we read it out again today? It's changed a little. Do we need to? Probably not. And he's wrapped on the pad there. Shout for an LBW of Jones as it goes out on the offside, and they'll come through for a leg by 251 for four. The committee have still got two tables yeah, there for the Lancashire committee. Still plenty of them around. Missing table three. Malcolm Lorimer. So he's Lancashire's vice president, and it's his birthday today. Uh -huh. I was hoping you, you, between you two, you and Callum would know some of the names because they're all individual names there, aren't they? That's, uh, that's turned away quietly on the leg side again by Mitchell. Moves on to 37, and it's 2.52 for four. Um, table 14, Andy Hunter has got a V with a circle, and I presume he's vegetarian or a vegan. Oh, that's a good question. Would that be? That would that be? be? Right. Yeah, it could be right, yeah. Mm. Not that that matters, of course, no, but it's just, it's just interesting that he's the only one with a V next to his name. He comes oh, and forward as Jones gets wrapped on the pad. But a full hospitality box. Tony Elwood, table number four. He's the chairman of the, of the oh, sports yes. club. Of course. He's got a table in there. I've seen Malcolm Lorimer today, the vice president of Lancashire. His shirt. OK. Jones is forward, gets a bat on this one. I said this to him. I think he's highly inappropriate for a vice president. <laughs> it's one shirt. He's a one flamboyant shirt, is this? I said to him, I'd mention this. He's wearing the. He's like, like something from like you, you see on a, a Hawaiian beach. Really? He's the vice president. Oh dear. I know. Mind you, a day like this, you could just about get away with it. And there's a drive from Jones down the ground because both mid on and mid off are up, and that'll be four runs. Well, as Callum was saying earlier, that uh, he's keeping it very full, Felix Organ, but he is running the risk of being driven. But the footmarks of Barkers are fairly full, so he's, he's sort of hedging his bets, I guess. And it's already paid dividends when. Uh, he got Villas, which one that turned out of the footmarks. End of the over, 2.56 for four. Nice shot, wasn't it, by Jones? And punched it down the ground. He's got his innings up and running, hasn't he? 16 to Jones. There's some very hot people, actually, in that uh, yeah. hospitality. And, and either somebody's going around with a bucket of water or some people are sweating quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not, uh, <laughs> it's not ideal in a... Big marquee, a bit, bit pretty warm in there. Two, two, five, six for four. <laughs> they won't, they won't care after tea. No. There'll be that many freebie wines in. They won't give a jot. This is uh, Crane to, to Mitchell. I get it. Still, quite, there's no run. There. It's still quite low key, isn't it? Just a nice little gentle chat going yeah. on. But yeah. that, that will all change as, as, as the day progresses. It'll all get a bit lively. Did yesterday. 
again, Mitchell defends, no run. Enjoyed a good day though, I chat to one or two of the um, guys that were in the marquee at the close of play and the, how much they enjoy coming to, to Southport and enjoying the, the setup and watching a bit of cricket, albeit they admitted they'd not seen too much of it. But they enjoyed their day. Forward again goes Mitchell in defence. Let's play back to Mason Crane. There's no run. Nothing extravagant so far from Mitchell facing Crane, but we are four minutes away from lunch. It's been a couple of little paddle sweeps since Crane's come into the attack. This is driven through mid off for a single. Takes Mitchell on to 38. And the score moves on to 257 for four. Crane's bowling quite accurately here at the moment. Hasn't uh, given anything loose at the moment. Lead of 115. Just turned away to square leg by, by Jones. Easing the ball on the ground through the leg side for one run. Moves to 17. 258 for four. Just the two singles off the over. The final ball about to be sent down by Crane. Mitchell will nudge it away to, to mid wicket. And there is uh, no run. 258 for four. Lancashire in their first innings, replying to that total of 142 that Hampshire made on day one. And we are slowly creeping up towards the lunch break. Certainly time for one more over. The wickets to fall today. Salt, but not before reaching his first century, 103. Bohannon, first to go for 39. Velas falling for six. Peter in Penzance has just emailed saying, oh, I've seen the Surrey score. I think you read some scores out a few minutes ago, didn't you? But I, I haven't did. actually seen it. No, Callum pointed it out to me. I'd not actually brought the, the latest. It was, it's now 47 for six. <laughs> so they're replying to, to a Kent total of 301. Surrey of 47 for six with uh, Matt Quinn picking up three wickets. It's not really flat there. What's it doing? <laughs> So, Felix Organ, with what will probably be the last over before lunch, he's going to be bowling to Rob Jones on 17. 2.58 for four. His short leg is in, and now we've got a silly mid-off as well. And the slip, three keeping him company, and four if you include the keeper, as Rob Jones off the back foot steers it out into the covers. Bit of an in-and-out field because the uh, cover field is uh, on the rope. So that will bring Mitchell back on strike, who uh, is showing... No real intent now as we get towards the break. It looks like he's saving himself for after lunch. 2.59 for four it is. As field scatters a bit more now. He comes down the wicket but drives along the ground. He's opened it. He's opened the field up there, hasn't he? Deep mid on. Doesn't need to go early if he doesn't want to. He can just steer it along the floor. Single for him every time if he wants it. And he moves on to 39. Yeah, it's pretty risk-free, isn't it? Yeah. It's on the stroke of lunch, there's no point. It's going to take any any chances. Just nice little clever cricket, isn't it? Push yeah. it along the ground, take a single. Proper batting. Jones is forward, spoons it up in the air, and he's caught at mid wicket. And that is Mason Crane, and Rob Jones just swats the ground with his bat. He spooned it up in the air. He's gone for 18. 260 for five. The players go in for lunch. Yeah, right on the stroke of lunch. Tossed up again by Crane. Chipped to midwick, sorry, by uh, Felix Organ and chipped to midwick it where Crane took the catch. And uh, what an intriguing session that, Kevin. Yes. Like a shift five down at, at lunch. I mean, they've, they've, they've gone from 139 for one to 260 for five. So they've scored runs, but they've lost wickets along the way. But I think a really intriguing morning that. 260 for five. I like it. It's a lead of 118 runs. Game certainly moved forward that morning session, yeah, didn't it? Yeah, uh, really. And uh, Felix Organ, wow, probably bowling because Liam Dawson is off the field, getting some stitches into uh, his uh, face wound. Three for us, isn't it? Three for him. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's done a good job. Salt, Villas, and Jones for uh, Felix Organ. And 
hopefully from a Hampshire point of view more wickets to come this afternoon because it's still a healthy lead by uh, Lancashire they lead by 117 yeah we'll take a little break then that's lunch uh, catch us uh, in around about 40 minutes we'll bring you the afternoon session I think we'll have that scoreboard updates on the screen there it'll take along to 260 for 4 that's 265 rather so we'll leave it at 118 runs it's 264 for runs Mitchell will resume and beaten on 39 after lunch and he'll be joined by George Bell and we'll be back with you for the afternoon session in about 40 minutes. If you give players the right level of help, you can help players who might have been fringe players become quality players. Do you see the, the influence of the way that England have played in the last six months drilling down into the county game? We can't just have a squad of players for Lancashire and expect them to all play for Lancashire all year. I was fairly argumentative as a youngster. I thought I did, what do you mean as a I did think. <laughs> Not that I didn't believe in coaching, I was always prepared to listen to people I respected. Where did the spark come from? Why did you think you wanted to become a coach? The concept of being a pro didn't really dawn on me until I was offered a contract. Not frustrating, but I was determined that we could go better than fourth place. Does that rankle with you, that you never got more of an opportunity to play for England? If somebody had to say what defines Glen Chapel, that, that last game probably would be it. Hello and welcome along to another edition of Beyond the Boundary. I'm delighted to say that my guest today is somebody who's been synonymous with Lancashire cricket since the early 90s. His connection has been uh, unbreached since 1992. Uh, he is one of the county's best ever quick bowlers, taking 985 first-class wickets captain the side to the county championship victory in 2011 and is now the head coach it's a very warm welcome to glenn chapel glenn i just get the feeling that with all your enthusiasm and having got to know you pretty well over the last five years or so that you'd still be playing if you could <laughs> um well I, I was lucky enough to be able to play for a long time the body didn't let me down um and i still have a bowl in the nets now and again I don't think I'm up to standing out in the field and diving around, but, um, but yeah, I still enjoy the skill stuff. But 24 years as a player is a phenomenal span, especially as, a, as an opening bowler. What fortified you through all that, through obviously your early part of your career, it's, it's all said and done, but through the latter part? Yeah, well, I think in 24 years you change a lot in that time and your outlook changes. Um, from starting off being surprised that you're a professional cricketer and wondering what you're doing to going through thinking halfway through I thought I've had a decent career now but it's going to take a big effort to carry on and as I played for longer I, I seemed to get more and more resolved to, to carry on and sort of do something that I could be proud of at the end of it. Jimmy Anderson no less uh, said a couple of years ago he said I've never played with anybody who works harder at his game that's a, a fantastic testament to your, your time in the game and the attitude that you, you put into it. Yeah, again, I think I realised as I moved through my career that you had to put the right, the right kind of work in. I'm not sure about working harder, but I did work, work as, as hard as I deemed necessary. But it became, you know, the work that you do is important. So if it's 10 minutes, it's 10 minutes. But if it's, if it's an hour, it's an hour. You need to prepare to play the next game you're going to play and to be able to get through a full season. And there's a lot of things around the edges of being a bowler that you need to pay attention to if you want to, if you want to stay on the park. And that's just not, not the normal stuff. It's all the modern stuff that we do to prevent injury, to make certain areas of your body stronger. Where did all this come from then? Because for a, a Lancastrian, which you're not because you were born in Skipton, <laughs> and somebody who's grown up on the border of Lancashire and, and Yorkshire at Irby. Um, what, 
What was your early influence in all this? Were your parents um, very instrumental in, in instilling in you a work ethic? Yeah, well, work ethic, um, I think so, certainly. Um, certainly grounded people, um, but you know, they were both involved in the cricket club down at Aby. Um, Dad was a pro in the leagues, played for many years for Aby, Nelson, Darwin. Um, and we were a family who just spent time at the club, really. I had a lot of friends there. So we were always there playing cricket, whether it be tennis ball, um, in the nets at night with the men. Um, and in those days you would progress quite early. So I, I was playing at six in the under 12s. I was playing at 11 in the third team. Um, and there were no restrictions on anything. So it was just a life spent playing cricket, basically. Um, Did you play at school? No, only a couple of games. I think, uh, no, my school was more football. Um, played two games, I think, at school. Won one against a team, another team who didn't play, and then we played against Queggs in Blackburn and got beat by about 200 runs. <laughs> so. so you're very much a product of family, club, and the Lancashire age group setup. Yeah, absolutely. My school were very helpful. They were, you know, they were always keen to let me go to every representative fixture and training thing going. Um, the representative stuff, because I lived on the border of Lancs and Yorkshire, I went to school in Lancashire, which made me qualified for Lancashire schools. Um, but the first instance I remember was our club having winter nets at Burnley, and there was a coach called Jim Kenyon. Oh, yeah. He was connected down here. <coughs> so he, he brought me down, and that was my first connection to the club. Jim Kenyon was uh, one of the stalwarts of the coaching setup in Lancashire in that in the 80s uh, and way before that as well. And he must have brought quite a few uh, young cricketers into into Lancashire's uh, books, I would say. Yeah, there's a lot of players of certainly my era, older and younger, who have good things to say about Jim. So I remember him coaching me in a similar way to what my dad would do. You know, challenging you. Can you do this? You know, what about the in-swinger? I want, I want to see three out-swingers, all that stuff. So that's good coaching. You know, back mm. in the day when coaching wasn't really a, a, a learned thing, it was just experienced cricketers helping lads along the way. Well, it wasn't an occupation then, was it, yeah. coaching? I, I mean, I, I think coaching has only really come into, um, into its own as a profession, if you like, probably during your time in the game. Would you, would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. When I started, we basically had a manager, didn't we? Mm. We'd call him coach or manager. Mm. And again, he would help us become better at cricket. But a lot of the learnings were from your teammates as well. In those days. Uh, so, OK, so you, you, teammates, who were, the, who were the biggest influences early in your career, apart from your dad, obviously? Mm. Uh, well, all the, all the fellas I played with at the club, I mean, that was a... An enjoyable and tough school, you know, a lot of uh, what you'd call sledging and grown-up stuff in the leagues, people falling out with each other, but that, you know, that sort of made you appreciate what playing cricket against adults is like, and then as you move through, I was lucky enough to play above age in age group cricket, so you look at, I played with people like John Crawley, two years older, Ronnie Rani, um, people like that, so you're constantly learning off, uh, from people who are more, more advanced, if you like, with more experience. And then coming into Lancashire's team, um, that was pretty daunting in a way because certainly early on in my career, I think we had everybody else in the first team had played for England. Uh, mm. So we had a whole host of quality cricketers from overseas as well as, you know, homegrown players, others, Neil Fairbrother. When I started, I think Neil Fairbrother was captain. Then we had Mike Watkinson, others, um, Graham Gally Lloyd. and Crawley. Gally and Crawley, Defratus. Wazim Akram, obviously a key influence, Peter Warren. Martin, Warren Haig, I mean, the list is, goes on and on. Mm. Um, so how influential were your peers then? Because you, did, you didn't play, uh, no, I, I hesitate to say this, but like any player who goes on and has a really substantial career, you didn't play many second team games. No, a handful. Mm. Um, I joined, so you're learning on the job, basically. Yeah, you are. I'd played second team from 16, um, briefly at 16, then more at 17. Joined the staff on a summer contract in 92. And I think the team was struggling with illness and injury. And, I'd, and old age. And old age. Me. You, you were still around, <laughs> yes. telling us what to do at Crosby one day. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I remember. Yeah, yeah. God. Um, 
but I'd done well in the second team and I was whisked off down to Hove to make my debut in down there. And when you when you came into the first team, it was predominantly as a bowler. Yeah. And obviously you were raw, um, but you would have had some thoughts and ideas about what your main strengths were. What were they? I think my bowling was quite developed from a young age. I think at you know, 13, 14, I had the skills and the, the accuracy required probably better than most at that age. So I was always confident of, of those areas of my game. The bit I always remember, and it's probably different, completely different to lads nowadays, is that I'd not, I didn't have any contact with professional cricket as a youngster because we lived quite a long way from Old Trafford there was no thought to come and watch a game here I think my first game that I watched I was probably 16 maybe watched a couple at Headingley when I was 9 or 10 but the concept of being a pro didn't really dawn on me until I was offered a contract so that was the, that was the thing different to now we've got the academy we've got lads coming through who believe they've a chance to play professional cricket didn't really dawn on me till I, maybe when I went on the under 19s tour with England and then getting a contract, so it was all pretty quick, and mm. it's like, oh my word, you know. There's already an element uh, and a, a theme of being self-taught and self-reliant in in your development. Uh, would you say that that has carried through now into your coaching uh, mantra, if you like, your philosophy on coaching? Well, I keep trying to keep trying to learn and become more aware of certain things, certainly as a young player. I did, not that I didn't believe in coaching, we didn't know what it was to, to that degree. I, I was always prepared to listen to people I respected, rightly or wrongly. Um, mm. People I thought knew what they were talking about. But at the same time, I was fairly argumentative as a youngster. I thought... I what did, do you mean as a I youngster? Did think, <laughs> I did think <laughs> I knew best quite a lot of the time. That's something I try my best not to let... Uh, enter into my coaching theory um, and as a coach now I think where I'm at is like, try and constantly make it about the player and the team rather than about yourself obviously we still make mistakes but um, I think that's the key the players know a lot more than you think sometimes so try and get the knowledge they have out into the open yeah it's an interesting progression really for, for you as a bowler coming from uh, where you came from not having an awful lot of um, what you would call formal coaching, that you decided that that's where you would go um, once you were coming towards the end of your playing career. What, what actually prompted that? Where did the spark come from? Why did you think you wanted to become a coach? Oh, I think as I got older as a player, probably around 28, that kind of age, I began to see what good people running teams could do and what they could do for a team. And it's not about... It's not always about technical coaching. Um, there is a, a big element of that at certain parts of the year. But it's how a team performs as a unit, and there's a whole load of things that go into that. And I think one thing that teams do now, probably in some ways better than we used to because they've more resources, is they perform day in, day out with energy, and that comes down to all sorts of different things. You know, I think the players I played with early on given the facilities and the training today, would be superb players. But, you know, absolutely. But I think if you give players the right level of help, you can help players who might have been fringe players become quality players. Um, so more players come through into the system. The best are still going to be the best. But there are ways you can help. And sometimes that might just be to help them think about their game. And there's a, there's, a, there's a load of other things that impact on players negatively nowadays. Distractions, mm. more distractions than ever. Mm. You know, we spoke about the game constantly because there wasn't the elements of professionalism that there are now. So we were in the bar talking about the game, learning from each other, inadvertently, if you like. You're the last of a, of a whole long line, I think, uh, of players who used to do that, spend time after the game talking about cricket. Um, and you were very much uh, an individual, a player who led by example. Heart, bowling fast, opening the bowling, bowling plenty of overs a day, it's tough work. It really is hard work. and You have to go through all sorts of uh, strifes and stresses to be able to perform. So you led by example as a bowler and then as a captain. 
How does that transfer into coaching now? Because it's much harder to do that. You can't do it. You, you can you can lead by example in the way that you do your job as well as you possibly can, and that's the I think that's the overriding concept that as a captain and as a bowler you wanted to be seen as someone who could do the hard yards. Um, however tough it got, you always wanted to to set that example, um, and you had to enjoy it. You know, at the end of the day, I enjoyed that. Um, the only way that I can think right now that transfers into coaching is do your job as well as you can, and that. You know, that's not me bowling 20 overs in the next nets to show them I can do that. It's do the right things as a coach. Does um, do you get frustrated as a coach, uh, uh, whether it be about tactics, players, attitude? What is the thing that does frustrate you, or do you do you put those frustrations to one side, one side, and concentrate on on the good things, if you like? Well, it's not a perfect world, so you can't you can't walk around saying I don't get frustrated about anything. Um, players have massive challenges nowadays. The, the county clubs have huge challenges. The schedule of, of world cricket has changed massively over the last few years. They're challenges we've got to overcome. We've got to understand what our job is because we can't just have a squad of players for Lancashire and expect them to all play for Lancashire all year. We're going to be pulled around a bit by different players' schedules be that international cricket, franchise cricket, um, tour games during the season, all sorts of things. So we've got to plan accordingly and try and be as strong as we can day in, day out, all year long. Um, in terms of players' attitude, I try not to get frustrated because what we do is a lot of work to make sure we've got good people, good lads here. And we have, absolutely. So there's not much frustration there. Um, if there is, you pick it up and you and you try and get better. But um, over the course of time, especially when a team's being pulled around, you need people who come into the environment and out of it and come back with energy and enthusiasm, respect for their teammates and want to do well for the club. And if you've got those, then things tend to run a bit better. Let's come to that back to that in a minute. I just want to wind the clock back a little. Uh, it's over 10 years now since Lancashire won the county championship. You were captain at the time. Um, there were all sorts of constraints placed upon you then. You didn't have Old Trafford as a base because it was being uh, transformed. The square was being turned round. Um, you'd already been playing the best part of 20 years. And that win, that county championship win, just came out of the blue to those that weren't really associated with Lancashire. How did you formulate that season's plan? Was it down... Was it down to you? There must have been elements from outside as well. But that was a phenomenal effort to win the county championship then. Mm. So Peter Moores came to the club in 2009. I think we'd finished fourth in both of those years leading up to 2011. But at that moment, the team had theoretically weakened a little bit. We lost some senior players, Stuart Law, people like that. And um, I think there was... An area of naivety. I mean, I was I was a senior player, but I, you know, I wasn't a coach yet. But you had I, much captaincy experience. Yes, yeah, so I'd done I'd Three done the years. previous two years, yeah, okay. so I was into the role then, and I was not frustrated, but I was determined that we could go better than fourth place. Um, and I think there was an attitude around. We just said, right, we're going to win the championship this year. And that's not always the best thing to say because <laughs> that can create early issues. If you start losing games, you can go from thinking you're going to do that to being nowhere. But we had a group of young players who were who were hungry, and I think we just decided to let's challenge ourselves because there's nothing lost with that. Um, we just said we're going to win the championship. That's our aim. Simple as that, and that's what we said. We needed a good start to do that, um, but fortunately that's, that's what we got. Uh, the final game of the year was down at Taunton, obviously. You were uh, suffering from uh, all the strains and stresses that, you, that bowlers suffer from as they go through a season. You'd got a slightly, I don't know whether it was pulled or torn, or it certainly wasn't torn ripped, but it wasn't clever, your hamstring. Uh, and you just powered through, powered on through. <laughs> um, I think that sums you up, to be perfectly honest. In, in, <coughs> in, uh, if somebody had to say what defines Glen Chapel, that that last game probably would be it. Would that be fair? I hope so. Um, 
I just I still can't work that game out in terms of my personal injury. I've torn a lot of muscles in my time, and I know what a torn muscle feels like. And I think into about the fourth over on day one, I tore a hamstring to the point where I couldn't walk. So I'm thinking, all right. So I had to go off, get some ice on it, get some strapping on it, and for the rest of that ne the next two sessions, it was just behaving like a properly torn hamstring, so I thought I was done. I think back end of the day, might be remembering this wrong, but back end of the day, we had a, po a point where, you know, there was nothing to lose, so well, I went back out there, and I, you can always bowl a little bit, hobble around, but it wasn't much better. I had some incredibly tight strapping on it by Sam, the physio. And But as I went on, it sort of eased a bit, it was still tugging, but it eased a bit. But bizarrely, by the end of the game, it was probably 70% right. <laughs> and you know, Talk about bowling through injuries. Well, we talk about that a lot as bowlers. I, I don't, who knows, because I never got it scanned. Maybe it was me inventing something. Maybe there was nothing there. Maybe it was a weird cramp. Didn't feel Tension. like that. Could have been something like that. No, I mean, who knows, but yeah. I don't. <laughs> I can't say that, yeah, I can play with a torn hamstring, because that's obviously not true. Um, but for whatever reason, fortunately, it got better and allowed me to play a part in the game. You've been, uh, well, would you say that's the pinnacle of your, of your career, winning the county championship in 2011? In terms of a long-term achievement, mm. because it's, just look at the history around Old Trafford, it's hard to win a championship here. For whatever reason, we haven't managed it. Maybe that's a load of different reasons in different years. But um, to do it with a young team, you know, 16 games, I think it was in those days, it takes mm. a, a collective effort for a long period of time. So I think, yeah, in terms of effort-wise and focus, because it, it, it's an achievement over six months, it's not just a final. Mm. You've been fortunate enough to play with a number of top class, maybe the best in the world, cricketers, while in your time at Lancashire. Um, two would be Wazim Akram and Murali. Um, there are others as well. Who would you who would you say was uh, not necessarily most influential, but um, the best you've you've played alongside? Well, those two are obviously right up there. I mean, watching Waz bowl was just it made fielding enjoyable when we didn't enjoy fielding so much but you know I'd stand at fine leg watching Warren flying around behind the stumps and the batters you know basically Blueless. either petrified or amazed at what's coming down um, <clears throat> did he teach you much yeah did you ever did you ever get to master reverse swing which he was the he was the uh, well I suppose he was the one of the pioneers of it. Yeah, I think I was decent at it. I wouldn't say master it because he mastered it. So I didn't do what he yeah. did. But I learnt from him and, you know, early on, yeah, it was going against the way it should go. It was reverse swing. But learning what length to bowl with it is quite important sometimes on different surfaces. Um, and he was very influential. He used to be standing at mid-off and say, you know, he used to say, drop your shoulder hit back of a length because people used to think you put it up there when it's reversing well, he said if you hit back of a length it tends to look like it does more um, obviously there's a reverse swing in Yorker that demolishes the stumps but you don't always have the pace for that or the batter might be up to that but you know a few subtle tactical things he was great with the other players well there's an, another there's a, a load of them um, I bowled at Stuart Law for a few years and then when he was playing yeah, for Essex so he played for Essex and in the crazy days when we had a Sunday league game in the middle of a championship game, I'm pretty sure he got a hundred first innings, a hundred on Sunday and a hundred second innings. Mm. So we were pretty pleased when he came and, and signed for us. We, and yeah, he was a phenomenal batter. What did he average for like 60 odd, 70? Yeah. So yeah. class wise, in the brilliant Aussie team of that era, in my mind, he was as good. Only played one test. One test, 50 odd not out. Mm. Mm. Uh, does that um, rankle with you that you never got more of an opportunity to play for England? <laughs> I always say no, um, and I can see the reasons why I didn't at certain times. I also think they made a mistake quite a few times, if I'm honest, because 
I look at the people who've played and I've no, I've no problems with the good players who played a lot of tests. Mm. That's absolutely fine. And if I'm honest, I, I'm quite clear that I wanted to play, if I want to look back on an England career, it wants to be 50 tests. Mm. So two or three wouldn't bother me. It's not, that doesn't bother me at all. Um, so way over it now. Not, not a problem, it's just cricket at the end of the day. Exactly, nothing you can do about it now. Uh, <laughs> suffice to say that you can um, take great uh, joy from the career you've had at Lancashire, um, which isn't over yet, quite clearly. Uh, let's just move it forward now, because your playing days are obviously gone, e even, <sighs> though, even though you'd, you'd <laughs> quite like to carry on. Um, they've gone, but you've been head coach for a number of years now. Um, and you must still enjoy that challenge. What is it that, that really sustains you and keeps you going as a head coach? I think the big thing is I want to see a, I want to see a team go out there and play together and be strong together and win. Obviously, I want to, I want to help put together a, a team full of quality. But it's that idea of building a team to win, win something and to know that you've earned it over a period of time. Um, so then every season's quite demanding but by the time you've had four or five weeks off you start to be constantly thinking about what you need to do January, February, March mm. to get ready for the new season. But I think with a club I've been at for so long <clears throat> I just want to help us bring some success back because we've, we've now been through a period where if you put our collective results together I think we'd be the most successful team in the country. We just haven't won. Mm. But we need to keep putting ourselves in those positions, playing good cricket all year to give ourselves that chance. But just keep believing that when we keep getting there, we'll be successful. But the, the overriding thing is to get a squad together who enjoy playing together and we'll go out there and give 100%. How does the head coach role differ from being, say, just a bowling coach? Less time with individual players, and that's the big challenge: is to make sure you spend enough time with the individuals who want that time. You can still coach, and we do. So, currently, we don't have a specialist full-time batting coach. But as experienced coaches, I think we we all feel that we can we can help in those areas. And obviously, last season our batters had an incredible year. But less, yeah, less time spent with individuals because you're always thinking about what the whole what the whole needs yeah during your time in the game 30 years um i think we've already touched on this coaching has become um it, it's it's developed away from the periphery and it I, I think it probably was on the periphery when you started to becoming a mainstream function now where teams have, they don't just have one coach, they'll have specialist coaches for bowling, batting, spin bowling, fielding, wicket keeping, etc, etc. Um, and the, the skills within those different co coaching uh, elements have become greater and greater. Just, let's just take bowling for instance, fast bowling. Um, when you and I, when you played, uh, started playing, Variety and variation wasn't really on the agenda. It was about consistency of performance. Now we're looking at variety in all forms of the game becoming predominant, aren't we? Mm. We're looking at bowling, wobble seam. I mean, wobble seam's become a, a standard ball. I don't know, it used to be, oh, I've missed the seam this time. But, mm. uh, reverse swing has come through the you know, all sorts of different adaptations have uh, have come into the game in your time. So you you are constantly adapting from the old school type of player and coach into very much a modern phenomenon. Would, ha, has that been difficult? It's enjoyable, to be honest. So, as a player, I grew up. As a bowler, I grew up certainly with in-swing and out-swing and holding length. They're the key principles to fast bowling in, in, in England. And you'd have bowlers who weren't swing bowlers, they were called seam bowlers. And that might be because they bowled a wobble seam hmm. or a very straight seam, but that's a skill in itself. 
Um, as soon as you tilt the seam in swinging conditions, it will it will swing. Um, but there's a there's a whole raft of different things now. So, for instance, the skill of a bowler in white ball cricket at the highest level, they have to bowl everything. They have to be able to bowl the old-fashioned Yorker, but they have to be better at it than they used to because the ball's harder now and the batters have practised hitting the full half volley or the low full toss. Um, you have to cramp for room, you can't give any width. When the batter moves, you have to know whether to follow or to go wide. When you go wide, you have to be able to hold length if that's, if that's what the ground dimensions of the pitch need. Slow ball, if you bowl a wide slow ball, you need to be able to bowl the best will be able to bowl a full one, a length ball, a slow ball. And people watching on TV from the old school will be saying, he's just bowling a load of rubbish. Hmm. He's all over the place. Slow ball bouncers, all these things. But that's in, that's in coaching, it's in players' minds now. So when they're pre prepared to play against good players, powerful players who can hit it 15 rows back, when you're running into bowl with the right field, which who knows what that is, unless you've planned properly and even then, the good players can deal with that sometimes. Mm. But you're not just thinking, I'm going to take him one side. What's his body shape when he's trying to hit the ball? Will a length ball be better than a short ball? Will, will a full ball deceive him more? It's unending, never ending. Mm. And that's really exciting as a coach, learning these, these new tactics as you go along. It's a classic topic and it's very relevant at the current time because essentially what we're talking about here is one day white ball cricket and variation and mm. being able to adapt but uh, you and I well know that over the last six months, with the way England is starting to play red ball cricket under the influence of McCollum and, and uh, Stokes and Key, that those sort of elements are coming into, into red ball cricket nowhere better served than that test um, in Royal Pindy that England have won on the flattest pitch you would ever wish to see. Um, so <laughs> my point being the game continues to evolve and all for the better in my view so let's just concentrate on red ball cricket for a minute do you see the the influence of the way that england have played in the last 6 months 6 months uh, drilling down into the county game without question already has <coughs> um, i think it's been documented that Brendan doesn't like the term basball, so he's not suggesting there's any element to that. But the the principles they're playing by is their their willingness to lose in order to win, shake off the fear of losing Red Bull games, which is inherent in all of us, because a draw was always seen as valuable. When you play in a relegation system, a draw will always be valuable. But how can we get ourselves to think win above all else and if we lose fine so I think that mantra that that idea is going to influence everybody in the game even more importantly it makes red ball cricket enjoyable because they're watching and hopefully the supporters are thinking yeah we can take a loss because they're playing such enjoyable cricket and they will win more than they lose because they're a good team um, so without doubt it's already inspired players it's made coaches think about the best way forward for their team you still have to do the best thing for your team. You can't copy someone else's methods. But I think the idea that winning is more important than potentially losing mm. is something we can all learn from. Are players, batters in particular, going to come to you, do you think, over, over time and say, um, red ball cricket, Glenn, I, I want to play the way um, that England are playing? Mm. It's my way to that, success. It's yeah, my abs way to, absolutely. to better myself. Two things spring to mind there is... Continuity of selection gives a player a chance to do that. So England is showing openly that they're backing. If you give players the
Yeah, of course, I've taken the video still on it. We'll start to make our way back towards the uh, six. So the afternoon session is going to start spotly. Welcome back, Alan. Hi, Ross Ayer and Neil Malaga of Argentina. And Jeff, Jeff. And he's going to have to watch back there. That's a section. George Bell. Well. made the most of it, even though as a first ball he faced, he jumped right into that, slapped it away to, to square leg for four runs, 264 uh, for five, it's played off the front foot by Bell to, to mid off and there is no run, yeah, uh, Felix Hogan three for 35, and 
so two overs of Mason Crane today. Not seen anything of Liam Dawson with the ball, but he's currently off the field. In fact, he's, he's in hospital receiving a bit of treatment. As Bell's off the front foot and defends. And that completes the over that started before lunch. 264 for five. Yeah, Liam Dawson received a blow on the face. It was a, an edge off the bat of Villas from the bowling of Abbas and uh, Fletcher Middleton at, at third slip actually deflected the ball onto the face of Liam Dawson. He's cut his top lip and a nasty blow. So he's having to um, get that treated. So Hampshire are a, are a bowler light for this, for this uh, at least the very start of the afternoon session. Yeah, I had a bit of uh, a couple of overs of Mason Crane just before uh, lunch. Yeah, a couple of tidy overs. Daryl Mitchell started very aggressively, and then uh, as we got near the lunch break, just sort of calmed things down a little bit. He's a real danger from a Hampshire point of view. 39, uh, he's got that's come off, I think, 37 balls, is it? Yes, 37. Yeah. So it's, it's a runnable, almost a runnable 39, whereas he was way ahead of the balls faced when he first came in, took Felix Orgon on from, literally from the word go. So it's going to be Mohamed Abbas then from the Harrod drive in. Uh, we are keep we are monitoring your emails. I've got a couple that came in over the lunch break, so we'll work through those. So cricket at gmail.com if you want to get in touch. At BBC Max Cricket on the Twitter feed at Solent Sport from a Hampshire point of view. Here's Mohamed Abbas then, right arm over in bowls and outside the off stump Mitchell. Let's that go by through to uh, the keeper. Just got somebody shouting across for about 50 yards in front of us. <laughs> Apologies if you can hear that. There was a conversation overheard yesterday about a wedding. I don't know, someone got in touch and said, can you, can you please ask those two ladies to come back and finish their conversation? I was quite intrigued. Yeah, it moved on from a wa da their daughter's wedding onto some, something about a taxi driver, <laughs> which wasn't that story wasn't finished. It no. may have been that it's probably just as well. Yeah, I think for all concerned, Yes. It's important that we didn't hear the end of that, <laughs> Correct. Of that conversation. 264 for five then, here's a bass. Comes in and bowls and Mitchell just walks into that. Gets one, it bounces, tries to flick away on the leg side, it just gets a bit big on him. No run uh, there. So 39 to Mitchell, four to George Bell. Phil Salter, first, was it a first Red Bull 100 for Lancashire? That's right, yeah, yeah, first yeah. Uh, Red Bull century for, uh, for Lancs. Actually, I've got a few extra stats on Ooh. that. Oh, I look forward to that. Yes, he was he, he was he, he was almost quite brilliant yesterday, uh, the way he got to 76 not out overnight. He was dropped on four, which didn't help uh, Hampshire's cause, but there's a few more plays and misses this morning. But uh, still a good effort to get 100 as Mitchell's off the back foot, steers that out to extra cover, Will Fieldy by Gubbins. Yes, it was his, it was his um, first championship century for Lancashire in his uh, eighth game, just his eighth match in championship cricket for Lancashire. His fifth first-class century and uh, the first he scored since May 2019, so 18 first-class games between his um, fourth and fifth uh, first-class century. The bass at the top of his mark then, going to Mitchell once more. Comes in and Mitchell drives extravagantly and misses. He's gone for the big one down the ground again. He got hold of one from Abbott before lunch that went for six down the ground at that, that end. But that ball was a little fuller. That one wasn't. And uh, that was a little... Well, wasn't really there, was it? Mitchell looking to get away straight away here after the break. Lead is 122. Lancashire in a strong position. That run rate has stayed mostly over four and over this innings. It was a little bit more than that, actually, earlier. And as Abbas comes in, it's left alone. And Abbas, well, he's still looking for his first wicket. He's having a very good season. He was a top wicket taker in Division One uh, at one stage. I think he's just been overtaken a little now, but uh, he still, this season, has 29 wickets to his name. In fact, he was averaging 15 going into this game. He's now 29 wickets have cost him 16. So even though he's got naught for 72. <laughs> His average is still pretty decent yeah, overall yeah. for 2023. Just Here he bit. comes in again and bowls to Mitchell again, walking into that. And I think he's playing at that. He pulled the bat away, but I think uh, he played initially at that. Good over from Abbas. And it's the end of it, 264 for five. Abbas a bit like Barker, wasn't he, this morning? He probably could have a little bit of luck. He could have had a little day, could have had a wicket. He should rub the luck a little bit through the bat 
first 45 minutes, hour or so this morning. But they've been excellent across the game so far of Lancashire with the bat and with the ball. But maybe the other day, you know, my, uh, a bat could have, could have found a wicket or two in that morning session. Yeah, he's got a nice carry on it, which is yes, ideal for him. Yeah. But actually, the pitch itself so far has, has offered quite nice pace and carry, hasn't it, for, yeah. the, for the ball? It's been a good pitch. It has, actually. Played well last year. I, mean, I don't know if it's the, if it's the same pitch. There's a suggestion that um, as Organ comes in and balls to Bell, to the back foot and defender into the offside, there's no run. That this is the pitch that's been um, relocated from Old Trafford. OK. County wicket here that they've been working on for a while, but I don't, I don't know whether that's the case or not. But that was something I picked up on um, before the game started. It's effectively they could you know, they've got two kind of first-class wickets here, here at, uh, at the ground now. 264 for, for five. Yeah, he's played well so far. Did last year as well between Lancashire and Somerset. Bells on strike. Back, cuts the ball, runs the bell up towards the, the point boundary. It might be four of them. It is. Gobin's trying to catch up with the ball. Rattles its way to the rope up towards point, and Bell's been quite bright and bubbly since he's yeah. started his inning straight after lunch. Back nice. foot cut for four. Yeah, nice shot, that. Hit it into the ground. The ball races away on this straw coloured outfield. Slight undulations on the outfield. Is it? As we look diagonally opposite, so down to third man for Bell. Quite, there's a reasonably gentle slope going upwards, isn't there? Yep. And you, you get good value. It's a quick, dry, hard outfield. Oh, Bell getting forward, the ball deflects to the right of slip. Half an appeal from Felix Organ. Three for 43 from Felix Organ. Yeah, those fingers damaged, uh, damaged somewhat with uh, Daryl Mitchell's initial onslaught. Short leg and a slip. Morgan comes over the wicket and balls. Driven by Bell. Morgan feels off his own bowling, there's no run. I have to say, I think he's bowled quite well, actually. Felix Morgan, he's had good control in, uh, in his uh, spell so far at the side of the lunch. 2 6 8 for 5. To Bell again. The back foot and it's hammered away through the offside, right on cue by Kevin James. It just drops a little short again and that's walloped away through the covers before. Shouldn't have said that, should no, I? Not really. Second short ball yeah. since lunch. Bell moves on to 12. Dealing in just in boundaries at the minute. Bell, three fours. And sees him come out after lunch. A couple of short balls from Organ. Both put away to make up two of the three boundaries he's hit. Goes back and defends his next delivery. Rolls back down the pitch. And uh, that completes the, uh, the over. 272 for five. So the lead is 130. Got an email here over lunch, actually, from uh, Neil Halsworth. It's quite a long one. Probably uh, spend most of the over reading this out, actually. <laughs> Uh, solocricket at gmail.com is the email we're using for this game. At BBC Lanks Cricket on the Twitter or at Solent Sport, if that's the way you want to get in touch. And uh, Neil says, thoroughly enjoying the coverage. I was on radio only yesterday as I was driving back from an unplanned journey to the northwest. Uh, in brackets, my dad was taken into hospital on Thursday, so I had to do an emergency dash from Gosport. That's down south, by the way, for our friends in the north. As that's uh, pushed by Daryl Mitchell into the colour, start of a new over from Abbas. Uh, fortunately, he's OK, which is great news, and making a steady return to normal health. First observation is that I have played hockey at the Southport ground back in the days when hockey was actually played on grass. It's hardly any hockey played on grass these days, isn't it? It's all artificial. And... Uh, incidentally, I've also played hockey on the outfield at Bridgetown in Barbados. Like I say, well, I wouldn't want to play hockey on that outfield. Well, certainly not before the uh, stadium was re redeveloped. That was a horrendous outfield. As uh, Mitchell turns that away square on the uh, leg side, drops through for a single, 273 uh, for 5-2. Well, playing hockey on that outfield, you must have been a serious player. 
Um, it was at the Banks International Hockey Festival. Uh, other beers in Barbados available, although there's not many. Uh, again, there was much alcohol involved after the serious business of hockey was concluded, uh, and there may have been some rum as well. Uh, any other notable grounds where hockey is or was a regular feature that you guys know, i.e. Bowden or Cheatham Hill? Uh, they spring to mind from my misspent youth. These guys are shaking their heads, looking as though I'm talking uh, Mandarin. I think we need help from listeners and viewers for that. One. Yeah, and play a bit of hockey. Forward is Bell out into uh, the covers. So uh, clearly no hockey players here. No Callum, you're not a hockey player. You know, he's shaking his head. Just ask me what is hockey. Uh, the second <laughs> bit is more about outgrounds and your chat about Burnaby Road, which was the one in Portsmouth. As far as I'm aware, the ground is still under MOD ownership, and I wonder why the relationship wasn't maintained. I always liked the army ground at Aldershot, uh, although I only played there a couple of times representing the Royal Army Medical Corps. Come back to more of that as Abbas is at the top of his mark. Running to Bell, two slips and a galley weight as Bell walks into that one and plays a misses coming forward. Oh, Mohamed Abbas Abbas just not quite finding the outside edge today. Uh, we used the ground at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst as our home pitch when I played, and that was uh, another tremendous pitch. And I wonder if that has the potential to be a north of the county option for Hampshire, Sandhurst. Wow, I think you'd, that's obviously a very famous uh, military academy type sort of thing. Now, I should know, actually, because I, I went with one of my BBC colleagues to do some filming there, actually. Uh, one time, I, th I think getting accreditation would be the easiest. Uh, as uh, if Bell's playing forward and missing uh, that one, uh, it might take a few months to come through. I think by the time you get your accreditation, we're into the end of September, <laughs> so uh, the fixture might not take place. But it sounds lovely. It does. The idea of it sounds very nice. Yeah. Practical. Hope you all manage an ice cream. Says Neil in the fantastic conditions this afternoon. I'll have the cricket feed on whilst I slowly turn the wheels of industry in Gosport. 273 for five uh, here. Oh, there's the ice cream van if you're watching the live picture feed. I'm not sure he's done a rip roaring trade today. No, Every time we've looked over, quite, yeah, it's been a trickle, but no more. Really, people are too hot to move. Yeah. This Abbas Bowles always oh, playing and missing again. Or is he playing the line? We're going to give him the benefit of the doubt there. But it's a tremendous bowling either way from uh, Mohamed Abbas, who remains wicketless. None for 73. He's bowled. Uh, I think 20 overs now. 273 for five means the home side. They lead by 1 3 1. Yeah, Bass and Barker have been in the edge a few times today and have no re reward. Felt a bit for Barker this morning because um, there's Colin on the live stream again. Again, he sat down doing nothing. <laughs> I mean, what's going on? I mean, how vain is that when your own company <laughs> who are doing the live picture feed with Gilla cameras are actually yeah. showing you? Yeah, told him. Yeah. Pick me out in the crowd, please. Make me look important. Yeah. Two, two seventy-three for five. <laughs> yep. Pick me out. Follow me, <laughs> Colin Cam. <laughs> Actually, I wonder, is there a way that um, you can have those um, frames, Colin Cam, for tomorrow, and then just spot him around the ground and have him framed? <laughs> Leader one thirty-one. Here's Felix Organ. Slip in place. Mitchell goes back into defence. There's no run. 273 for five. It's perfect. It's, it's perfect for, for people spotting, isn't it, as well, out ground cricket. Mm. Everyone's right involved in the action. Forward again goes Mitchell. Defends. No run. It's just... It's just it's probably a little too hot, if we're really honest, and yeah, we shouldn't complain, yeah. but in terms of... A day's crick day out of the cricket, atmosphere, sort of the amount of people here for the ground. All into Mitchell's off the back foot and defence, no run. It's actually wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. A bit lucky Southport have had some terrific weather over the last what, kind of ten years or so. Certainly I've been coming here to cover cover matches. Organ to Mitchell. Nudge away off the hip. To fine leg for a single, 41 to uh, to Daryl Mitchell, 274 for five, lead of 132 now. Brings George Bell on strike. Slip, forward short leg, backward point. It's a mid off, mid on, mid wicket, a deep cover, deep square and short fine leg. It's just turned away off the back foot by Bell. 
the corner to Abbott at backward square leg for a single. Bell moves on to 13, 275 for five. So Mitchell back on, on strike, 41 not out. Morgan to Mitchell reaches forward, decent stride down the pitch and defends with the full face of the bat. Completes the over, oh, just a couple of singles off it. 275.45. Yes, it's barely a cloud in the sky. It's bright blue sky above the ground. We're broadcasting from the, the tennis pavilion. If you're watching on the feed, that's the little building right there in the middle of the, of the screen. Just next to the big marquee, where the, the corporate hospitality are enjoying their lunch, extended lunch. And that little building is where we are. <laughs> <laughs> But it's wonderful. It's, uh, you, you couldn't wish for it to be any better. And we, we touched on this, I think, a little yesterday, uh, that uh, 10 years ago, the last time Hampshire were here, was a Division Two fixture, which incidentally, Hannah Lancashire won by 122 runs. But I just remember the weather being like this. So uh, we've been very lucky. Incidentally, in that game, James Vince, who's played today, got 100. And uh, Paul Horton. Okay. What's he doing these days? He got 100 in that game as well. <laughs> Does a bit of T20 commentary with us. Oh, does he? Oh, of course, yes. I think I remember now. Uh, always playing the missing again. Abbas has got him past the outside edge. Abbas is just standing there. He did this uh, at Kent a couple of weeks ago at Canterbury. A bit more than a couple of weeks ago, of course, we've had a bit more T20s uh, in that uh, time, and he just couldn't find the outside edge, and I think he's getting the same sort of feeling. Yeah. It feels a bit hard done, but I think he's got a, a right to. I don't think he can do much more, can he, really, no. to, to try and find a wicket today and indeed yesterday but not happening from it at the moment and um, what was that what was the first name hog you, you Kyle. Kyle, Kyle Hogg that's right he got five for in that game comes at Abbas and uh, I think he's playing inside the line there he's just found a spot here Abbas it's good carry through to Ben Brown and uh, it's just mm causing George Bell a little bit of indecision just on or just outside off stump there he's just getting a little pat of reassurance from the non-striker Daryl Mitchell just get yourself through it you'll be saying just play will this is good spell it is and Will Williams was suggesting last night that perhaps from that Harrod drive end there's just a little bit extra mm. in the pitch perhaps more so for the seamers from that end than the Grove the road end yeah I think you're right Abbas has found it hasn't he comes in again and bowls and it's just pushed out into the covers. Yeah, there's a, there's a bit of bounce from short of a length, isn't it? Which is making it a little diff difficult for the batters to sort of hit through the line. And uh, they're also not quite, not quite sure of the pitch, even though this ball is into its 68th over old. And uh, Ben Brown is standing 15 yards back. And the ball's not on its uh, downward spiral as it gets through to him. One or two have sort of edged the, off the bat and it hasn't quite carried, but generally when the ball's missed the bat, it's, it's carried through lovely. Just works that away. Square on the next side, and that's going to be four runs. Just a little too straight there from the bass, just overcompensated there. A little full as well. Past the diving Felix Organ up to the far end of the ground. He strung off his pads, his belt. Just if you straight a little bit straight to belt, strong through mid wicket. Yeah. Averaging just over 30 this season. Yeah, he's had a good year. Yeah, he's, he, I mentioned to you yesterday, I think, of the two young wicketkeeper batters that I've seen this year. And I'm impressed with Bell and with, with James Rue at, at Somerset. Yeah. He's had a good year, Bell. So he's kind of first full season this. He made his debut back end of last year. 279 for five as uh, Bass comes in again. And again, he's walking into that. Look at that carry off a of length. Yeah. He's taking it above his head, Ben Brown. It's almost as though that bounce and carry is becoming more accentuated. Just a little bit of something, isn't it, from that, from that end? Yeah. Abbas has just found it. And, and almost every delivery bell comes down, has a little look at the spot, whether around where the ball's pitching and salt does something likewise. So the ball's 68 overs old. You wouldn't think that looking at that. Leapt into the gloves of, of, of Ben Brown. So a bit of encouragement here from Mohammed Abbas, but still to pick up his first wicket as he comes into Bell. That's outside the off stump, so he comfortably leaves that one alone and that's the end of the over 279 for five Lancashire lead by 137 he's really accomplished as well he's a young man might be just just be 20 perhaps handful of first class games 
really kind of comfortable and accomplished and calm since his debut actually he made his debut in the game last season at, uh, at Chelmsford that finished in before lunch on day two <laughs> it was absolute chaos the pitch was dreadful oh right I remember that game yeah, and Bell came out with Lancashire about 30 for six or something I can't remember and he, he came out and actually top score with 20 on in the, in the first innings Bizarre way to make your first class debut in a game that finishes before lunch on day two. I saw some comments from your head coach after that game. Yeah, he wasn't happy. Mm. All into uh, to Mitchell, driven into the offside, no run. Did he say, and I wouldn't want to put words in his mouth if he didn't quite say it this way, but I'm sure he said something like that was pitch was unfit for first class cricket. Correct, he did, yeah. Unfit for purpose, thank you, Rizzo. Organ to Mitchell. Comes down pitch towards it. Bowler and works it to mid on, no run. And I think I saw Simon Harmer's comments and he said, good cricket wicket or something. <laughs> <laughs> Which he always does when he's just taken 15 <laughs> wickets in the match. Forward comes Mitchell again, comes off the inner half of the bat and works out towards backward square leg for a single. Yeah, he loved it. 40, 40, actually, no, Essex lost. So in the end, Lancashire were quite chuffed. Uh, Mitchell to 42, 280 for five. They were set about 90 to win Essex. And they were bowled out by for 70s and what that. Kind of. I mean, a couple of bonus days off, you know, but <laughs> never, yes. never say no to that. <laughs> but it was a pretty, pretty poor state of affairs. Forward goes Bell. But, uh, he's defended out into the offside, no run. 280 for five, lead of 138. Two balls left of the over. Uh, Organ balls and off the back foot and carves the ball away through the offside. Joe Weatherly coming round from the cover boundary. Bell comes back for two. Moves on to 19. 282 for five. There's one ball left of the over for Felix Organ. Three off it so far. For 52, Felix Ogre. In to complete his 10th over. And Bell goes deep into the crease and works the ball safely through the offside for one run. 283 for five, lead of 141 runs. I shall leave you, uh, Kevin, with Callum. Callum Flynn of the England Physical Disability Team. And coming on, uh, Peter Chapman, silentcricket at gmail.com. Uh, talking about outgrounds today, he says, uh, Can you give a shout out for the Mace Bounty Ground? That's the one in Basingstoke, tiny ground there that I actually used to play there quite a bit. I once went there and saw Andy Roberts hit a six. And he probably hit a few batters as well for a good measure. But yeah, I think a few batters could have hit a six there on like the Mace Bounty, but uh, it was a good ground, that's for sure. Welcome back, Callum. It's uh, Mohammed Abbas. It's been a bit unlucky for me. Yeah, it's been very unlucky. Is he still um, playing cricket in Pakistan in terms of... No, he hasn't played for a little while now. Is he available for such? He's available. Yeah, um, just not picking No, up. and uh, that's quite interesting you brought that up, actually, Callum, because here he comes again from the Harrod Drive end, outside the off and that's left alone. He, uh, yeah, he hasn't played for nearly a couple of seasons, I think. And, um, you know, he's been taking wickets for fun, you know, so he's still, you know, he's still in tip-top nick, he's still buying well. And um, I sort of half mentioned this with um, Scott yesterday that I did an interview with him and he'd just taken five wickets early on in the season and clearly started the season really well. And it, was, it wasn't that long ago that England were out there, weren't they? Mm. And they had a few bowlers missing Pakistan and he still didn't get in the side. And um, I just asked him about that. Here's uh, Abbas. Oh, he's missing that one. He's trying to cut that away on the front foot. and It's gone over the top of the bat, that one. And he clearly actually stuck a, stuck a nerve a little bit. And he said he was really sad, you know, that it was lovely that England were there. It was such a big series and a big thing. And yet he wasn't part of it. And he, he, you could tell that he thought he should be, wanted to be, and yet wasn't and felt a million miles away from it. And he, he was quite emotional, actually, with his answer. Yeah, because his record for Pakistan's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. I, mean, I remember... Did he play over here um, for Pakistan against England? I think he played in the COVID tests, didn't he? Or yeah. I think he's playing I inside like the line. Yeah. I feel like he um, 
if I remember rightly, he got a few wickets and he did really well and England struggled against him. I mean, he's probably grateful to not be bowling on them Pakistan wickets, to be honest. <laughs> There'll be many people would fancy having a go on them. Yeah, well, I, I th the, 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 the sort of, um, the, the bits I've sort of heard um, mentioned, I mean, his, yeah, his last test match was August 2021. Uh, which is quite a while ago now in test matches he's taken 90 wickets at 23 apiece which at that level Callum isn't it I mean that's still a fantastic record forward that's is really belt that's a terrific terrific return uh, but uh, I think it was in the, they were they were in a series in New Zealand and they struggled a bit on some flat wickets I think this is I think I remember this being told this and um, they, 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 they didn't look very penetrative as an attack and they felt that he, he looked a little bit ordinary. Yeah, I suppose if the wickets are so flat, he's not exactly got that extra surprise package of pace, has he, which is, which is the issue um, that England sometimes have, because England, if they don't play Mark Wood, I suppose they're very similar places. Yeah. Paces. In again to Bell. Bell gets a bat on that one, pushes it out into the covers. But then, if you look at it from a different point of view, he'd, You'd think you'd uh, partner up with Shaheen Afridi and you know your Nazim Shahs really well because Abbas can hold the end up and put all the pressure on, and the other guys can can be the hostile ones from the other end. So you know there's there's two ways of looking at it, I suppose. And it's a shame he's not playing international cricket because he's he's you know he's quite clearly an international standard bowler, isn't he? He's he's given Lancashire nothing this morning. He's he could have easily had two, three, or four wickets. Yeah, I agree. Very, very skillful the way he sort of manoeuvres his wrist behind the ball and it's left alone. I mean, this is a perfect wicket for him because he's got a nice carry. You know, he sort of ambles into the wicket. It's very easy, isn't it? Turns his arm over, but he's very clever with the wrist behind the ball. And you know, when you watch him closely, you know, the ball in duck and then every one that every now and then the one just goes away. And it's you know, it's that combination which gets players out, and it yeah. does. And clearly, his record uh, shows that. Um, but uh, it, 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 he started the season. With a flurry of wickets, but uh, they are they are starting to dry up a little bit, but not because he's bowling badly. It's just because he doesn't seem to be finding the edge at the moment, yeah. and we're seeing that here. You would say he's a, he is a very typical English type bowler, to be honest, wouldn't you? He's a uh, like you say with his wrist position. He's one of them bowlers that doesn't move it loads, but just moves it enough and moves it both ways. And I think they're the tricky bowlers to to bat against. I'd much rather someone um, come in and hoop it round corners because you can get your you, you can adjust to that, you can get used to how much it's swinging, whereas if someone's moving it a little bit here and there each time, it's really hard to get set to, and yeah. it's shown that today with Lancashire batters. He certainly has. Now, change of men's for Mason Crane. So Felix Organ is having a break, and Mason Crane, who has uh, no wickets for 14 from four overs, bowled two overs before lunch, coming to bowl, and the full delivery to Mitchell, who turns that away down to Abbott at deep backward square. So Mitchell moves on to 43. 284 for five, Lancashire lead by 142. Organ didn't quite just find his pre lunch length, did he? Um, he? He's bowling a lovely length into the into the footholes just before lunch, and then after lunch, he just dropped slightly short and made it a slightly bit easier to play for the batsman. Yeah, his rhythm deserted him a little bit, didn't it, yeah. during the break, which happens. Yeah, certainly. He bowled really well though yeah. before lunch. So uh, he'll have another go, that's for sure. And uh, Mason Crane, who a couple of tidy overs before lunch. Comes in and bowls to Bell. Bell forward. That's a nice delivery. I, think, I know he's only bowled four and a bit overs, Mason Crane, but the overs he has bowled so far has it's been pretty steady. And yeah, he's kept it tight. He has, yeah. Uh, you know, he's probably a bit like Matt Parkinson at times where it's a little bit difficult to stem the, row of fl uh, the flow of runs, but it's been quite tidy so far. Comes in again, bowls. And there's a sweep shot. It's gone very fine. That'll be four runs. Nobody that fine. Just a little too straight there. I think you'll see that shot quite a lot with George Bell. He's, he's a small chap, um, really low sense of gra gravity. And often people say they're the best players of spin. Um, the smaller guys use their feet really well and he's very wristy. So I think he'll look to the to sweep Mason Crane as much as he possibly can and get him off his length. Yeah, well, they've been doing it in the T20s. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they just go for the slog sweep straight away against him. and. I said it yesterday that uh, his figures in T20, he's bowled much better than that. Comes in and bowls, bell forward. Nice delivery. 288 for five the total, 146 the lead, and we still 
have over 60 overs remaining in the day. So we've got an awful lot of cricket to play. We'll get all, if not uh, most of that in. There was a, well, there was talk before lunch about a thunderstorm later on, but I haven't heard anything said for a while. That's pushed out square on the offside. I was going to ask you, England for a bit uh, physical disabilities team what, what's um, what's coming up for you guys at the moment have you had a bit of cricket or what's coming up um, so in the summer we just play um, sort of friendlies against academies um, so we played we played against Hampshire Academy the other week I was missing unfortunately okay um, that was on the back foot steers that's a mid wicket no run I think we played against Hampshire and Surrey I think it was so we play play against them kind of academies we, we play against the army team which is Really good challenge for us, the Army, because they're so physically fit, so physically strong. So they give us the runaround for because we play two T20s in a day. So it's quite, I mean, it's quite tough with our disabilities, and it's quite tough just for um, able-bodied cricketers to be honest to play two in a day. So it's even tougher for us guys. Um, but yeah, we play we play you sort of friendlies throughout the English summer, and then we're hoping to get away in the winter. There's, there's been talk around going to India. Um, but they're quite a difficult board to deal with because um, the, their disability setup isn't under the BCCI board. Um, so the BCCI are having to deal with in the first place from the sounds of things. And then we've got to deal with the board below them, and then they've got to go to the BCCI as well. So it's even, it's even trickier. Um, but we've not played any international cricket since 2019. Um, so it's been a long time, really. And, it's a shame because we've probably got the strongest squad we've ever had, um, and some some lads are obviously, you know, quite a lot of us have just had recently had kids, um, so some will be thinking about, you know, when's the time to pack in and and put family life first. Barker's taken over from Mohammed Abbas, and he bowls. Mitchell leaves that one alone as it goes across it. Yeah, so it'll be a real shame if we don't get to have a tournament soon and see see if we can really win a, a World Cup or something again. Last time we won something was in 2015 when we won the first ever um, disability, physical disability cricket World Cup in Bangladesh. Um, and then we've been to, a, we've had a couple of finals. We got beat against India in 2019 at Home in Worcester, New Road. Um, but yeah, we, we, we're just dying for something. Yeah, I bet. Oh, I can imagine. Champion at the bit. Yeah. His Barker and Mitchell on the back foot just pushes that out quite in the covers. Gubbins is there. Yeah, I think actually, I think that's probably the first time that most people realised it. Oh, yes, there is an England physical disability team because I remember that, that year. I didn't realise it was so long ago, actually. Yeah. 2015, did you say? Yeah, yeah. So it was our first. We've, we've been to Dubai a couple of times before in 2012 and 2014, but that was just against Pakistan. Um, so the 2015 tournament was against Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, and India, and obviously ourselves. So it was a proper tournament, which was really good. Yeah. Here's uh, Barker to Mitchell, and uh, Mitchell gets wrapped on the feet there as it goes out on the leg side. A half appeal for an LBW. Was it inside edge onto that? No. Neil Mallander signals a leg by. 289 for five, the uh, total. It, it must be a weird feeling then to sort of be representing England, because whatever you're representing, you represent England, so yeah. it's a great feeling, isn't it? But it must be weird to represent England playing against another country, but then representing England when you play in these friendlies against academies. It must yeah. feel weird, doesn't it? Yeah, it's hard. It's, I mean, you know, you've got you've got to motivate yourself sometimes in terms of, at the moment, we've not got any international cricket to look forward to. So at times, I mean, it's natural. At times, you kind of feel like it's a pointless game because you're not working towards anything. Barker in again, this time to Bell. <laughs> Bell forward. But then as captain, I'm just trying to make sure, get the message across to the lads that we've got to make sure we're ready if, because, you know, they could easily say we're going away in October and we've not got many months to prepare. Um, so we're just making sure the lads um, and all the squad are just fully prepared, ready to go. So yeah. throughout this tour, uh, throughout this winter, uh, summer, again, in the friendlies, we'll, we'll be working on our plans that we'll use for an international game just in case. Sure. Parker in again to Bell, who's on 24. And he's trying to drive at that one, it's quite wide, he misses. Keeps a little low through to uh, Ben Brown. It's interesting, so the, the countries you've already mentioned to me brings another thing to mind. So is there no equivalent in Australia? No, so they've got, Australia, they've got an LD team, which is learning disability. Um, I think they've got a deaf hearing impairment side, um, but they've got no physical disability side, which is, it's a shame, really, um, but like you say, it's a big Asian um, disability cricket in, in physical. Yeah. 
Barker again. Bell drives just wide of Abbott, but they don't take a single. Yeah, in terms of physical disability uh, cricket, it's more the Asian-based teams, which which you'd say is natural because they've got the polio diseases, unfortunately, over there. So, I mean, India, before they came over in 2019, they, um, because they're not under the BCCI, they had, they had to trial everyone in each different parts of the country. And they had over, like, 1,000 people just coming down to training just to see if they could get into the team. I mean, in England, we're lucky to choose from 25 people. Um, our squad's probably 18. And then we've probably only got, at the moment, 10 to 15 behind who are probably um, good enough to come into the future. So luckily the numbers are building up in England, um, but in, in, in places like India, Pakistan, um, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, obviously physical disabilities are unfortunately a bit more natural, you'll yeah. say. Yeah. Um, whereas ours sometimes come from freak injuries, freak illnesses, etc. So So um, we've not quite got the pool of players to pick from but we still do pretty well. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Mason Crane, we just had a little bit of a, I'm not sure a drink break, just a sort of a cold towel wipe down break for a couple of the batters. Mason Crane's in. Mitchell forward, correct forward defensive from him. Mitchell who is currently on 43. 29 for five, it's 147 the lead for at Lancashire. We have not had a wicket since lunch. Haven't seen Liam Dawson come back on the field uh, since before lunch. He's off at hospital having a couple of stitches or so in a face wound deflecting at slip into his face now Mitchell comes big down the ground he's hammered that away and that is four runs two fielders back cannot prevent that being stopped and he really did give that an absolute whack didn't he yeah he's, he could choose anywhere with that one that's probably Mason Crane's real first bad ball you'd say um, full toss Mitchell's obviously used his feet as well so uh, probably his first attacking shot for a while Mitchell. yeah on to 47, Mason Crane was just about to bowl and just pulls out a bit. I don't know if the train going past put him off or something. I think Mitchell might have pulled away first. Oh, did he? Yeah, I think, I think he might have heard the train. <laughs> <laughs> Trains running regularly at the far end of the ground, both to the left and the right as Crane comes in and bowls. Mitchell's on the back foot, steers that straight to backward of point. Mitchell on the verge of a half century here, 47 he's on. He's played it really well as well, hasn't he? In the first 10 balls, what was he, 20 runs, he makes, made James Vince spread all the field, and since then he's kind of just rotated the strike really well and uh, put that bad ball away. Yes, he has. Crane again on the back foot there, down the leg side, steered to Abbott, who's quite deep at backward of square legs. So they'll get a single. He moves on to 48. Yeah, you're right. He cleared the fielders away, didn't he? And yeah. He, he got the gaps there. Then you just. Yeah, then this is what you'd want to do as a batter, isn't it? Yeah. It's ideal. Clear the fielders, and then you've got the gaps, and then you just hit the ball along the carpet. Yeah. And you shouldn't get out. Exactly. And he, he's a real good player of spin. We've seen that in, in international tournaments on the telly. With, he's been representing New Zealand as well. That's for sure. As uh, Bell's forward drives that up to Fuller at mid on. There's uh, no run. I should look at some of these emails. I'm getting a bit lazy, actually. I should do. <laughs> There's a few. That's uh, pushed out on the offside. Think about a single. No, as it goes out to uh, point. So that's the end of Mason Crane's uh, over. He has... Uh, oh, just lost it. It's just gone off the screen. But uh, anyway, Barker will buy the next one. Number 69. Of the 15, Barker and Abbas, wicketless so far for uh, Hampshire. And uh, of the other main seamer, Kyle Abbott, he's only picked up one, picked up Josh Bohannon this morning. Well caught by Liam Dawson, diving low to his right in the slips. Bohannon going for 39. Phil Salt was uh, also caught in the slips by Vince of Felix Organ for 103. Dane Villas was bowled by Felix Organ, one which uh, cut back uh, out of Barker's footmarks, he was out for six, bowled, and Rob Jones caught by Crane, just chipped it to mid-wicket on the stroke of lunch of Organ for 18. Those were the wickets before lunch, none since lunch, outside the off-stump, and that is left alone by uh, Mitchell. Two ninety-four for five here, Lancashire. In a very, very good position. Remember yesterday, Hampshire bowled out for 142. I'm Kevin James, Callum Flynn next to me. Hospitality tent to our right is just 
starting to fill up again at the front. Obviously, lunch is finished. There's a hook shot there, short ball from Barker. It's gone out to deep back with a square leg. It's fielded right on the boundary rope. And Mitchell will pick up just a single. Looks like a good bumper, actually. It was well played by Mitchell as well. Yeah, it's a real surprise ball, actually. But Mitchell's played that really well, kept it on the, did well to keep it on the ground, actually, as well as on his head. And there's a great piece of fielding down there, just up wide, for, uh, wide fan leg. We were talking about accents uh, earlier on uh, this morning. <laughs> Uh, Richard Kenyon, sonicricket at gmail.com, says, Thanks for the commentary and for all the first-class games. Nice to hear the wide variety of accents from different parts of the country. And you seem to have fun doing it. Uh, that's the object. Oh, he's playing. I'm sure he's playing at those. Angled across him. He's pushing forward. But he, he, he can't sort of get well for it. He's playing off the pitch because the bounce, isn't it, off a length? Yeah. Looks like it's just as we look from right to left as... as Barker's ball and it looks like the wicket just slopes up a little bit so it looks like there's a bit of a ridge just on the square where it's just mm. kind of lifting off a bit like Lords used to have yeah that ridge before it was I remember the old groundsman there he used to take the mickey out of him saying oh, how's the ridge today he said no ridge no ridge <laughs> but there is it seems to have gone there it seems to have gone the last few seasons have it bowls and that's edged oh is it carried I'm not sure it did to Middleton I think it fell just did it carry yeah, hang on, there's, there's a consensus here that it may have done. May have to look at the replay there. Gone very quickly and low. And I'm afraid it's that man Fletcher Middleton again, so I hope for him it hasn't quite carried. Here we go, here's the replay. Slow motion. Edged. Is it? It's just off camera shot. But you guys seem to think it is, yeah? Callum does. Uh, I'm not sure I believe DT. Uh, but Scott Reid does. <laughs> I don't believe anything DT says, which is a bit of a worry because he's a BBC commentator. <laughs> and I'm doing a game with him in New York in a 50 over game, and I don't believe anything he says. So that's a bit, that's not going to work well, is it? But here comes uh, Barker. Forward. Well, I, I hope for Fletcher Middleton's sake it didn't carry, but unfortunately my colleagues next to me think it may just have done. He's, uh, well, he's really in there because Liam Dawson's off the field. Yeah, well, he certainly, it was certainly a comfortable drop yesterday off Salt. There was no doubt about that one. And, and he, unfortunately, he was responsible for deflecting the ball into Liam Dawson's face. So, uh, <laughs> if I was him, I'd be begging the captain to get yes. me out of there. <laughs> here comes Barker. Bowls. Bell forward. Good stuff here from Barker. It's one of them where you just ask the captain, can I go to the fan leg, please? <laughs> <laughs> His dad never fielded in the slips. So, um, Tony Middleton, former Hampshire opening batter. Beckham back, and Osmond Hill's frustrated man on the ground. So oh. He's bowled excellent, um, with no just reward, really. Agreed. Uh, just come back to Richard Kenyon's email. He says, um, I was born in St Anne's, but I grew up in Epsom in Surrey. Both my parents and brother were born in the greater Manchester area. I've been here in... Toledo, Ohio, for the past 28 years, but I've proudly retained my English accent, and I can still consider myself a Lancashire lad, even though I'm nearly a young 60. Uh, younger than me, then. So, uh, here's uh, Mason Crane, start of a new over, bowls, and forward is Mitchell, and that pushes it into the gap again, with good on the mid-off back. There's the gap, and there's his half-century. Raises his bat to his teammates, just to our right and around the ground as well. Ball, ball, ball. 64 balls. 64 balls. 64 balls. Two sixes. Very good knock as well. Lancashire like, lost a few wickets when Argon came on to bowl, but Mitchell's just re-steadied the ship um, along with George Ballet. So, big big partnership here for Lancashire, actually. Been together since 260. It's now 296 for five as Crane comes in. Bell drives. Out to Gubbins in the covers. I'll be hoping these guys come back for a, a while longer, maybe even carry him to T and then really put on a, a big lead and then have some fun with the with the lower order. Yeah, you would think that in this heat the uh, seamers will start to tire a bit if they haven't already, as that's a length ball. They'll watch full there. Spinners Mason Crane in particular. Felix Organ will have to bowl. Not only their allocation, as, but uh, Liam Dawson's as well. Interesting to see uh, if and when he comes back on the ground as to what state he will be in. But stitches into an upper lip 
cut as that's driven out in the covers. Crane got a little excited, but it was in the gap as it rolls along the floor. And it was picked up cleanly, and it was Bell who was uh, aware of that. Mitchell wasn't. Not sure there would have been a single, but Bell was alert. And he moves on to 25, 297 for five. We're in the 75th over, Lancashire just three runs short of another batting point here. Is there any ruling on Darshan having to wait before he bowls? Oh, that's a good one. I really wish you hadn't asked me that, because that's uh, <laughs> off the back foot, punched past a type in Mason Cray. <laughs> it's gone up the ground, because whenever anybody asks me anything about the rules, uh, Callum, <laughs> um, it's like, oh dear. <laughs> I so. remember when I was commentating against Somerset, um, at Old Trafford and Jimmy Anderson didn't come back on the field. Um, I think it was day two. It's Crane in. Bell's pulling that in the air, that'll be six. Just, they say it's gone on the roof of the outdoor practice nets, just the other side of the uh, entertaining area here to our right. Lovely shot. Yeah, and I remember, I don't think James Anderson could bowl straight away if he did come back on. Obviously, he never came back on because there was a little bit of a um, niggle problem that he had. Um, but obviously, Dawson started on the pitch, so I don't know if, he'll, if he will be able to just come on and, and bowl anyway. I think the uh, doctors will be opening them stitches again, put in pretty quickly. Yes, that's right. the case. I, I, I don't know the rule, Callum. I'm just wondering if there is a, maybe a special dispensation that, you know, if you... There's all sorts of reasons why players are off, game, like isn't that, there? Yeah. You know, I'm just wondering if that's like, well, you know, it's a bit unlucky. Yeah, it's uh, Why exactly. should you be penalised? Yeah. But um, somebody will know better, than, certainly better than me, but, uh, yeah. Um, email here from John Sutcliffe. Thank you, John. Cricket at gmail.com. 304 for five, by the way. Lancashire have picked up another bonus point. Little's on 51 and Bell on 31. Good partnership developing here for the sixth wicket. As Barker starts a new over from the Harrod drive. And off the back foot there is Mitchell. Nice high elbow with that one. Played back to extra cover. Very much enjoying uh, the quality co of commentary. That's very nice. Uh, and pleased to see the Red Rose playing well. Yesterday, while Keith Barker was batting, I decided to look up his stats. And while doing so, was interested to see that he shared a middle name with an illustrious former player and hero of Lancashire. Can you guess who? Uh, yeah, well, I sort of guess. Yeah, the name is Hubert. Yeah, shared with this great Sir Clive Hubert Lloyd. Uh, before you were born, Callum. I'm sure you've heard of Sir Clive Lloyd. Oh, didn't yeah. You? yeah, of course you have. You would have done, yeah. Um, who I hope is well and still enjoying the great game we all love. Nice guy. He was a terrific guy. Met him a couple of times. That's played to uh, what's a mid on. They thought about a single, and in the end, they said, "Yeah, let's go." And uh, they got it. They got home uh, easy. Uh, I've, I've probably said this a million times, but um, I think one of my first ever games for Middlesex was up at uh, Lancashire, and Clive Lloyd was batting. And um, this was in the days before the pitch was turned around. It was the other way. So we got changed. Uh, as you look to the pavilion, we got on the left, and there was that sort of semicircle window. And it was a very hot day, and uh, half the window was open. And Clive Lloyd smacked this ball on the next side. It went straight through the window of our dressing room. <laughs> but the window was open, fortunately. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. Uh, so that's per pushed up to mid-off, and there's no run. And there's another one as well where we were, um, we were in the field. It might be in the same game, actually, because I don't think I played against him very often. It might have been the same one. And he was batting, doing what he does. And, um, and something happened with his bat, and it came out. And um, we were sort of standing around. And somebody said, look at this. And he had about 10 rubbers on the handle of his bat. So the bat was like, it was like a tree trunk, the handle. And you think, how on earth is anybody holding that? <laughs> it was absolutely ridiculous. But amazing player. 305 for six, uh, for five. Barker into Bell. Bell drives past extra cover. Chase for Crane, running round from point. Is he going to get there? He's not. It's running down the hill, and that'll be four. 35 now for Bell. 309 for five. So, uh, yeah, shares the same name uh, with the middle name. Um, blue sky, sunshine and cricket, almost the perfect day. Just waiting for the lottery win as well, says John, who's in a sunny Chester. He says, keep up the good works, uh, the good work, and uh, he's enjoying it as well. We're enjoying the weather. It's, it's the, whether you're Hampshire, whether you're Lancashire, whether you're neutral, you can't not enjoy what's going on in front of us here in the weather that we've oh, got. Exactly. Perfect. We've spent enough time freezing this season. <laughs> it's Barker. Bell gets a length ball. It's pushing out to mid-off. We have to moan when it's cold and then after moan when it's too hot, don't we? I know. I know. I know. What's, what's, your, what's your role in the uh, 
the England side can't. I forgot to ask. Um, so I'm the captain, bat number three, um, and then just tend to ball sort of in the death overs. Um, I'm unfortunately the one that often gets put over the boundary, but someone has to do it, I suppose. Yep. Um, but no, I like being in the pressure situations, and I'd, I'd much rather um, myself be doing that than any of my teammates. I'd rather try and take control and, and take the pressure off them guys. Sure. Barker starts a new over. I think we're going to have a quick change here. Uh, Scott Reid is coming. Oh, he's done his little jink in his run there as uh, that's edged into the ground and fielded in the, the gully. Uh, Scott Reid is back with us. Yeah, it's 309-4-5. Uh, the uh, lead is 167 uh, with um, 55 overs available today. Um, so plenty of cricket still to go through the course of this uh, second day. Mitchell 52, Bell on 35. This partnership is just a run shy of 50. Between Mitchell and between Bell. And they've uh, batted very nicely indeed. See the return of, return of Felix Organs of Crane, three overs for 19 in that. Spell from the Grosvenor Road end. Organ back into the attack and balls. It's off the back foot, just nudged away to uh, to mid wicket. And it's field of Evans and there is no run in total. And Crane seven overs for 33. Felix Organ ten overs, three for 53. And success in the uh, in the morning session. Mitchell waits. Organ is in and balls. Forward and defend just safely. Guiding the ball back along the pitch. Scooped up by uh, Organ, who's back to the top of his mark, clutching the ball towards his chest. Slipping place, he's in the balls. And Mitchell paddles the ball on the sweep down to, uh, to fine leg for a single. Moves on to 53. And uh, the score moves on to 310. Uh, five. New ball is three overs away but it will be after the conclusion of this one so three more balls new ball comes available for james vince to take organ in and balls to uh, to bell it's on the back foot Turns the ball out towards back with square leg kind of deflects off fletcher middleton who's at short leg under the helmet there Picked up by Vince, who's at slip. Um, 35 not out. Organ balls. Bell works the ball out through the offside and uh, jogs through for a single. 36 to Bell. 311 for five. One ball left for, for Organ. 169 building nicely here, Lancashire. Swept by Mitchell out towards square leg. Crane will get across and scoop the ball up and come back for two in the process. The score moves on to 313 for five and um, the lead 171. That completes the over three overs left before a new ball becomes available for uh, Hampshire to take. Um, with um, I'm sure it looks the most they will take. So they try and find a breakthrough for this to this partnership, which is out of 50 runs so far for the sixth wicket between uh, Mitchell and between between Bell. Really solid performance again by Bell. He has impressed, hasn't he, Callum, since he's come into this Lancashire. Lancashire team. He's kind of his, his first full season. He made his debut at the back end of last year. But first full season in the in the side as Barker bobs left arm of the wicket to Bell. He takes a step towards him and defends. And there's no run. Okay, he's kind of creeped up on us this yeah. uh, this little innings that he's he's put on here. He's got to 36 off 53 balls, but it don't don't seem like he's been out there very long. And that 50 partnership as well is coming pretty quick time. They complement each other really well, I think. George Bell is just a very busy cricketer, isn't he? He's always 
Well, he's trying to be on the move, trying to trying to score runs as much as he can. Um, and like you say, he's having a really, really solid first full season, you would say, for Lancashire. 36 and 54. Again, they'll shuffle down the pitch and the ball through to the keeper. They've just dropped his hands there, just a little bit shorter from, from Barker. Three, two slips are waiting, actually. There's um, James Vincent, Fletcher Middleton, the first and second slip. Waiting for a, an edge. I think Barker's been unlucky. Yeah, he just keeps finding that length that keeps lifting and stuff, but he just can't quite <laughs> find the edge. Came out of the attack after a good spell this morning and two balls into Abbott's first over. He did find the edge. Playing a miss from uh, from Bell. And there's a lot of drooping shoulders on there from the Hampshire players. Understandable. That's well, been a lot, a lot of loose shots um, from Lancashire, which just haven't given any reward to Hampshire. I think, like you say, you can see a lot of um, a lot of shoulders and arms puffing out there and. Barker every, after the end of every over just looks like he just so frustrated. Halfway through his uh, 18th over. Bell, with a nice shot. On the move down the pitch and guides the ball all along the ground through cover. Comes back for uh, a second. Takes his total on to 38. Score to 315. For five, Nick Cubbins down there. Um, just trying to stop the ball, but so uh, as you can see, if you're watching the pictures or if you're listening, we've mentioned it a few times. It is a pretty firm outfit. There's a few bumps and bruises and scrapes from the fielders. Yeah, it's not got that green, lush colour to us. With, with, with the weather we've had, it really is firm out there. Diving on the concrete. Barker to Bell, and down the pitch he comes again. He pushes. And again, Barker with arms outstretched, almost pleading. How on earth has he, has he not found not just the edge of Bell's back, in truth, but there's a couple of, before that through the course of this Lancashire first innings. Arms outstretched, looking yes. aloft, just praying for some some kind of good fortune. And he does deserve it. He's bowled really well this um, this morning, this afternoon so far. Zero sympathy from the Lancashire batters. <laughs> He's got plenty of victims under his belt, as Keith Barker. And so far today, another swish of the bat from Bell. Loose-looking shot, in truth. Another frustrated over, or frustrating over, from a Hampshire point of view, from a Keith Barker point of view. And uh, the, the, the whole, uh, understandable, but the whole kind of feel of the Hampshire players and. Uh, sense of energy uh, has kind of been slowly sapped out of the team through the course of the of the day a combination of Lancashire's batting and a bit of the heat yeah a couple, couple of drop catches yeah, obviously yeah. one of them affecting their main probably controlled spinner you'd say in, in in Dawson so it's been tough out there for Hampshire but um, they'll still be hoping to create something here with Argon coming back on Yep, second over of this latest spell, swept by Mitchell. Towards deep back with square leg, and Mason Crane get across and stop it. He can't. And it's picked up by, it's picked by George, the photographer. Never in doubt. Nice piece of fielding. Had a bit of a hash or something at Blackpool the other week, did George, when he's on the, the boundary edge, but good piece of work there. <laughs> 319 for five, lead of 177. Lovely shot from Daryl Mitchell there. Yeah. Sweet, wasn't it? it? Just loops away into the the onside. So Mitchell rocks onto the front foot. Just bring you a little bit of news from the uh, women's Ashes squad that has been uh, released over the last hour or so. And it's interested both Thunder and Vipers. So Mitchell is dancing down the pitch and pushed up towards long on for a single. Unless Kevin mentioned this. Did you mention the England women's Ashes Don't squad? Think you did now. No, okay. Three Lancastrians made it, did they? There is, yeah, and there's a couple of Vipers players in there as well, which is um, of interest, I'm sure, for Hampshire supporters. Lauren Bell and Danny Wyatt. 
Five of his players in that squad. That's off the back foot by Bell. And worked away through the offside for a single. Score moves on to 321 for five. So Bell and Wyatt from a Viper's point of view in that uh, Ashes squad. Is that just for the one-off test first? Have they named it far? Is that? Well, let's, let's have a look at this. It's in more detail. It's left alone by Mitchell. Taken by Ben Brown. No run. Final ball of the over coming up. Lead of 179. 321 for five. And Mitchell on six. Floated up to Mitchell who defends for no run. End of the over. 79 gone. So a new ball becomes available for, for Hampshire to use in one over time, 52 left of the day. So, reading from the BBC Sport website and app. Kate Cross has been named in England's squad for the Ashes Test with Australia after recovering from illness. She's had an absolutely horrendous few months as Kate. It's really, really nice to see her included in multiple rounds of antibiotics to treat a, a parasite infection. She's, uh, she's, she's battled through that and she's been named in the um, England squad for the Ashes Test with Australia. The uncapped all rounder Danielle Gibson also involved in that squad as well. Yeah, this is the test, this is for the test match. So, yeah. So, as well as those two Viper players we mentioned, the Thunder players include Kate and Sophie Eccleston and Emma Lamb as well, so congratulations to, to those three making the uh, the squad likewise to uh, Danny Wyatt and uh, Laura Bell from the Vipers it's a test match that starts like, isn't it? Oh, back end of June I think it's right yeah the kind of is it the first time the kind of running side by side that she's out this year yeah. um, I, think they've, I think the women have sold some um, really good promising ticket sales as well which is excellent to see women's game thriving more than ever you'd say in England at the moment Trent Bridge that test match against Australia in fact I was at Trent Bridge of the week and there was posters of the England women's team all over the ground, yeah. promotion of the of the of the game. Trent Bridge hosting that uh, test match on the 22nd of June between uh, England's women and Australia women, part of that kind of multi-format Ashes competition, which involves um, one-day games and T20 matches as well. Drinks break here with uh, Mitchell and, and Bell. Having a, a bit of a refreshment, and likewise the uh, the Hampshire players as well. See any reason why Abbott and Abbas would, wouldn't be coming in with a new ball in six balls time? Yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? I think Bar will Bar carry on, or maybe just ball one over a spin here. Looks like Bar is going to carry on from this end. I think Bar can maybe start with the new ball as well, maybe okay. give him two or three. Maybe bring Abbott straight back on. Yes. Well, this will be if he does bowl. This will be his fifth over in the spell. In the spell for Barker, yeah. So whether they would go with? Yeah, maybe straight straight to Abbott and Abbas, maybe. Possibly, yeah. They've held them back, haven't they? Which perhaps gives a bit of a clue. He looks like yeah, gonna hand his cap to the umpire. So Barker will uh, will continue. Drinks taken. Oh, no. nice warm day it's probably a little bit too hot if you're in the sunshine a bit of stretching being done <laughs> he's stretching now he's been there for a good minute or two like <laughs> oh he's finally moved <laughs> I thought he was kind of chilling out a little Someday bit yeah a little bit, catching <laughs> a few rays let's have a few a few moments yeah. Nick Gubbins who's uh, <laughs> on his back doing a few stretches Waiting for the very last moment when Barker got to the top of his mark before before standing back up. Barker into Bell. So the, the back foot sliced away down towards the third man boundary. Into the rope. And four runs for Bell. 
Springs into uh, the 40s now, 43 not out. 325 for five, so the lead of 183. It's a slow walk back to the mark for Keith Barker. Yeah, I'd give a penny for his thoughts right now. Another, another edge straight over. Second slip head for four. I think he's probably thinking, give me a, give me a blow for a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> How about your go? It's back in to, uh, to, to Bell. Angled across. Yeah, like a shot. Battering into the gloves of, of Ben Brown. There's no run through 25 for five. He's a little bit unhappy with the footholds. He's doing a lot of... I mean, someone else has gone scratching for him now, but kind of looked like he was falling over after he released the ball. Then he looked down at the pitch, not too happy. It's kind of habit, isn't it? Scratching away. It's, uh, I think the, the ball was in. Helping out his mate. It's Barker again. Bell waits. It'll shuffle down the pitch and then... Clips the ball away off the pads down to uh, to fine leg. And jumps through for a single. A bass fielding. Might see him soon. Perhaps in just a couple of deliveries' time. Will be no visible sign that either a bass or Abbott, mind you, are kind of limbering up for the idea of a, a ball. And saying that a bass <laughs> just doing a few stretches now that down the fine leg. So maybe there's a little clue there. 183 in front. About 184 in front when that uh, run gets added to the board on your screen. In again, balls at Barker, that's run away to the other uh, side by Mitchell. Jumps through for another single. Just looks so calm and composed at the crease, Mitchell. Now he, like you say, first 20 balls he came in, give it a good whack, still in T20 mode, it seemed. Um, striking at 200 at one stage and now. Well, the fields have spread, he's just controlled the singles and the twos and picks up the odd bound here and there. It's been a, been a very well composed inning so far. 185. Is Barker running in with the train going in the opposite direction. Bell turning it out towards mid wicket, Fuller fields, and there's no run. 327 for five. 61 to, to Mitchell, 44 to, to Bell. George Bell's season uh, to date for Lancashire. 216 runs, average of 30. Twice he's got to 50. Top score of 60 this, uh, this summer for Bell. Barker to Bell. Playing and missing again. <laughs> Barker could be forgiven for walking back to the dressing room having to lie down in the dark room. He's, he's, he's just absolutely <laughs> nothing has gone his way. I've got a feeling he'll be calling the subfielder yeah. and just going having a lie down for 10, 15 minutes and just, just chilling out in the changing room. He's looking over that direction. Yeah, he is. Avoid Keith Barker. That <laughs> would be my advice at the minute. He's understandably a bit of a grumpy fast bowler. He's, he's, play, he's had an umpteen plays and misses on it, off his own bowling. Latest there of George Bell. I suppose if you look in, you look in. I <laughs> quite like umpire. Even umpire the Malland has gone up. Yeah, he's giving him a tap on the back. <laughs> umpire Malland is walking up to Keith Park. A little tap on the back of the shoulder. Unlucky, mate. Not now you've not got a wicket. And I'm sure coach is running on now. I think. Oh, he's taking the helmets. Thought he was going to have a word with Parker then. Great to have the old mic up, wouldn't it? Now on the players, <laughs> yeah. Keith, how are you feeling, mate? Oh, he's going off. Oh, he is. Oh, is, he, is he going oh. off? Oh, I have a break. Thank you, mate. <laughs> Certainly edging towards this uh, the boundary here. I'll be having a breather for a bit. Go and replace your bowling boots. He's been a bit unlucky, hasn't he? Goodness. 320, be zero sympathy from Lancashire. Oh no, he's staying on. Okay, oh, he's out at uh, cover there, at midweek you're up. That's walloped in towards the direction of Barker actually. <laughs> Down towards the boundary for six. 
So, a bass is into the attack. In the middle of all that, did we see the signal for the new ball? I don't think I've seen it come out. No, um, it looks a bit older. Especially with yeah. him just putting deep yeah. mid-wicket out. I'd be very surprised if they had the new ball with him now. In fact, they're going uh, to take it. They've just signalled it now. Yeah, that old ball was walloped to mid-wicket for six. They're giving a bass one ball to get loose. Yes. <laughs> Mitchell moves on to uh, 65. <laughs> Three hundred and thirty one for five. Abbas balls that's through to the keeper. A new ball taken here. I just have to go a bit more cautious now. Uh, Daryl Mitchell and George Bell now the new balls come in. Obviously they'll a bit more pace on the ball, firmer ball, so you, the boundaries might come a few more often, but it will also nip around a lot more, especially with someone highly skilled like Mohamed Abbas, and I think it's going to be a bit of the other end as well. Actually, it's been given as a four, that shot by uh, Mitchell. I thought it cleared, went all the way for six, but it's been given as a four. That's flashed away towards the onside. This will bounce safe and, and uh, stopped by Barker. Took his bottom hand off the bat there, Mitchell. It went high out towards deep square leg. Took a slightly awkward bounce and spun to the right of, uh, of Keith Barker. Mitchell goes through for a single. He moves on to 66, a score to 332 for five. Best way of describing that for anyone not watching the Lions feed would be kind of Baz Ball taking effect into Chapel Ball. <laughs> <laughs> With a Chapel Ball going on at Southport and Birkdale. Bell on 44, Bass. Balls and some played away into the offside. I think Mitchell is going to just carry on playing his yeah. shots now. The ball got a firmer ball, a bit more pace onto it. I think he's just going to back himself. I mean, it's a decent sized ground, but I'm sure Mitchell will be looking at the boundaries going, you know, as long as I get um, three quarters of the bat on it, I'm going to clear these ropes. So I think he is going to back himself here and just carry on playing, playing his shots as he has been doing. Lead now 190. To Bass into De Bell. It's pushed away into the offside for no run. Sometimes when this when a new ball is taken, you kind of see a little period of calm, don't you? When the two batters are a bit more cautious, or, or conversely, you see the ball crash into the boundary a bit more, a harder ball. And yeah, I think that's the route Mitchell's going to go. Slowly edging back to the top of his mark. Bell waits. Abbas in and balls. Beaten Bell. He's got to try and tuck the bat just inside his front pad there, but I think he's, I think he's pushed at that. <laughs> Through to the keeper. And there's no run. 44 to Bell. That's the end of the over. The first one sent down, or at least five of those six balls sent down with a new ball by Abbas. 332 for 50 overs remaining in the day it will be Abbott to take the new ball from the Harrod Drive end of the ground the way Mitchell's taking it on there I mean if he does get out a few fans will probably be like mm, what's he doing playing like that but in hindsight if you think about it they've lost the main controlled spinner Liam Dawson he's still not on the field um, Bark has just come off a six over spell yeah so if they can hit one of the Abbott or Abbas out of the attack with this new ball, Hampshire will be looking as to, well, James Vince specifically, will be looking where to go with who to bowl with this new ball. So if they can try and force one of these out of the attack and then get a spinner on, yeah. Lancashire will be really happy with that. Well, it's been a game so far. The new ball has been difficult to face, hasn't it? But the added conundrum here is you've got two batters well, well set. The start of an innings with a new ball that's been quite awkward for both batters it's pushed into the onside by Mitchell for a single it takes along to 67 not out 333 for five 91 the lead it's almost almost gonna be the last throw of the dice though, isn't it? For, for, for Hampshire they, they need this new ball to work for them yeah they need to go bang bang here don't yeah. they? they need a couple of wickets again uh, Mike Argon did he got two or three quickens They'll be hoping for that again, and 
not keep watching these two back because if these two carry on batting for the rest of the day, maybe Tom Hartley afterwards as well, giving it a bit of a whack, um, it really could lead to Lanc Lancashire just batting once in this game. A lead of 191 so far. Waiting for here. Well, that's a problem with uh, Mitchell's grip, I think, potentially. He's back around. I was waiting for Mitchell to do a bit of running repair, I think. Abba gets the nod to, to set off again. Bell waiting. Bell plays forward. It defends to, to Gubbins. An extra cover, and there is no run. Here with uh, the Lanx TV or the BBC Sport website and the app. And we're live from Southport Birkdale today. It's day number two of this uh, county championship fixture. Drinks are flowing in the hospitality tent now. Yeah, aren't they? Just yeah. that volume just, just raised a little bit. She slowly goes up through the afternoon. And then come tea. I don't know what happens at tea. Something happens at tea. <laughs> Bell off thickish edge, squirts the ball away through the offside. Gets through for one, moves on to 45. 334 for five. Yeah. Volume level. Fraction again a little bit later on, but they're having a very good day. Farouk Engineers here today. In fact, he's here right in front of yeah. us, just, just making his way into the media tent now. Mentioned Farouk on commentary yesterday, and he's part of the, uh, the uh, part of the, the committee table today. It's Mitchell flicks the ball away towards backward square leg, moves on to 68. Score moves on to 335 for five. 192. It's like Farouk's taken his position. Settled in for the afternoon yeah, now. Yep. Yeah. Sat outside on the grass, watching a bit of cricket. Did you really good lunch, little Farouk? <laughs> Only gone back for seconds. <laughs> He's great, isn't he, Farouk Engineer? This is Bell, if he's to drive the ball away. That's uh, come off the... Uh, that's, what, what has he come off? Let's have a look. What's the, what's the umpire going to give? He's going to give it as a bye. Give it as a bye. So Bell shuffles through. I mean, we're pretty square on, but it shows you how much movement there is still out there, yeah. doesn't it? Because he's played that pretty straight, and it's gone. It's gone to the keeper's left, so... Bell's still moving around out there, especially with this new one now. Yeah, he's trying to drive away, isn't he? Through the, kind of play through the covers. And Brown went leaping away to his left. Kind of almost from where we are, you think he's deflected perhaps off the off his thigh pad, off his hip somewhere. No, we're giving us a bye. Abbott to Mitchell. Looking to get forward. The ball's wrapped him somewhere on the uh, upper thigh, perhaps. In the fleshy part, anyway, it's the end yeah. of the uh, it's the end of the over. 336 for five, a lead of 194. Uh, fleshy part might be a rather bruised part as well. But he's doing his best not to crouch over too much and show too much discomfort there, Darren. Yeah, Mitchell. don't rub it will be the shell from a few of the Hampshire <laughs> lads. <laughs> don't show any pain. 336 for five. To, uh, to continue. Bell and strike two slips and a gully. A point, cover, mid off, mid on. And Barker, who was on the uh, mid wicket boundary, is now slowly drifting into into the to mid wicket. It's into the game actually. As Bell turns it away to the leg side. Barker comes up to complete the fielding, loops it back to, to Weatherly, and he'll in turn find his way back to uh, Abbas. But uh, just having a little look at Abbas's follow through there, to where he was landing on the on the pitch. Three three six for five. Sets off again. Top over the wicket to, to Bell. It's played on the bounce back down the pitch to the bowler. And there 
is uh, no rod. It's just a good feel around outground cricket, isn't it? You know, you, the fans seem a lot more closer to the game. It's just a bit more noise. Obviously, you're not in a massive stadium like Old Trafford, so you can you can feel the support a little bit more. And like I say, when you get four days forecasted like we have this week, can't get much better. I agree. Yeah, it does. A, as it takes on a different feeling, doesn't it? Bell defends again, and there's no run. If you put this crowd, it might be 1,600, maybe pushing up to a. 1800, 1900 inside the ground here. But if you put this number inside Empress Old Trafford, it's it's kind of lost. Yeah, isn't you it? don't you, you, you don't hear really anyone, do you? Um, but and you, you can just hear the. Obviously, we're next to the tent here. Mm. You can hear the noise there. You can still hear the noise around the crowd. It just just feels a lot more compact and a lot more um, more like an intense game, you'd say. Yeah, I agree. There's a nice festival feel to it. Field for LBW and Given. And Bell departs for 45, and at last, Abbas strikes. He's been searching for that wicket. Mohamed Abbas and gets one here, pinning Bell, LBW. Sure, much, I'm not sure there's uh, too much debate about that one. I think I should lose their sixth wicket. Bell goes, it's 336 for six. Yeah, the steady knock from um, George Bell. There's quite a few players and misses. Um, it's a really good vital knock for the Lancashire. Joined Mitchell there, put a nice um, semi partnership on with him there. He's just over 70. Yes, it was 76. Between uh, Bell and uh, Mitchell. Uh, Hartley, the new batter, coming out. As, uh, we're ticking up towards three o'clock. I'll uh, leave you for a few moments. Update uh, all your listeners across Manchester, and then I'll be back with uh, with uh, with Kevin in a few minutes. So, 30th wicket of the Championship season for Mohamed Abbas. He's had to wait an awful long time for it. That uh, was pretty stone uh, dead. Um, thank you to, uh, I don't know if uh, Scott and uh, Callum have mentioned that recently, but thank you to all the emailers and also Dave Allen, Hampshire's honorary historian, who, um, honorary archivist, uh, whatever you want to call him, uh, saying about the Dawson situation, because it's an external match injury. Uh, he can bowl immediately, he comes back on the field, but he's not, so um, one would assume with this uh, second new ball that Maybe there might not be any time for him to come back on anyway. He's still off the field, has been since before lunch. So Tom Hartley, the new batter for uh, Lancashire. And Mohamed Abbas now has one for 82. And comes in and uh, bowls. Tim Hartley is left-handed, pushes forward. He's gone out on the uh, offside. And there is uh, no run. So uh, Tom Hartley, I mean, his seventh innings here, over 250 runs, averaging 64. Well, that's not bad. Coming in at number eight. Maybe there's a further bit of pain for Hampshire as they trail in this game by 194. They're going to have to bat well in the second innings. Plenty of time left. We're nowhere near halfway through. There are still another. Over 48 overs left in the day's play. Here's a bass round the wicket to the left hander, left alone. That will be the end of the over. So, thank you very much. Uh, ben Curtis, as well, pointing that out as well. As I say, those that listen to the uh, regular Hampshire commentaries will know that I know nothing about uh, the laws and rules and what have you. So, I usually get helped out by somebody, which is very kind of you. Thank you very much. And, uh, of course, Dave Taylor pointing out the fact that uh, Keith Barker has the middle name of Hubert, which is Sir Clive, because Sir Clive uh, Lloyd is his godfather. I should have known that. I think I sort of did know that in the back of my head, but sometimes I just not say it straight away until I really think about it. have been known to say the odd thing in the past that uh, hasn't been quite right. I can't uh, believe that. No, it's, very, it's not very often. <laughs> uh, here comes Abbott, and there's an edge into the ground, fielded at Gully by Fletcher Middleton. It happens rarely, but yes. I try and keep them to a minimum. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Only every now and again. Yeah. 
<laughs> you and me each both. session. Yeah. <laughs> Every now and again, each session. Yeah. So, 68 to Daryl Mitchell. My word, he's played well. He has. 20 of those runs came off the first few balls. He's been much quieter since, but he's playing very responsibly now and playing the situation, maneuvering Lancashire into a very, very commanding lead. He's still there as Abbott comes in. Bowls, it's wrapped on the pad, he's out! And Abbott's picked up one, and this uh, second new ball, and he doesn't look too happy, he's staring at the umpire there. It is Daryl Mitchell, it is Neil Mallinder, who gave Nick Gubbins out in the Hampshire innings. Uh, I have to say, from deep backward point, that looks a lot closer than Gubbins' is LBW. But uh, clearly, Mitchell didn't look too pleased. He's gone for 68, and the second new ball has brought its second wicket. Here's the replay, if you watch it on the picture feed. That's certainly closer than Gubbins for me. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Gubbins wasn't out, was it? <laughs> <laughs> so that's certainly nearer well, than the Gubbins dismissed. Well, I'll give you that. Well, you well, well, could certainly well, make the case that that might be going down the leg side, but um, it's the end of Mitchell and reward for uh, for Hampshire. They picked up a couple of wickets with this uh, with this second new ball. Yeah, Mitchell departs, making the end 68. Of 84 deliveries, six fours and two sixes. So that's two wickets on 336. Second new ball taken at 327 for five, so it's bought two for nine. Second new ball. Fortunately, uh, the Hampshire seamers have still got enough strength and enough puff to make use of this uh, second new ball. Just shows actually it just the, the new ball on this wicket is very, very tricky indeed. Yeah, we're just saying that with, 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 with Callum about the, the importance of this. It's, I mean, it was, it's almost kind of a bit of a last chance, this, isn't it, for, for Hampshire in this Lancashire innings now. This new ball has to work for them. Yes. Although, I mean, they're already going to be thick end of 200 runs plus the, the, the deficit on first innings, but the prospect of Lancashire pushing that up to, you know, an insurmountable first innings lead is, is a distinct possibility unless this new ball works for Hampshire and so far it has. How about two for 54 now as he comes in and bowls to Tom Bailey. Oh, Bailey gets one that nips and hits him on the bottom hand. Now we saw that to Josh Bohannon earlier in the innings yesterday afternoon and that was a very similar. Did it hit him on the hand or the top of the I leg? It hit him on the hand. Oh that was a very wicked delivery. There's that little spot, just short of a length yeah. from that end, the Harrod Drive end. It is, it's what Will Williams mentioned it yesterday yeah. about just a little bit of something extra, a little bit of extra extra lift, extra extra pop from uh, Harrod Drive end. Seemed to pop a bit and it came back in a bit. It did a bit, did that? It did, yeah. <laughs> it's a new ball again that just accentuates the little imperfections in the wicket. Okay. Bowls to Bailey. Bailey gets one. Who's edge to first slip dropped? Vince has dropped it, diving to his left. Ben Brown didn't move. He's about a foot and a half off the ground. Looked like Vince had it in two hands. Just spilled out. Different game with this new ball, isn't it? It is, very different game. And unfortunately, the Hampshire slip catching on the hole has not been great. Dawson got a good one, diving to his right early this morning. But there's Vince just moving to his right. Well, in fact, it was only just to his left. I think it was. I thought it was further to his left, but it wasn't. It was quite close to him, and he's, he spilled it. Abbott comes in again. Bowls. Oh, that's nipped again off a length, and it's hit high up the bat this time, as it, or maybe off the glove as it goes down towards third. No discernible reaction there from Bailey, mm. but that looked a very wicked delivery of a length once more. Standing over this, isn't it, from Abbott? One kind of last hurrah, really. New ball, Abbott and Abbas steaming in. Different game all of a sudden. Yes, yeah. Got rid of Mitchell. Well, got rid of Bell first, followed by Mitchell. There's a chance here. There's an opening here for Hampshire to try and try and wrap up the innings sooner rather than later. I think that's at least three catches put down in the slips. Here's Abbott. He's trying to cut that one away. as hardly misses. And that goes through to uh, keeper Ben Brown. End of the over, 337 for seven. Yeah, Phil Salt dropped last night. Mm -hmm. Sitter. Uh, the catch that actually caused 
Dawson to go off, which wasn't necessarily Dawson's in the first place, but it got deflected onto him. That's another one. There was another one. That's three. Dawson got a really good one to dismiss Josh Bohannon diving low to his right. So I think it's only three catches, isn't it? But three catchable catches that have all gone down. Yeah. yeah it's it's all, I think it's difficult, isn't it, to kind of criticise slip fielders because everyone you know, everyone drops them, don't they? But they are, the, the, the Vince one there was, a, was one that he'd, he'd think he would take pretty much eight or nine times out of ten. Got to take it. Yeah, I mean, the, unfortunately, the good sides, they catch most of the catches going into the slips, if not all. Abbas to Bailey. Bailey striding forward, getting a, a big stride in the ball. Runs down to third man for four runs. Bailey moves on to five with that. 341 for seven. Stride here from Bailey, trying to get forward as far as he can. The ball zips away down to third man for four. Reward for Abbas and for Abbott with this second new ball. Both have picked up a wicket each since they've been taken. Back is Abbas in and bowls to Bailey again. Deflects away down to the boundaries. Even as, as buys, four buys, it's looped away off the thigh pad of uh, Tom Bailey. 341 for seven. Lead of 199 now. It's a different challenge with a new ball. 3 4 1 4 7. It's going all over the place at the it's moment. A bit, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> a bass over the wicket, balls to Bailey. Here, off the front foot, pushed away into the offside, out through point. He'll shuffle back for a couple. And Bailey moves on to nine. I don't think Hampshire will enjoy seeing the way this second new ball's behaving. They'll be a long way behind when it's their turn to bat. And that will be very, very tricky early on. Lead of 205 now. Yeah, it'll be a big deficit in first innings. Three, four, three for seven. Again, barely off the front foot. <laughs> Reaching for that come back in. Oh, blimey, me, that's caught Tom Bailey. Another fleshy part of the body. I tell you what, he's had some nasty deliveries in the yeah, short time he's been yeah, out yeah. there. He's had a few that's popped, a few yeah. that's come back. He's been hit on the hand, he's been hit. Well, is this the wicket breaking up? Is this is where the three spinners come in? Is it too late? <laughs> 3.47 for seven. Bailey's composed himself. It's done a bit, hasn't it, since this new ball's been taken. It's a different game. It's run down to third man again by Bailey. Good stride into it. Work down to the boundary at third man. Dive comes in by Felix Organ. Can't cut the ball off. It's a boundary for Bailey. Live and up, hasn't it? After a calm period, like you were just ticking along and progressing and building. They lose two wickets. New ball comes into the game. Starts moving about, jagging about. He's hit Bailey in the, in the rather uncomfortable position. It's caught him on the on the glove, I think, as well. And a couple of edges down to third man. It's yeah, it, different type of feel to it. Three fifty one for seven, Lancashire. Abbas to uh, to Bailey. That's driven to mid off. And there's no run. It's the end of the over. A lead of two hundred and nine for Lancashire at three hundred and fifty one for seven. Yeah, I mean, Lancashire won't mind this now. I mean, whatever happens from now on, they've got a great lead. Hampshire under massive pressure. If they score a few more, then great. There's no time pressure. I mean, this is all bonus for Lancashire from here on in. The damage has already been inflicted. Uh, Gavin Dawson has emailed sonofcricket at gmail.com. He says, good afternoon, gentlemen. I'm listening to your informative and entertaining commentary via the BBC app at home in sunny Filey. Where's Filey, guys? I don't know. Every time I mention a name up here, you guys never have a clue where it is. Filey. F-I-L-E-Y. No. Let me type it in. Honestly, you're, you guys geography up here. Well, I don't know everything. Where was that guy with the blazer at lunchtime? I said, where were you? Which club? He said, Munton. Yeah, never heard Monton. of that. Never heard of that. I said, where's that? And you guys said, I oh, know. It's around the corner from where I live. <laughs> Here's Abbott. <laughs> Pushed out to Hartley. 
Uh, Filey is... Um, oh, it's on the coast. Whereabouts, though? Hang on. North Yorkshire. I think I'll see it's Lancaster. Well, that's the other side of the... That's the other side. I don't know where that's that is. Else. I mean, that just goes to show there is rivalry between you guys and Yorkshire, isn't it? Really? If you don't even know where anywhere is in Yorkshire. Where's Leeds in Yorkshire, by the way, guys? <laughs> anyway, Sunny File, it's on the coast. That's a lovely picture that uh, Callum has just shown me. It looks a lovely spot. Anyway, that's, we've worked out where that is. Uh, he says, says Gavin. Uh, so going back to that blazer, M Monton Cricket Club. Lovely blazer. Always oh, playing and missing outside the off stump is uh, Hartley. Uh, it, what was it? It was sort of like um, turquoise and brown. Vertical yeah. stripe blazer. Well, so I said to him, I said, where's that? And he said, oh, it's Monton Cricket Club. And, of course, I wouldn't have a clue. So I turned to you guys and said, where's Monton? You said, I haven't got a clue. And I said, where is it then? And this guy said, e near Eccles. Near Eccles, yeah. Didn't I? Mm. Yeah. It's 20 minutes from where I live. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to Filey uh, and back to Gavin. 3.47 for seven here. There's the left-hander, Hartley, who's uh, not off the mark yet. Faces Abbott once more comes in around the wicket and Hartley pushing forward. That'll be a single out on the leg side. Mohamed Abbas is running around for mid on. They'll pick up two, 3.49 for seven. Um, whilst being a Lancastrian in North Yorkshire can be challenging at times, the BBC app and Lancashire TV thankfully keeps me sane. Colin's listening to this, he'll love this. With Lancashire having played many fixtures away in recent weeks, please, therefore sampling the uh, live services offered by other counties, uh, can I implore the other counties to share the commentary duties like you're doing currently, i.e. Scott and Callum for on the Lancashire side, me, Hampshire side, because that's not always the case on the live picture feeds. They're a little bit one-eyed and one-opinionated. As uh, a bit of bounce there, as that's turned away on the leg side by Hartley, moves on to three. 354 for seven the scoreboard moves on to another bonus point in the last few uh, runs as well for uh, Lancashire while cricket is a sport of many opinions it's always helpful to have opinions from both sides keep up the good work and take care says Gavin which is true isn't it I think um, you know we don't all agree with with what's being heard or said or what have you but uh, it, it's nice to hear the differing hmm. opponents sides and it gives a perspective then you can make up your own mind 354 for seven brings Bailey back on strike. I just normally agree with whatever you say, Kevin. Oh, and I don't agree with anything you do, so it's th there's your balance. <laughs> Barker's uh, fielding just in front of us. Oh, there's a hit in the air and it's safe. It's over the covers. It's uh, not hit particularly well. It's a lovely little sandwich over the head of Nick Gubbins and he'll pick up two. You OK on the golf course? That's, that's just, perfect. Just over the road. Down the road. Royal Birkdale. Yeah. It's probably been less... Less well hit chips than that. <laughs> 356 for seven. 13 now to Hartley. Sorry, 13 to Bailey. Three to Hartley. And the lead is 214. And we still have over 45 overs left in the day. Not far off half a day still, though. You know, it's a lot of cricket. When you think where we were this morning, there's Abbott Bowles. And that's a lovely cut shot off the back foot. It's going to Barker, who's just moving to his right in front of us. Need 215 now. Yes, at the start of the day, if you can remember all that way back, Lancashire 139 for one, and we're actually trailing at that stage by three. So, if you work out what we've had so far and what could happen in the next half of the day, then we will be a long way into this game. We will. Yeah, it's been a really interesting couple of days, hasn't it? I thought this. I thought the morning session was really was quite intriguing. It's a really interesting kind of couple of hours of cricket. We're still wondering as to the, the impact potentially as the, as the match progresses, how the pitch will play, what role will the spinners have as the, as the match develops. Still quite a bit of uncertainty, which is always nice for a second guess what might happen. Barely rocks back, tries to pull this away towards square leg, just loops away off the fire pad and pops away to, to back with square leg for no run. The thing is, it's all very well playing three spinners and wanting to bat first, which they got yeah. they got anyway because Lancashire put them in. But if Lancashire aren't going to have much of a second innings, then it's a bit of a waste of time. Well, yeah, it is. Well, that's where it kind of all unraveled a little bit, wasn't it, for, for Hampshire on, on day one? No, they lost the toss. It went to blind because they, they wanted to bat. I think they've slightly misread the wicket, haven't they? A bass to Bailey, that's edged to the right of second slip. 
hasn't reached the boundary rope. Bailey does get through for a single. Felix Organ on the third man boundary to stop the ball. Bailey moves on to 15. Three, five, eight for seven. Substitute fielder at uh, second slip there, Ian Holland. Yeah, Lynn Dawson still off the field. Suffered a, a bad cut to his, his top lip, which required a bit, a bit of treatment in hospital this morning. Hartley nudges the ball off the front foot to mid on, but for, uh, for no run. Three, five, eight for seven. Well, I think this is only fair because obviously we read out a lot of um, messages about the Gubbins LBW. Peter Andrew Chadwick says that was a shocking decision. Malinder is having a bad match as regards the Mitchell LBW. He didn't like it, did he? I still think it's probably <laughs> closer than the, than the Gubbins one. A bat around the wicket. It's driven away through the offside. And Hartley gets forward. Gets through for one, so he moves on to four. Three nine, uh, three fifty nine for seven. Thank you to Stephen Brady, who sent us uh, a Colin Cam photo. Of Colin in the. I sat down, chilling yeah. out again. He's actually working one yeah. of the cameras He's next to us. He's doing some work actually he for is, the first yeah. time today. Yeah. What's well, come over him? We've got the evidence of you sitting in the crowd there, Colin. It's there on my phone. He's just been like chilling out, hasn't he, all day? He's supposed to be in charge. He wants me to go over there. I'll, I'll, I'll come over in a minute. Abbas to uh, to Bailey. That uh, ball deflects down towards fine leg, and it reaches the boundary rope. I think. Or has it just been flipped by by Joe Weatherly? Yes, it did. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. <laughs> I was about to spin round the signal of four. It was stopped on the boundary. It's been given as a leg by. The score moves on to 361 for seven, just deflecting off Bailey's thigh pad, and they came back for two leg buys actually. So Bailey remains on 15. Abbas to complete the over, chipped over middle, and down towards the uh, boundary uh, for four runs, up and over Kyle Abbott. That completes the uh, over, so that pushes the lead up to 223 at 360. Five, four, seven. Chip by Bailey up and over. Albert mid on for four runs. Uh, Paul Williams on the emails, silentcricket at gmail.com. Paul's a Hampshire supporter living in Portugal. Thoroughly enjoying the commentary with Scott today. Uh, there are others here, Paul. Uh, love our ground cricket. Dorsey just likes your commentary. And um, friends uh, in attendance say it is lovely. That's right, there's a few Hampshire supporters up here I know Paul keeps in touch with. Glad you're getting some good weather, as I'm unable to gloat as we have only 24 degrees. It's only 24 in Portugal it's today. Warm enough, enough though. It is. And I'm working in the shade and might have some thunderstorms uh, later. You know, there's ru one rumoured here later. I think we really need our spin bowlers to make a mark. I think, Paul, I fear, as I said earlier, that uh, it may already be a little too late as Abbott's round the wicket and the left-handed Hartley pushes that ball up to mid-off so the lead for Lancashire is 223 we still have 12 overs to go until T will be a little late 20 to 4 is the advertised time as it has been for years but I'm afraid to very few teams meet that mark always always way over 20 to 4 even with a few overs of spin today Very hot here. I think it's, no, it's about 24, 25. It feels hotter than that. Abbott's around the wicket. Hartley gets a length ball. Again, she pushes up to uh, mid-off. I think my app. I looked at my app this morning. I think it said it was going to go up to about 24. I just think it might be a bit more than that. I think it's hotter tomorrow, isn't it? Is it? So my app says right now it should be 23. It, oh, it says 25 at 7 o'clock tonight. Oof. 25 at 7 o'clock. And you're right about tomorrow. Same for tomorrow. My app is showing 28. 28. More of the same. I think a few of those supporters that are here every day are going to feel it by then as Abbott's around the wicket. Hartley pushes that out on the onside where it makes his way up to Moa Bass and he'll come through for a single. Hartley moves on to five and it's 366 
for uh, seven. The second new ball taken at 3.27 for five, and Nakashu losing Bell and Mitchell when the score was 3.36, but they did put on 76 for the sixth wicket. I think actually it's been a bit more subdued in the hospitality tent to our right. Probably reflects the uh, hot weather. Doesn't feel quite as loud today, it doesn't, does no, it? No, unless it gets a bit louder after tea. Yeah, Abbott Bowles. It's uh, driven on the onside, not timed though by Bailey as it goes out towards mid wicket. Morgan's after it and pulls it in just in front of the rope. Actually, got closer to the rope than I thought. I think it just rolls over this outfield now, which really is parched. Just kept going. Yeah, yeah. I think Weatherly flicked it back. Oh, was it Weatherly? Yeah. And Organ flew, uh, threw it in. It's good teamwork, that. Yeah. It's good commitment, that, isn't it? I mean. Yep. Saving a couple of runs for the team. Yeah, well, I mean, that's one thing these teams do, isn't it, really? I mean, you know, they're not in a great position, Hampshire, but you just do what you do, don't you, really? You don't necessarily uh, do anything different just because you might be 220 runs behind in the game, as you might be a bit more sprightly in the field if you're 220 in front, but generally these guys just do what they do day in and day out. Good commitment as Abbott comes in again. He's trying to go for the huge waft and is missed as Bailey as the ball goes through to Ben Brown. It was a Daryl Mitchell style, <laughs> style waft down the ground or attempted waft. We saw some shots from him, didn't we, earlier on? Didn't we just? That, I mean, that, that, that type of shot, actually off Abbott, wasn't it, that went for six? It was, yeah. it was a very similar attempt from Bailey. But unlike Mitchell, whose shot came out of the middle of the bat, that didn't actually locate the wood. 68 for seven as Abbott comes in. He has two for 64 currently outside the off stump, and that's gone through again. It's good carry. Has been good carry on this pitch. It's been a good one. 368 for seven. Yes, it has. Yeah. Good bounce and good pace and carry. It's been a good pitch so far. 368 for seven. Um, got somebody who's listening to us just around the corner in Lancaster Road. Oh, right. Oh, we got our drinks arrived. Thank you. Oh, cheers. Thank Kevin. you. That's been a feature. Callum, yes, we've had some yesterday and now we've come again. They're, they're not alcoholic drinks in case anybody's cheers. jumping to conclusions. We were offered alcoholic yeah, drinks, weren't we? Quite fans of gin and tonic. Yeah, well, yeah, but being the professionals yeah, that we are. exactly. Collins got... There's the camera. So just to prove to everybody listening on the live picture feed, these are definitely... Vodka Cokes. Cokes. They're not vodkas in them, I can assure you. But they're very well received on a hot day like this. Yeah. Thank you, Colin. Colin hasn't got a drink. <laughs> He's imagining it behind that camera. <laughs> uh, we've got a change of something. Oh, he's going to wear a helmet, Ben Brown. So he's going to be standing up. We're going to have some spin. And uh, indeed we are with Felix Organ. So, yes, our listener around the corner is David. Uh, he's in Lancaster Road. Unfortunately, not able to enjoy the hospitality this year as recovering from a minor op. Uh, my son Jamie, who plays for the Southport and Birkdale second team, is one of the barmen today, hopefully keeping you cool and refreshed. That might have been him that actually served us the drink. Oh, we should have asked. I, was, I read that email out slightly too late. Give him a shout out as he'll be mortified, but that's what uh, dads do. If he's dark haired, that would be, have been him. <laughs> So don't get too excited, David. <laughs> it's Felix Organ balls to, to Hartley. And yeah, that's uh, defended into the offside. There's no run. Let's try and find out if it really was it. I mean, there's, I mean it's not like there's only the odd bomb. There's, there's a good few, <laughs> there's isn't there? There's a it? few knocking around, yeah. But it, but it could be. Hartley on five. 368 for seven. Oh, it's a sweep attempt to take the leading edge. Caught. Hartley's gone for five. They've given Felix Organ a new ball here. It's only eight overs old, effectively. Well, it is only eight overs old. And Hartley's uh, gone, looking to try and slog sweep, took a leading edge, it ballooned high up towards backward point, and uh, it's been caught. Ian Holland. Thank you, by Ian Holland. <laughs> Substitute fielder, sorry, it's my writing. <laughs> OK, by Ian Holland. And that is uh, the eighth wicket to fall. 368 for eight, lead of 200 and something. <laughs> it's got, it's got off the screen. That really is a vodka and coke, isn't it? After <laughs> 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 
36 times for it, except pitchers don't like. <laughs> I think uh, I, I think the lower order Lancashire batsmen or batters here are going to sort of enjoy themselves as much as anything. I think they know they're in a great position. There's so much time left in the game. They know with a new ball, there's a couple of other barmans uh, coming over. Should we ask who? Should we give? Um, hang on, Jamie. Should we? Should we? Ask, oh no, they're going round the back. I think if we just shout out Jamie to any bar person that walks past, <laughs> eventually we'll get it right. <laughs> Oh, Colin wants one. Take some of this. I've got to disappear for two minutes. So. Right, no worries. Watching a replay of this uh, dismissal. I think uh, Kevin's right. I agree with Kevin. It's, see some of the uh, Lancashire lower order here having a bit of a swing. Big shot attempted by Hartley. But uh, caught by the substitute field that. Ian Holland. So what's the lead? 226. Will Williams, the new batter. Oh, he's been bowled. He's gone back to Organ. And the ball cracks into the top of the off stump. It's four wickets for... Um, in fact, it might be five wickets now for Felix Organ. He's on a hat-trick as well. Yeah, it is a fifer. He came back into the attack with three wickets to his name. He's picked up two so far two and two balls so Felix Organ has five five for 63 latest this one Will Williams and he's on the hat trick and Lancashire are nine down At 368 for nine coming up for for Felix Organ, so he's, he's got yeah, he's got five for 63. The uh, Hampshire spinner who had Dawson been fit, I'm not quite sure how much actually, actually would have played a part certainly, but Dawson being the premier spinner may have shouldered the, the bulk of the work for Hampshire today, but he's enjoyed a really good day. It's Williams going back into the crease, oh, and to his horror the ball crashes in towards the the off stump to bring out Jack Bladwick to uh, to face this uh, hat trick ball 368 for nine need of 226 barely get the non strikers end and beaten on 21 Notable changing with the field, short leg and a slip. Here's Organ. Two work to Blatherwick. Steer down to, to third man. And when I come back, Blatherwick and, and run two. By the time that uh, Joe Weatherly catches up with the ball, he does come back for two. And that takes Lancashire up to 370 for nine. So now lead by 228. So a dot and then two wickets and then two runs so far in this over for Felix Organ. Five for 65. Down comes Blatherwick. Trying to hammer the ball away through mid wicket. The ball deflects back down the pitch to the bowler. Gathered by Felix Organ. He's got one ball left. We've got 10 overs until T, but uh, Lancashire are now nine down. Blatherwick off the back foot going deep into the crease and defending out through the offside for no run. Well, that was a, an eventful over. Two wickets in two balls for Felix Organ. He's picked up a five for five for 65, his figures. Dismissals of Hartley for five. Court looking to sweep the ball, took a leading edge. Tom Holland, the substitute fielder. And the next delivery, he bowled Will Williams. Looks like the queue's growing for the ice cream van. Oh, it is growing. It's about 15 deep, isn't it? Been waiting a while for your ice cream now. Here comes Kyle Abbott. Tom Bailey on strike. Abbott powering his way in. The back foot driven away through the offside by Bailey. 
jogs through for a single. Moves on to 22, not out. 371 for nine. And lead now moves on to 229. Hampshire on the cusp here potentially of going to wrap in this Lancashire innings up and not to be for Lancashire of a master very very commanding potentially who knows match winning first innings lead this is left by Blatherwick taken by Ben Brown and there is uh, no run well well done to Felix Organ mm. Um, I'm, not, I'm not certain that uh, two out of the four wickets that have fallen with the second new ball is necessarily down to the fact that the wicket is starting to break up. I think it's more to do with the fact that uh, Lancashire are looking to get on with it now and uh, give uh, Hampshire maybe even a little tricky time before T. I'm not sure. How many overs till T? Nine just yeah, over? Nine after this one. Yeah. yeah, it could be quite an awkward little spell, couldn't it, before T potentially? Blatherwick waits. It's forward defence. Drops it out towards Nick Gubbins at point and there's no run. Second time Felix Organ has taken five wickets in championship cricket. And to think that he may not have even got a bowl had Liam Dawson been on the pitch. I think he, I think he probably would have done, but yeah. he certainly wouldn't have been as problem. He's probably not bowling uh, 13 overs, is he? No. 13 overs, 5 for 65. 7 overs from Mason Crane for 33, and just a 5 possible for Dawson, who's not with us at the minute. So Blatherwick just shapes to try and work it to the leg side. Trickles away back down the pitch. He scoops it up and hands it to Gubbins, who will lob it up towards Fletcher Middleton, who's at uh, mid off. Habit walking back to his mark. Blatherwick, one, two. Habit, two for 65. Which is fast bowler. Pounding his way back in from the Harrod drive end. Following the train. Chugs along down the line. Into Blatherwick, forward he goes. It's worked out through the offside, but for no run. Can I quickly mention this? Um, uh, Dave Allen, Hampshire's uh, historian and uh, archivist and what have you, um, he did email earlier and I missed it, but uh, he, he's just got a few more figures on Felix Organ, just in case the Lancashire innings finishes shortly. Um, he says, I've updated this. Felix Organ has taken five wickets in 70 balls so far. He emailed me about two minutes ago, so it may be a couple more balls in 70. Uh, he says he went into this match with a first-class bowling strike rate of one wicket every 48, and that has now improved. Only one Hampshire spinner has a better strike rate for the county. As Abbott completes his uh, 20th over. It's driven by Blatherwick. Ball's picked up by Mason Crane on the deep point boundary. And uh, Blatherwick keeps the strike as well. He moves on to three. 372 for nine, lead of 230. Um, so, only one other spinner has a better strike rate. Oh, that is uh, South African C.B. Llewellyn more than 100 years ago, and he is... Only one better on 47. For Hampshire, Shane Warne took one every 52 balls, uh, whilst way back on uncovered pitches, Jack Newman and Charlie Knott ended on 50 each. Since the mid-50s, the best is Sean Udall on 66. So he's in very good company there at Felix Organ. Thank you, uh, Dave. Uh, again, just to give you a little bit more context uh, with Felix Organ and uh, championship bowling-wise over his career. I'll come to that in a moment. As He's going to bowl at the next over. Uh, going into this game, he had 34 wickets. So, you know, still relatively untried, I think is the best way to say it. Here he comes, bowls, and he goes for a slog sweep over mid-wicket. It's up in the air, Mason Crane is under it. And, oh, he's put it down! Much to the delight of the hospitality tent to our right. He had it, he had it a second time and almost had it a third. Yeah, I think he, he certainly had two two goals, didn't he, Mason Crane? But went some distance, but nice bright blue sky for him to yeah. try and pick the ball out from. Perhaps just catching in this game has not been the best. 371 for nine as Organ comes in the game. There were six wickets there for Felix Organ, which has, for the moment anyway, 
that opportunity is gone. Ron Graham, solidcricket at gmail.com, under the heading of Lancashire TV coverage. Have you had more emails on the Lancashire TV coverage in any game other than this? Probably, no. probably not. No, but we talked about it maybe a bit more as well. Good afternoon, gents, says Ron. Watching the game from a small Spanish village 25 miles west of Alicante. Oh, Down the wicket, and that's driven out on the uh, offside. Mohamed Abbas is at uh, deep mid-off, and it'll be single, 372 uh, for nine. Enjoying your TMS-style coverage. Oh, wow. Such a delight to see so many spectators around the boundary at Southport rather than banks of empty seats at the bigger grounds when weekday county games take place. That's one Graham. I won't even attempt to mention the village that he's in. Uh, but those, uh, 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 how's your Spanish? Um, poor. How's yours? Can, no, no good, we're not going to attempt it. But it's near Alicante, which will do. That's pushed out square on the offside, and there's no run. We don't want to spoil it. We can all say Alicante, we don't want to spoil it. <laughs> we'll just stop at Alicante. <laughs> we'll stay there. <laughs> Safe ground is that, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> 371 for nine, it's Blatherwick bar, uh, batting. Still a short leg in. There's Organ Bowles, he's gone for the slog sweep, it's up in the air, now this would be caught at slip by James Vincent, there is six wickets for Felix Organ, and that is the end of the Lancashire innings on 371, Blatherwick out for four, and the lead for Lancashire on the first innings is 232. It is well bowled Felix Organ, six for, for him, Lancashire at the end there, just having a bit of fun with the bat, and the Bailey and Hartley and Blatherwick having a a little bit of a thump to try and see what they can finish up on. It's a very, very fine performance so far by Lancashire uh, with the ball yesterday and with the bat yesterday and today, and they've got themselves into an extremely strong position. Holland takes the catch to complete the innings. Was oh, it Holland? Sorry. And that uh, is 371. Sorry, there's, there's different balls saying different, different things at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, 374 all out on the uh, on the, the scoreboard on the screen. 371 all out. On the ground, so it's somewhere in that vicinity. <laughs> yes, that's right. Let's just say it's a lot. It, it's it's, <laughs> it's, a, easy. It's, it's, a, it's a decent amount that uh, Lancashire in front on uh, on first innings. Um, and yeah, yeah, what yeah, happy yeah, to do yeah, coming out to yeah, bat yeah, second yeah, time yeah, round. Um, yeah. I don't think that will be T. I think I mean there's eight yeah, overs yeah, left until uh, yeah, 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 there's yeah. a couple. So there's six overs left until T. So there'd be I think a slightly awkward session potentially here for. Uh, Hampshire to uh, to face. Um, they, uh, they come out to start their second innings, so no, I don't think it will be T. That would just be the uh, innings break. So if that turns out to be the case, then uh, we will be back with you uh, in the next few minutes. 374, all out Lancashire, a lead of 232. Just to confirm, T being taken here at Southport and Burtdale Cricket Club. So T being taken.
Can also take the team to the outfield as quickly as possible, please.
And welcome back to uh, Southport and uh, Birkdale uh, Cricket Club, where the two Hampshire batters, the opening batters for the second innings, are out in the middle. The Lancashire team are out there as well, and uh, we are about to get underway. The uh, Hampshire uh, second innings, because uh, a little earlier, uh, Lancashire in their first innings were bowled out for 374, which means they have a very commanding lead of 232. Uh, over uh, Hampshire and uh, that is going to be a very difficult uh, task for Hampshire uh, here with well over two days left of this uh, fixture. Your commentary team uh, is uh, Cannon Flynn from the physical uh, disability team, England physical disability team and uh, we're on right now Scott Reid from BBC uh, Lancashire, BBC Manchester uh, I think I've got those right, uh, he's with us as well, he'll be on the later but uh, Callum, uh, Lancashire, what a position they're in. Yeah, excellent position and really well set back actually from Felix Organ. Brilliant spell from him. Um, just a tie Lancashire back from putting an even bigger score on actually. Um, especially the way Mitchell went at him at first. He, he stuck with his flight and got a bit of spin out there and took a, I think it was a six for in the end. Uh, he bowled really well and now Lancashire will be all looking to make some inroads. Here's right arm seamer Tom Bailey to get us underway then. Bowling to Weatherly, he works that down to fine leg, runs straight away. And that's off the pad. So that is four to the Hampshire total. We're on the BBC Sport website and app. We're also on Lancashire TV. And uh, bringing you all the action from a very, very sunny Southport. It's been hot yesterday, hot today, even hotter tomorrow. And we're not sure about the fourth day because we may not actually be here. Because Lancashire in a very, very good position. Yes, uh, just to run through that uh, scorecard for Lancashire as Bailey comes in. Bowls to the right-handed Joe Weatherly. He's forward, plays it out on the uh, offside. Uh, in that uh, 374, top scorer, uh, Phil Salt with 103, his first 100 for Lancashire. There was also an English of 68 from New Zealand international, Daryl Mitchell, 45 with George Bell, uh, a little further down the order, and then Tom Bailey not out at 23. And as Cameron mentioned there, Felix Organ, the off-spinner, weighing in with 66, 6 for 67, his best ever. Uh, championship figures beating his uh, previous best figures of 5 for 25. Here's Bailey bowls and uh, whether he leaves that one alone outside off stump and that's through to wicketkeeper uh, Phil Salt. So we still have uh, just under 40 overs uh, left in the day. Hampshire training by 228. And, uh, Lancashire on track even at this early stage for their first win of the season. Yeah, it's a very important win as well. Like you say, five draws in a row. Um, it's mainly the first innings they've been um, setting Lancashire back in the previous game, but in this match, obviously, they rolled Hampshire out pretty cheaply, so... Certainly have Bailey Bowles, Weatherly forward. They fin finally got that advantage in that first innings and really put um, put the foot into the game and really got control of it, especially with their first innings batting as well. With a, Is it 228 now, the lead? It, it exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's... Uh, on this pitch, which we know that the new ball will be a little tricky, but, uh, it's probably worth a few more. The scoreboard is stuck. I think we were told that over the tannoy, so we'll be relying on other means to give you the score. As Weatherly drives through the covers, just a push drive, it won't go all the way. He should pick up two. Weatherly will get off the mark. Fletcher Middleton is his partner at the other end. Six without loss then. Weatherly has two, four leg buys so far in this Hampshire uh, second innings. Very quiet hospitality tent away to our right. Certainly quieter than yesterday. It's probably a lot to do with the sun. I think a lot of people just staying inside yeah, the tent, sitting at the tables, keeping out the sun. Just having a few nibbles. Yeah, looks like after doing teas being served there. As that's worked away on the onside by Joe Weatherly. That should be four through square leg, full delivery there from Bailey. Hampshire, a productive first over. 
Yeah, lovely shot from over there. Just turned his hands on it nicely after the uh, cover drive through. Covers for two. So. Williams, is it going to be? Well, Williams, yeah. it has to be. Yeah, after yesterday. Oh, well, didn't he yesterday? Say in previous games, it's not often where he doesn't really go for many runs and just ties and end up. He's sim very similar to someone like Mohamed Abbasi. Moves it here and there, but he's just consistently on the length and doesn't give you much to hit. If he does, you've really got to take advantage of it. Well, uh, bearing in mind what you've just said there, his first innings figures 15 overs, 8 maidens, 3 for 14. Bears that out. And he's probably bowled the ball of the game so far when he got James Vince bowled. Uh, the last ball before lunch yesterday with a ball that absolutely hooped in late yeah. from outside off stump. I reckon it might be up there for ball of the season mm. later on in the, <laughs> later on in the summer. It was that good. So here's Fletcher Middleton to face Williams. Uh, Middleton gets one and just nips back on him a fraction. Hits him high up now. Middleton uh, hasn't had the best of games uh, here. He made naught in the first innings. Responsible for Liam Dawson going to hospital and getting some stitches and a face wound. And... Uh, it looked like he might have dropped another one in the uh, yeah, slips today. Three, three catches across yeah. the across the game today. That's right, yeah. Dropped yeah. Phil Salt on four, which was a sitter yesterday. So um, it, it goes like that. You have games like that. It's how you respond. And he has an opportunity to put things right here as Will Williams bowls. Uh, Middleton gets a length ball. He is a good player. This is his first season. He's a very young player. He's very correct. And he's been very steady. Hampshire looking for sort of an opening partnership or certainly uh, players that are going to take them through for a decade. When, when you have a player, you want somebody that's going to take you through a decade, don't you? When you yeah. try them out, you want to see them and you say, look, do you know what, that's going to be our opening batter for the next decade. They probably haven't had that for a little while. Joe Weathers had a few chances. Hasn't really nailed it. But he's uh, the opening batter for Hampshire at the moment. He's at the non-striker's end. As that's pushed away on the onside, so... He's off a pair, Fletcher Middleton, so that's a start. And like you say, he can just bat all day and as long as tomorrow as he possibly could. He's got nothing to worry about in terms of the scoreboard. There's plenty of runs still to get, so there's no pressure in terms of scoring fast. If he can just bat, 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 yep. I'm sure he'll be more than happy with that. So I'll just get through that new ball. Fletcher Middleton averaging just over 30 this season. As I say, he's been steady without a big score. His highest is only 65, but that shows a real steadiness in his first season. So Joe Weatherly. Ready to face the next delivery from Will Williams. Hampshire 11 without loss in their second innings. As Williams comes in and bowls. And Weatherly ooh, gets an inside edge onto the pad there. Training by 221 then. Hampshire having started training by 232. And, uh, yeah, no, no real pressure on the batters other than just bat. Yeah. Which, which sounds easy, but isn't always easy. Yeah, sometimes you can go into a bit of a shell, can't you? And you're, if you're too defensive, sometimes you can just get yourself out by being a bit too lazy, a bit too, a bit too composed, if anything. Yeah. Um, so they still have to stay switched on. That's always the pressure of the game, though, weighing on their shoulders as whether he's forward. Because basically, no matter how well you play, you're always going to be behind for an awful long time yet. Yeah. And that's the thing, isn't it? That's that always playing on your mind. You know, you could come off the field tonight and and scored a really good 60. And you think, gosh, I've played well. You look at the board, you think, well, we're still behind by 70 yeah, or 80. I've got to do that again. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's right. That's right. Yeah. That, that's what it's about. Such a psychological factor now in cricket with these longer formats. Yeah. Such a, a mental game as well as physical. It certainly is. It'll take a lot out of you in this sun, that's for sure, as that's wide of off stump and Weatherly and lets that one uh, go. That's the end of the second over. And... Uh, the total for Hampshire is uh, 11 without loss. We still have 38 overs to do uh, in the day. Uh, other figures actually around uh, Felix Organ's uh, figures, which uh, stood out. Six for 67. There was uh, a couple of wickets for Kyle Abbott, two for 66 off 20, and a wicket apiece for Liam Dawson, who, as I say, hasn't appeared since before lunch when he's gone to hospital. I'm, I've got no word to say that he's back. He may be, but I've got no word on that. And Mohamed Abbas, who's uh, finally reached 30 wickets, his, his, his wickets have started to come in a trickle uh, recently. Bailey bowls and Middleton pushes forward out on the onside. One for 98 from 26 overs, Mohamed Abbas, although 
I think it's fair to say Canemy bowled a lot better than those figures suggest. Yeah, it'll be <laughs> him and Bark will be very frustrating yeah. in the change room. I think they'll be happy now to be in the change room, feet up a little bit, whites off and just relaxing. Um, but they bowled really well, the scorecard. That's cricket for you, unfortunately, sometimes. You look at the scorecard and it looks like they've bowled very average, but it really doesn't tell the, the true story. That's for sure. Here's uh, Bailey again, right on over to Middleton. Nice nip back. Kept a little low on Salt, doesn't take it cleanly. And that looked like they nip back a bit. There was a few oohs and groans in the slip area. Yeah, he's took that to the left of him as well, which often indicates it swinging and nipping back, doesn't it, late on? Just watching that again on the picture feed. Kind of slip's got the hands on the head. So a bit of movement, as we'd expect, with the new ball. Certainly been a pitch to... Somebody's trying to somebody's trying to talk to me from the tent, but wasting time. Can't hear a thing. Uh, is somebody moving behind the bowler's arm? No, Bailey's ready. And he's bowling to uh, Joe Weatherly. Comes in and bowls and Weatherly forward. Prods that out square on the offside where Bo Hannon... Oh, sorry, Balderson comes in. Uh, David closes his email, silentcricket at gmail.com. He says, thank you for your commentary on the Lancashire and Hampshire match at Southport. Uh, you keep telling your listeners and watchers how good it is that Lancashire play a number of their matches at places like Southport and Blackpool. I'm not sure... Ooh. Oh, sorry. I'm not sure how members of other counties would feel. That's <laughs> uh, just me being silly, really. Uh, here, comes, here comes Bailey. There's a drive, but it's straight to a ball. So. Uh, I'm not sure how members of other counties would feel if nearly 30% of their so-called home games were played on grounds they couldn't get to. I can't imagine how the supporters of United and City would respond if their home games were played in different places. The number of Red Bull County matches has been slowly reduced over the years. Uh, now there are only seven. Uh, I would love to be able to watch more of Lancashire, but with two away from Old Trafford, my options are seriously reduced, says David. Uh, after 30 years as a member at Old Trafford, I'm even beginning to wonder if there's any much point being a member anymore, as I can't get to the grounds away from Old Trafford. Sounds a very disgruntled member. Uh, yeah. uh, well, over to you guys, because obviously this is not my patch. Yeah, I think I might pass on to Scott Reid to respond to that. <laughs> so, yeah, well, uh, listen, uh, it, it obviously is an issue at the end of the day. As uh, Bailey bowls, and Bailey pushes that up to uh, middle. Uh, yeah. Obviously, people that live around here would say this is ideal. If you live near Old Trafford, you say that's ideal. If you live near Blackpool, you say that's ideal. I mean, it's we're just lucky at Hampshire. We only have one ground to worry about. We don't have that issue, apart from if you include the Isle of Wight. But then down there, there's a bit of a day out. You see, on the ferry. Yeah. It's a bit of a day out, a bit of a holiday. Yeah, a trip. Whereas this is, I mean, I think I've said it many times already since I've been here, but I think Southport is a really lovely place, isn't it? It's beautiful. I think it's ideal. It's an ideal outground. I think. Like you say before, it's just got a good, good feel factor yes. about it, and and the place Southport as a, as a whole. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I have no reason to move up here. Whether he pushes him out on the offside, gets a quick single as it goes into the gap. But if somebody said to me, Kev, there's a job offer, and it's paying, you know, an awful lot more than I'm getting paid now, and I'm getting paid nothing now, so it would it would be more. Um, you know, and they said you'd have to live in Southport. I, I, you know, I would say great. I'd, I'd love to live here. From what I've seen of it, it has a lovely feel. Yeah, some gol good golf course as well. well yes. <laughs> I'm sure, I'd do that. Yeah, yeah, do you play golf? I try. Oh, do you? Yeah, what round? <laughs> have you played? I probably score more centuries on the golf course than I do in the cricket field. <laughs> <laughs> so have you played at Birkdale? No. Do them no, some hands? No, oh, near no. close by? No? no, no. Too dear for me then. Not quite good enough to <laughs> hack it around them courses either. <laughs> now the ball's being looked at already, and yeah. we've only had three overs. Vilas has been asking for a couple of overs now, actually. Maybe the ball's not moving enough for them. They want another one. Has it gone out of shape? You can see the Tom Pies having a chat. They got it back to us, unfortunately, on the picture feed. So, ah, oh, there we go. He's picking the seam. Can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> They're just testing the seam, aren't they? Has it gone soft? Seems gone soft too quickly. No, they said it's okay. So Will Williams will have to bowl with a ball that's only three overs old. It's unusual for any part of a ball to have uh, a softness issue after that few overs. 
There has been issues with the Duke Bowl recently, haven't they? Since yeah. was it last season, they had a really bad batch. Horrendous last year, yeah. Williams bowls playing it into the ground is Weatherly, and that's square on the offside. But it was worse last season than this, yeah. Yeah. It actually got ridiculous. It actually got boring. And then sides, if they hadn't picked up a wicket for about half a dozen overs, they just said, oh, it's that shape, it's soft, it's this and that. And then it just got... It was just happening too often. Yeah, they did it in the test matches quite a lot, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Sure and then... But it sounds like, you know, there was probably a legitimate case for it. it. It is happening this year. I don't know how often it's happening with Lancashire, but it's happened a few times in, Lanc in Hampshire matches, but nowhere near as, as often as last year. Williams comes in, bars, whether he leaves that one alone. Yeah, I think it happened a couple of times in the Surrey game, um, the first fixture. Um, well, that might just be because Surrey piled on the runs <laughs> at first, so... It's <laughs> usually that reason. <laughs> Uh, Tim Singleton has emailed silentcricket at gmail.com. We were talking about Filey earlier, and you showed us a picture which looked beautiful on the beach at, uh, in Yorkshire. It's near Whitby, apparently. Thank you, uh, Tim. That was a little early. I just missed that one out. Sorry about that. Uh, it looks like he says he's got a storm brewing. As, uh, again, that's outside of Stump and Weatherly. Leave that one alone. Let's just come back a bit. Uh, welcome to our new listeners here in a sunny Southport and Birkdale Cricket Club, which is actually in Birkdale. We've established, although uh, it feels like we're in Southport, where Hampshire in their second innings are 13 without loss. Four into the fourth over here, and Hampshire have got an absolute mountain to climb. Lancashire are in a very, very strong position. They are 219 runs ahead currently. Joe Weatherly is seven not out. Fletcher Middleton is one not out. There's Will Williams, the seamer. Bowls to Weatherly, who plays that into the ground. And, uh, there is no run on Kevin James. Callum Flynn. From the England physical disability uh, team is alongside me, and Lancashire just basically had two very, very good days cricket here, and are so on top. Yeah, they'll just be um, hopeful to get a few wickets earlier, but then there's no real panic. Plenty of the game left. We still have. Yeah over 36 overs left in the day, which is a very, very large chunk as Williams comes in, Weatherly pushes forward. And that goes out on the uh, offside. Uh, earlier in that uh, total of 374 all out of Lancashire's. Uh, first of all, Felix Organ, the off-spinner, finished with uh, career best figures of six for 67. There was a very entertaining uh, innings of 68 from Daryl Mitchell, but I guess the highlight of the innings was Phil Salt's 103 at the top of the innings. His first 100 for Lancashire. And uh, poor Fletcher Middleton, who's out there in the middle, dropped him on four yesterday. And it was not hard. So when everybody was clapping his hundred, as Weatherly cuts, doesn't time it as it goes out to point, poor Fletcher Middleton must have just been looking at the floor thinking, what have I done? Um, got a tweet here from old curmudgeon. We were talking about, uh, we had an email earlier about outgrounds and finding it difficult Lancashire fans and supporters and members to get to places like Southport and Blackpool or whatever. Uh, this one says uh, uh, why don't you just watch championship games on the live stream like everybody else and can't get to Old Trafford that's what the live stream's there for isn't it really? Yes it's nice to go to a game but if you can't then uh, the live picture feed and of course Lancashire TV I'm saying this because Collins in, is working the camera so he's listening to our commentary Lancashire TV do a great job uh, despite what people were saying yesterday, as that's pushed up towards mid on and there's no run, uh, we were egging people on to find a reason not to enjoy Lancashire TV. Uh, there weren't many, to be honest, but one or two found a few, and they were very small. Weren't they? Like wrong logo, wrong names on the screen, or not spelled properly, uh, wrong venue. <laughs> but apart from that, it was all alright. 13 without loss, he hasn't reacted, Connie. Here comes Bailey. Forward, oh, he's right to the pad. There's a big shout for an LBW. Not out, says uh, the umpire. In fact, even Dane Velas at wide mid off was on his knees appealing for an LBW. Oh, Dane Velas, he's probably got that as good a view as we have. Can I that say, LBW. The best view there, has he? <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Well, there's been a couple of iffy LBW decisions, I suppose, is uh, one way of putting it. Nick Gavins, it looked like, wasn't a great decision, and Daryl Mitchell didn't look particularly happy with his. 
comes Bailey, bowls and left alone outside of the off stump. So an awful lot for Hampshire to do here. And uh, good crowd. It's been it's at, well, it is at least two or three deep all the way around the ground. And it's been a lovely atmosphere. The sun helps, of course. But it's a club that uh, you really do feel lo looks after everybody. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, they can't do uh, enough for you. They've looked after us, that's for sure. As Bailey comes in and left alone by Milton. That's good carry from the length. But it's that spot. We've seen a spot there, haven't we, from that... Uh, what is it? The Harold... Sorry, the Harold Drive End. We've seen one or two just bounce a bit, haven't we, from short of a length. Yeah, it's... I think that's a much better length as well. I think the Lancashire ball has just been a little, slightly a bit short, not quite getting, allowing the, bat, the Hampshire batters just play it comfortable off the back foot. I think just try and get them on the front foot a little bit more, get them driving through the covers, especially with the with the um, substantial lead they have as well. They can they can afford to risk a few runs. They can, yeah. I saw uh, Bahannon get a nasty little blow on the hand yesterday from the end that Bailey's bowling. And that's a nice drive from Middleton, but he finally picks out Villas at wide. Uh, mid-off and then one or two of the uh, Lancashire batters I think it was Hart no it wasn't Hartley I don't think, uh, it might have been Bailey uh, one of the two down the lower order got one or two nasty smacks on the hand yeah Bailey didn't have the most enjoyable first six or ten balls that's right it was think. Bailey wasn't yeah. it yeah. <laughs> yeah. came in he was sort of hopping around as the ball just seemed to be bouncing off short of a length the uh, second new ball did do the trick a little bit for Hampshire Lancashire got to 3.27 for five when the second new ball was taken. So Milton gets, seems to get one that just cuts back in him a fraction. And then George Bell and uh, Daryl Mitchell, who uh, batted well, they put on a partnership of 76 for the sixth wicket. Bell fell LBW to Abbas. Daryl Mitchell went LBW to Abbott, so that was the one that was a little bit contentious. And then uh, Felix Organ weighed in with the new ball, because <laughs> poor old Liam Dawson is... Well, he may be back from hospital. He may still be there, but was having stitches in a face wound. Where uh, the ball off an edge of Dane Villas's bat flew to third slip, or between second and third slip, and uh, poor Fletcher Middleton, who hasn't been great in there, it has to be said, although he's driving nicely there through the covers. And that is four runs. has not much gone right for him in this game, but that's a lovely shot. At the end of over 19, though, without loss. Just palmed it, well, he sort of fingered it off to Dawson. And the ball was travelling at pace. It just went straight to Dawson's face. So he's off having stitches in, the, in his upper lip, which apparently has just been cut wide open, I'm told. Won't be nice having the stitches. Yeah. Uh, and it was interesting, as he walked off his, his shirt, he covered his face, didn't yeah. he? Uh, as if he didn't want anybody to see it. Straight and, away, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And, it, and uh, I was told that it didn't look very nice. I'd say, though, the lovely shot from from Middleton through the covers, but I think it was a much better length from Bailey. Just a lot more attacking. Like I say, there's plenty of time for Lancashire to take a few risks and then pull it back and be a bit more patient later on. Be a bit, be a bit more attacking earlier on now. Yeah. Well, Williams bowls, Weatherly pushing that out square on the offside. So Weatherly has seven, Middleton has five. I think even though Lancashire obviously put 374 on them, you look at the scoreboard and you go, oh, must be a decent wicket, but if you look at the way Salt played this morning, um, Bell and a few of the others, there was still plenty in the pitch for the bowlers, there was plenty of play misses, plenty of edges, um, so it, at the moment it's been a really good cricket wicket that Lancashire will be hoping to take advantage again. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Williams comes in right on over and bowls to Weatherly, who cuts, and it's half uh, gone through. Uh, Bohannon's uh, hands, he does take the pace off the shot, certainly saved four, but maybe on another occasion may just have uh, picked that up cleanly. But two runs to Weatherly, takes the Lancashire total on to 19. No, it's the Hampshire total on to uh, 19 without loss. Yes, we did, I mean, Phil Salt uh, batted brilliantly. He was 76 not out overnight, but uh, did play a miss a bit more this morning, didn't he? Yeah, certainly, and when he got into a nervous 90s, he... He, um, he, well, you could tell he was a little bit nervous, getting trying to get his first Lancashire ton, but he got there and he's put Lancashire into a great position now. He certainly has. Williams in to Weatherly. It's left alone. But, yeah, but, uh, he, he kind of, he, just in that one innings, really, was sort of answering. I know many people think, well, he can't play T20 cricket, and he plays a lot of white ball cricket, of course, and then just turn, you know, at the... Uh, 
click of a finger and play red ball, well, he actually proved people wrong because his innings certainly yesterday uh, haven't been put down early on. But after that, he looked looked class. Yeah. Well, I give him a lot of confidence as well. He's he's been at the IPL a while. He's he had a good few knocks in the IPL. Yeah. Again, it's outside the off stump, and there is uh, no run. He's uh, uh, not set the world alight in the T20s yet for Lancashire, but hopefully that gets him into the Phillips Phil Salt form that we that we seen last season for Lancashire. I've got another email here about the subject of outgrounds, uh, specifically even uh, Lancashire, because uh, we had one earlier that said that um, it's easier to get to Old Trafford than other grounds and that. This is Pauline Toop, suncricket at gmail.com. says, unlike the Lancashire member who objects to cricket on out for grounds, here's Williams Bowles, always playing inside edge there. It's just gone past leg stump. They will pick up a single. Much better length there from Williams, dragging there. Hampshire batters onto the front foot, not allowing him just to play off the back foot there. It's been nasty. He's not quite found his length straight away yet. He's been a bit shorter than his usual um, lengths that he bowls, so, but that was much more convincing for Williams. Sometimes when bowlers see the ball going through nicely to the keeper, it automatically yeah, makes a bowl yeah. a few inches shorter. Yeah, it? certainly. They, they enjoy seeing it go through. Yeah. Them, just makes you bowl a fraction too short, and sometimes just a matter of inches makes all the difference. Yeah. Uh, come back to Pauline's uh, email after this delivery from Williams. Bowling to Fletcher Middleton here. Middleton in behind that one. Makes that back to the bowl, and that'll be the end of the over. 22 without loss, trail by 210. Uh, I too am a Hampshire, uh, Lancashire member. I must remember to keep saying Lancashire. Uh, but find that both Blackpool and Southport are easier uh, to get to than Old Trafford. There must be many members who are happy with the outgrounds as they do not live locally to Manchester. As Lancashire cricket's responsibility to local clubs extends to both Cheshire and Cumbria, Manchester can be difficult to reach for many. Personally, I shall be pleased when the new ground at Stanisfield Lane will be ready. Where's that? Near Preston. Um, as it only is around four miles from my house. By the way, Southport and Birkdale Cricket Club is in Birkdale. Yes, we established that yesterday. Thank you, Paul. Uh, a ward of Southport. Uh, would you argue that Old Trafford was in Trafford, not Manchester, or accept that Trafford is part of Manchester as Birkdale is part of Southport? Do you know what? I don't live anywhere near here, and I don't care. <laughs> nah, I think our ground crickets are really good. Um, drags more people to the venues. It, it's taking cricket to different places, you know, you're getting kids involved a little bit more. I think it's a really good concept and yeah. I think it's one that should stay in, in the county game. Yeah. Listen, Old Trafford is a great venue, of course it is. Yeah. And um, I'm sure, you know, most of the matches will always be there. This Bailey comes in the game in bowls and whether he pushes forward, it's just filled it with his boot by Bailey. Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I must admit, I don't know my geography very well, but he's, uh, as a county Lancashire, that, is it quite a large county going by? I oh, know you've just looked at me and thought, <laughs> yeah, why am I asking I'm that? The same. Uh, um, I have no idea. Is it, on, is it on the large side, Scott, Lancashire, as a county? When you, I mean, obviously, Yorkshire as a whole is a massive county. Is Lancashire considered to be a, quite a big area? As, as a, you know, obviously there are some smaller counties around as that's pushed out into the covers. So, you know, maybe just Lancashire generally, because it's a largest county, is always going to be a little bit harder to get to certain places more than others. Whereas, <laughs> my geography is absolutely hopeless. Uh, what's the smallest county? Uh, Essex. Essex, I don't, oh, I don't know. Anyway, you know what? I, I think everybody knows what I'm trying to say. There will obviously be smaller counties in terms of square miles and numbers. Yeah. So for that reason, yeah, of course. Here's the Bailey. Oh, he's kept a little low, but well, he's got one off the lower part of the inside edge down along the leg side, and he picks up a single. Whether he's moved on to 10, Middleton has five. And in fact, whether he's gone to 11 now, 23 without loss, and Hampshire trail by 209. Spencer's emailed as well. I think we talked about this yesterday in one of the most famous matches here at Southport in 1982 when Warwickshire made 523 for four. Yes, we talked about that yesterday. Jeff Humpage and Elvin Kalitran. Big partnership there, yeah. That's outside uh, the Austin. 
So 23 without loss. Bailey is into his fourth over, and for 14. So over 33 overs to bowl uh, in the, the day. I'm sure at 23 uh, without loss. Are, uh, in slightly better shape than they were in the first innings already. It's a very empty tent to our right, the hospitality tent, certainly in the front. Uh, Farouk Engineer is here, yeah. uh, the old Lancashire and uh, Indian wicketkeeper, as it's pushed out on the uh, offside. It's at the end of the over with uh, 23 without loss, Hampshire. I am, yes, I've got to go off for a couple of minutes. Uh, Callum Flynn uh, will be joined by Scott Reid. Oh, Scott Reid's coming on now anyway. Cheers, Kev. Pretty steady start by uh, by Hampshire, 23. Without loss, seven overs gone. Kind of calm, steady approach that Hampshire were hoping for with the bat second time round. Because you're still on the attack, very much so. They've got themselves four slips in, in place for Will Williams. He's about to start his fourth over. 371 for nine. Beat Weatherly. And through to, uh, to Phil Salt. And there is, uh, there is no run. 23 without loss. It's a 209. Runs behind Hampshire. It's an awful lot of work to do today with the bat, but to try and get through this new ball, it would appear to be the kind of the the biggest challenge that yeah the first task they've got to get over the first hurdle they have. Here comes Williams again to uh, Weatherly that's left and, uh, through to the keeper no run just going back to the field there I think Lancashire are in the position where they can afford to have them extra catches in where Hampshire unfortunately today probably only had three catches in and maximum every every time, and but there was getting a lot of nicks, a lot of over the over the slip. So 371 for um, 374 all out Lancashire in their um, first innings. So a sizable first innings lead for Lancashire. Hampshire just started their second innings with Weatherly on 11 and Middleton on five. So 23 without loss. Hampshire second time round trail by 209 runs. The highlight of that Lancashire first innings. It was a century for Phil Salt, his first in the county championship for Lancashire, making 103 and a 68 for Daryl Mitchell. There were six wickets for the spinner, Felix Organ, six for 67. So Lancashire in a commanding position, 374 all out, sizable first innings lead. And in reply, Hampshire now 23 with that loss, still trail by 209. As that's uh, nudged away towards uh, mid wicket for a single. Scott ticks on to 24 without loss. Brings uh, Fletcher Middleton back on strike. Keith Barker's got a couple of ice creams. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I mean, it's too fair to Keith Barker. There's nobody deserves ice creams more than Keith Barker. I reckon the other one's from Mohammed Abbas. I think he can <laughs> try and cheer him both <laughs> up. <laughs> that was a well and truly earned ice cream for Keith Barker. <laughs> so Williams balls to Middleton that's left and through to the keeper and there's no run and you, you know what that's proven as well from Keith Barker that's made a complete myth of what <laughs> Kevin James said earlier in the day when he said I can't get you an ice cream because by the time I walk from the ice cream van back to the commentary box it had have melted <laughs> but we've just said Keith Barker he's just chilled, he's chilled out and he's walking around the outfield with a, a couple of ice creams Blowed his theory out the water, then, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 24 without loss. Williams to uh, Middleton, who plays off the front foot, right forward in defence, and there's no run. It's the end of the over, just the one run off it. Eight overs gone. A pretty solid start by uh, by Hampshire, second time round with the with the bat. They're well, setting back a bit the ice creams, not the cheapest. Oh, what they'd be pricey. Yeah, went over before. Oh. Two ice creams, nine pound. What? Yeah. 
what for a, a thing in the flick? Yeah, t well, well, yeah, there was one small tub and one kind of Knickerbocker glory kind of tub. Nine pound. Well, you're in Burtdale, you see. Well, yeah, yeah. Plenty of money around here. That's cheap for, Bert for Burtdale locals, isn't it? Nine quid for two ice cream. Mm -hmm. It's Bailey in and balls. Edged and gone. Weatherly is caught by Tom Hartley. He didn't go at it too hard, Weatherly, but that little snick off the edge of the bat taken by Hartley. Bailey picks up the first wicket. Weatherly goes for 12. It's 24 for one. Yeah, I'll wait for the replay, but it doesn't look like he's done much wrong there. He looks like he's played quite compact. He's not exactly been loose outside the off stump there. Yeah, just a decent ball, just standard Tom Bailey shaping away. Just found the outside edge. Was it Tom Hartley third slip? It was, yeah. Yeah, good catch low down to his left. It was a much better length from Tom Bailey, like I say. I think the Lancashire players should have been slightly short of a length. Um, but they can afford to get driven through the corners and down the ground for a long time. For now. So they can risk just keep putting the ball up there, getting it in them corridors and get the Hampshire players driving forward. Well, in contrast to what we've seen in this match, the chances that Hampshire were able to create, quite a few were put down. Like I should have taken so far through the course of the match, pretty much every chance that they've, they've managed to conjure up. He's a good uh, slip fielder, isn't he, Tom Hartley? Yeah, he's got really long limbs, and he? so yes. he's really helps being in that slip card. But the, I remember at some, when we played Somerset at home, when Lancashire was playing against Somerset at home, was it five or six drop catches in a day? Yeah, the yeah, yeah, and the slips as well, wasn't it? Where there's a bit of a change in the slip card as well. Obviously, Wells is normally in there. Jennings would be in there if he was playing. Yeah. Who have we got now? We've got Mitchell, haven't we, at first slip? Rob Jones is at second slip. Tom Hartley's at third slip. And that's George Bell. He's George Bell, yeah. fourth slip or a bat's more a gully. Well, it's now fourth slip, definitely. He's just uh, moved a few, few, two or three paces to his right hand side. So four slips in place. Bailey to Gubbins. And that's uh, left. Through to, uh, to Phil Salt. So it's nearest the screen there is, is Bell. That's a fourth slip, just scratching around, making sure he's got his mark there on the turf as to where he's supposed to stand. Hartley Jones and Mitchell towards the keeper, four slip fielders. 24 for one, trail by 208. Gubbins, I'll be hoping that second time round's a better day for him, a better not for him having received a tough LBW decision on the first day. Not for a shot here to Bailey. It's angled across him and through to the keeper. There is uh, no run. 24 for one. It's uh, mid off and a mid on. Balderson's at mid wicket. By the wicket. Fine leg. It's nudged away into the onside by Gubbin, straight to. Uh, George Balderson. And uh, there's no run. The two excellent new ball bowlers, aren't they? Williams and, and Tom Bailey. The Tom Bailey's been very consistent for Lancashire for three or four years on the bounce now. He's an excellent new ball bowler. He always takes wickets with a new ball for, for Lancashire. And Williams has been absolutely superb since, since he signed in midsummer last year. He's Bailey. Harrod drive-in balls to, to Gubbins. Pushing off the front foot and darting through for a quick single for Nick Gubbins. It's his first run. 25 for one. Well, this season, the uh, Bailey-Williams combination. With a sprinkling of quite a bit of Jimmy Anderson as well. And, uh, Saqib Mahmood for a couple of games. Luke Wood for... A game. Bailey, 19 wickets. It's an average of 21 this season. Williams, 18 wickets. An average of 20. Middleton pushes this next delivery. The ball just 
Snakes past the edge of the bat and through to Salt. It's the end of the over. It's another good one, isn't it, from Tom Bailey. Five overs, one for 15. Hampshire 25 for one. That is Adam's stats. It's the economy as well. None of them over three and over. They're both well below three and over. So they build pressure, they build dot balls, and, and that's why they get the rewards that they do. Just one of the most consistent bowlers in the in the county championship. Sets the kind of the standard really for for Lancashire for most of the season. He's a, a leader of the of the attack. And Williams balls again forward because Gubbins back down the pitch to uh, to Will Williams and there's no run 25 for one we're starting the 10th over of the Hampshire second innings yeah, slip fielders are waiting to, to pounce for a, a potential chance that Williams can conjure up bold an absolute beauty yesterday to James Vince Came back into my hole to beat the inside edge. It's flicked away off the pads by Gubbins. Nice, sh nice shot. It's Blatherwick that's chasing after the ball. It's going to beat Jack Blatherwick. And it runs in towards the spectators for, for four. Just turned his hands on it, and just lovely shot. Timed it to perfection. Run away for four across the very quick outfield and very dry looking outfield. It's just Desperate for some, <laughs> desperate for a little hose down. Well, the, I was I was here the um, night before the game started. I got to the ground about seven seven o'clock at night, and uh, it did have that. It absolutely hammered it down. It was a really heavy thunderstorm. It's pushed away to the offside by Gubbins for no run. But could probably picked it with a few weeks of it, couldn't it? Really? Yeah. To make any impact. The groundsman will be praying for it. Yeah. The water just bounced and skidded off the surface. It's so hard. There was a suggestion we might get a bit of thunderstorms, a bit of rain later on, but I'm not sure if that's all changed now. It looks a long way off it at does. least, doesn't it? Barely a cloud above us. There's the prospect of maybe thunderstorm, but looks pretty good that, doesn't it? <laughs> Check a wall-to-wall -wall blue sky. It's Gubbins presses forward as Williams bowls to him. Angled across him through to Phil Salt, and there's no run. Let's check the, uh, the app again and see if anything has changed. But there's whispers of thunder and storms brewing and bubbling at, um, at some point through uh, the course of, uh, of today or maybe into the, into the evening. Oh, well, it looks like it's all cleared, that, yeah. Yeah. No sign of it. A dry hot night. It's flashed away through the onside by Gubbins. Picked up on the mid wicket boundary by Tom Bailey. Gubbins moves to six and the score moves on to 30 for one. Tomorrow, if you're, if you're watching or the, the pictures on Lanks TV or listening to us via the BBC Sport website and app or Five Sports Extra, and you're thinking of a trip to Southport tomorrow, and looking at temperatures of 27 and 28 degrees tomorrow. So uh, come prepared. Yeah, pat your sun cream in your hands. Yeah, too right. Final ball for Williams. Balls to uh, to Middleton, and that's left. Taken by Salt. So that's 10 overs gone of the Hampshire second innings. Live from Southport and Burtdale Cricket Club. Day two of this LV County Championship fixture. Lancashire like in the driving seat. Put themselves into a, a really strong position, having bowled Hampshire out for 142 on the first day. And then going way past that total, 374. Lancashire like made in reply with Phil Salt first championship century for Lancashire for him 103 the top score in the match and 68 for Darrell Mitchell Hampshire one down and still 200 behind 
Gubbins gets a single here. Pick up and throw towards the keeper's end, actually. Gubbins and uh, Middleton crossing for a sharp one. It's Dane Villas who's uh, scooping the ball up and throwing towards the stumps at the keeper's end. Got through for one. Middleton back on strike. Villas hits. It could have been a, a close call there. 31 for one. And it's Bailey from the Harrod Drive end of the ground. And the ball's to, to Middleton. It's pushed out into the offside, and there's no run. He'll be hoping for a contribution. Well, uh, with Middleton, he made north in the first innings and dropped salt in the first over of the Lancashire first innings. He went on to get a century, so he's kind of hoping to make amends. Fletcher Middleton today certainly really looks very compact in defense he looks uh like kevin said before it looks like he's got a very solid technique looks really well um composed as well Here comes bailey to middleton that's left Something to the front foot bring the back up and across and have the ball to go through to salt that's uh, no run Notice they took George Bell out of the slip card and now and just put him in like a catching cover point. Just quite close on the drive. Not too straight, pretty pretty square still for a cover. I'm just creeping in from that position as Bailey comes in and bowls. Left again by Middleton. Through to Salt. Run 31 for one. Crowd stayed pretty solid all day. It, not been seen supporters kind of retreating away from the ground for cover and for shade. Everyone's sat there and soaked it up. Maybe they're all, maybe they're all stuck to their plastic chairs. <laughs> Prize themselves off at some point later in the day. 1600 inside the ground yesterday something similar again today well that's pushed off the front foot by Middleton in the direction of them of George Bell that kind of close cover position They'll come back and run three actually by the time that Dame Velas has caught up with the ball Middleton moves on to eight score moves on to 34 for one nice looking shot but Lancashire and Tom Bailey won't mind that just bounce few yards in front of George Bell there on that catching cover point fielding position. Um, but like you say, Lancashire have got the, got the runs on the board to risk them kind of shots and keep putting it in them areas to, to let the Hampshire players drive. Final ball for Bailey. This will be a six over opening spell. One for 19. Cobbins just leans onto that front foot and waits for Bailey. In the Shuffle back into the crease as he allows it to go through to the keeper to complete the over the 11th of the Hampshire second innings 34 for one. So some six overs from Bailey, and five from Williams. It's going to be a, a sixth from Williams before what it looks like a ball and change is not too far away. Jeff Blatter the ball. Looks into replace Tom Bailey elsewhere in Division one of the of the county championship Essex declaring on 462 for nine in their first innings and they've reduced Somerset to 154 for seven in reply Simon Harmer has picked up three wickets Somerset still 308 runs behind is Williams to Middleton who plays forward in defence and there's no run. So 154 for seven Somerset still trailed by 308 in uh, Chelmsford. Kent are batting into their second innings, they're 60 for one. Having bowled Surrey out for 145 in Canterbury. So Kent lead Surrey by 216 runs 
Every game is pretty convincing one way, isn't it? Williams to Middleton, left again, no run. And to complete that, <laughs> the final game elsewhere in Division 1 is another game that's been dominated by one team because Warwickshire making 571 for nine and then declared. And they've got Nottinghamshire at 74 for five in reply. Wicket shared out there amongst a pretty strong looking bowling attack. Hassan Ali with two and then one each for Rushworth, Hannon Dolby and Ed Barnard. Comes to Middleton off the back foot. Defends and there's no run. Yeah, so the, the, the Division 1 games are all pretty heavily weighted in the favour of one team. Four games in Division Two, one of which I don't know what's happened for, for the Gloucestershire boys this season, but they, they can't seem to get on. It's rained again in, in Bristol. Torrid season with that. Middleton leaves his next ball from Williams through to Salt, and there's no run. So Gloucestershire 316 for eight, but they're off for rain, taking on Leicestershire. In Chesterfield this week, Derbyshire are up against Yorkshire. Derbyshire in their second innings, 175 for four. And still trail Yorkshire by 67 runs. And Sussex against Worcestershire. Sussex, 348 all out, and Worcestershire, 270 for three. Again, that's left by Middleton. Taken by Salt, and there is no run. And Durham against Glamorgan, with Glamorgan making 390. And Durham are replying, 314 for five. Trail by 75 runs. The David Benningham, 92, not out. Ollie Robinson making 102, he's had a fabulous season for Durham. He started really, was it the first year though, isn't it? I think it is, yeah, we're from Kent. It's left by Middleton again, that may have just come back in. Or at least Williams and Salt and the slips give us that impression that it did. They're just starting to test um, Middleton's patience outside the off stump now. That um, Bailey at the other end was just leaving four or five balls outside into the corridor in the last over, and Williams has just done the same, really testing how much patience he's got out there. Well, well, just hanging the ball as the outside off stump consistently doing so as well it's great skill isn't it from Will Williams yeah he's well in balls you could probably throw a penny down here did it more often than not on a wicket his he's, he's length is immaculate this is our first bowling change of this Hampshire second innings it's uh, Jack Blatherwick placing that opening spell from Tom Bailey into the attack for the first time. Bailey, six overs, one for 19. Maybe a little extra pace on here from, from Blatherwick. Of course, Blatherwick got Gubbins in the first innings. LBW. So, 198 behind Hampshire. And three slips. Backward point. Mid off, mid on, mid wicket. Blatherwick's into Gubbins. It's onto his toes and just snaps the ball away to the, to the leg side. And just that sense of a bit of extra pace on the ball there by Jack Blatherwick. Yeah, he's not played many games Lancashire, has he, since he joined the club. But every time I've seen him play, I really like what I see. I think he's got a really strong action. Quite a tall, strapping lad. Um, and like you say, he's got that extra yard of pace where you could just surprise a few, and, and I think you need that when you've got Williams and Bailey up top. You need someone with that extra pace just to do that extra role of digging it in and testing the batsman out. Blatherwick to Gubbins. Brings Gubbins onto the front foot. Just angled across him and into the gloves of Salt. No run. Good start by Blatherwick. I mean, to follow the opening spell of, of Bailey can't be particularly easy. 
No. Not when he keeps it so tight. Same with the, same with Williams. We've got some fine bowlers on display across the both teams. Hampshire's trio of seam bowlers as good as anybody in the in the country. It's worked off the back foot by by Gubbins. Pick up and throw towards the bowler's end <laughs> by Bailey. Got through for, for one run. Gubbins moves on to eight. Score ticks along to 35 for one. It's Middleton back on strike. Just hear the uh, corporate tent. Just gets a little louder, doesn't it, after tea? Just starts to get a little more chirpy. <laughs> Oh, that would be pretty tame so far. He'd been whispering that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Farouk Engineers in there. You can't misbehave when Farouk's in there. Can you? It's worked to backward square leg by Middleton. Just rolling the wrist and steering it away off the pads. Gets through for a single, moves on to nine, 36 for one. Sorts of dignitaries outside the. Uh, Hospitality tent. I spoke to someone yesterday, I actually knew this um, guy, not seen him for quite a few years, saw him before the game, I didn't realise he was here. And I spoke to him after the game. He was uh, a little worse for wear after the game, but he was, he was fine, he was okay. <laughs> Blatherwick's in, it's. Oh, Blatherwick's gone down, he's follow through. What's he felt here that was, was short and wide and it was left but by the way has picked himself up but he's kind of limping a little bit here has he, just, has he landed awkwardly do you think or just maybe pulled something he looks like he's just twisted his ankle I feel right. hopefully he can walk it off a like he should yeah. got a lot of bowling to do he's still and especially with the heat they want to not bowl too many bowlers with long spells Maybe just landed slightly awkwardly, maybe just lost balance a little bit. Let's see if we can try and run it off. Fingers crossed he can. Not with the best luck, actually, across the last couple of years with, with injury, but Jack Blatherwick. Around the wicket, off the back foot by Gubbins and punched him mid on. And there is uh, no runs. That's the end of the over. The first one, Jack Blatherwick, just a couple of runs off it. 36 for one after 13. We had a chance this guy last, last night. I said, you enjoyed a good day. Said, yeah, brilliant day. I only saw three wickets, but I had a really good day. <laughs> so fair enough. He didn't still think there was three down, did he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a very good day if he, yeah. if he did. <laughs> what's, what's the score? <laughs> and what is in three? Kept in conversation with Jeff Lovett there. A, a trusty arm over the shoulder and a Pat on the shoulder from Dame Bellas. Crack on, lad, you'll be all right. <laughs> like you say, he has been pretty injury prone, hasn't he, unfortunately, for Jack Blatherwick. Let's hope he... It's nothing too sinister. Here's Williams, starts a fresh over. It's hit down the ground. Good stop by Williams off his own bowling. Low down to his right-hand side. 36 for one. Side of the 14th over. Williams often does bowl the longer spells, doesn't he? He often he gets through eight or nine okay. in his first set. And then be interested to see whether they go to spin early on over the game. Mitchell, a few. Yeah, well, Tom Hartley wasn't really required in the first innings. Williams in balls to Middleton that beats him. Through to, uh, to Salt. There's no run. First, the Hampshire first innings. Bailey 14 overs, 3 for 29. Williams 15 overs, 3 for 14. Balderson 7 overs for 29. Blatherwick 12 overs, 2 for 25. Mitchell 7 overs for 30. Tom Hartley required for just 5 overs, but picked up 2 wickets, 2 for 10. Totally forgot about Balderson as well. Yeah, I've got Balderson who can come on and just move it around a little bit. Here comes Williams bowls left by Middleton and uh, 
through to the keeper with no rep. They've certainly gone to that fifth stump line. Um, to Middleton here now, just to test out his patience. He's 9 off 33, but he has looked really, really well composed and compact in defence. And especially after the struggles that he's had in the field, it's hopefully he can put that to the back of his mind and just bat for Hampshire. He's faced 33 deliveries for his nine runs so far. As well, he gives balls. And it doesn't offer a shot, just rocks onto the front foot, brings the bat away. The ball perhaps does just move back in a little as it goes past the stumps. Middleton will say it's excellent judgment, like as she will say, that wasn't far away. It's probably a little bit of both in there, isn't there, really? He's probing here is Will Williams, seventh over on the spin. Callum says he certainly has a history of bowling relatively long spells. Into Middleton, who plays right forward and defends again. That's up to Jack Blatherwick, who's at mid on. And there's no S run. Still not moving very freely, Jack Blatherwick. Still looks like he's um, in a lot of um, pain and discomfort there. He does, doesn't he? Yeah, just land landing awkwardly, it would think, would seem on his follow through at the end of the previous over. and a bit of an issue with the with his ankle. Let's see if he's all right to continue because Williams is in and, and bowling to complete the over. Through to the keeper it goes. Unfortunately for Jack Blatherwick. Actually, no. It's I think that might it might just be coming across for a little bit of a drink. So fingers crossed. There's a little concern there that Blatherwick wasn't uh, going to send down a second over, but I'm going to have a, a drinks break here with uh, Hampshire in their second innings on 36 for one. It's a trail by 196. Callum Flynn's going to have a break. Kevin James is back alongside me. Middleton's on nine. Cubbins is on eight. 14 overs gone. 26 left to go in the day's play tonight. That's well worth it, Kevin. But should be hoping that uh, well, these two can at least bat the bulk, if not the majority of the 26 overs tonight. Evening team. Yeah, I mean, they've got to show some fight, haven't they, really? And, uh, even if they show some, it's it's not going to be enough. And they've got to show an awful lot, and there's an awful lot of time left in the game. So, I mean, Lakers have got so far on top of on top of this. You, you really would put them down as, as winners. It's just by how much. And uh, they were very disappointed with the day's play yesterday, and really that set Lancashire up today. And, they have certainly moved on, haven't they, and made the most of it. And that lead at the end of the first innings of 232 is a lot. No doubt about it. This pitch is still doing a little bit. Still some plays and misses against the seamers. So, Hampshire by no means anywhere near out of the woods, but they just, wish they, they just need to see some fight from them. They didn't bat very well. The head coach, A.D. Bill, admitted that and said they were not great, and that's probably code for pretty much rubbish, and they were. But there was some good bowling, no doubt about it. But even so, it's a, it's a better effort already, but still very, very early days. Uh, when the last time I was on, we were talking, weren't we, the bad outgrounds yep. and uh, one or two of the Lancashire members saying that, uh, you know, it's difficult to get to them. And, and I think we all appreciate that. We know that. And uh, I, I must admit, I, I didn't know uh, the size of Lancashire in terms of square miles compared to some other counties. Mm -hmm. and, and why would we? Why would we go around with that sort of information? <laughs> Uh, at the back of our uh, in our heads but Dave Allen Hampshire's uh, honorary archivist uh, historian uh, did tweet a little earlier at Sony Sport uh, Lancashire is apparently 1880 square miles and it's slightly bigger than Hampshire at 1622 as regards smaller counties Leicestershire's 800 Middlesex 285 I'll give you an idea then as Blatherwick's in Cubbins pushes that up to yeah. or back to the bowler. It's a, it is, it's a big county. If you if you live north of Lancashire, then you are a long way from from Manchester. You're a long mm. way from Emirates Old Trafford, and I think 
you know, moving the game around a little bit, playing in Blackpool or in Southport to the west of the county. They go right north to to, to Seba. You know, if you, if you play cricket at Seba and you live in Lancaster and Morecambe, that's on your doorstep. Yeah. Gavins gets wrapped on the pad. They're, gonna, they're plan, planning to build this second ground um, in Preston. So that's right in the centre of the county. So I, 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 actually, I don't really see a, 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 a bad thing about it. I appreciate you want to play most games at your main venue, your main headquarters, obviously. But the idea of taking, certainly at this stage of the season, county championship matches to one or two outgrounds in different parts of the county and the, and the region, I actually don't honestly see a bad thing about that at all. Blatherwick round the wicket to Gubbins down the leg side. Worked down to squarish fine leg. That will be a single. I think they came off the bat. Ball didn't seem to travel very quickly. No, I, gr I agree. It's if you've got the grounds, how much you don't really have the grounds? That's the thing, yeah. You've got to have the grounds, have, yeah. you've got to have good pitches and the facilities to be able to host it. And not every club can do that, and not every county has that luxury of doing that. But Lancashire have got some fantastic outgrounds that can play host to really good cricket. Yep. Why wouldn't you at least try and get some games, four-day cricket, and Lancashire are taking T20 cricket to Blackpool this season, try and get some, some games around yep. the county? You're not going to please everybody all the time. That's basically yeah, the message. Blathwick bowls and it's turned away square on the leg side by Fletcher Middleton. We talked earlier as well about uh, the great uh, Farouk engineer, the former Lancashire keeper and Indian keeper. He was in the corporate hospitality tent just to our right. I think he's still there, actually. I'm just looking around. I think I can see him still sitting uh, inside uh, the tent. Peter Ingram who's emailed silentcricket at gmail.com, says, great commentary as always, thank you. He says he lived in Southport for a number of years and he's now close to Neville Road in Bristol. That's the ground that Gloucestershire play out, of course. Blatherwick comes in and bowls outside of the Ostump. Good carry again from just short of a length. And frequently, um, or oh, he frequented the Southport and uh, Birkdale Club here, especially for the old Sunday League. Remember seeing Farouk Engineer belligerently smacking sixes onto the railway line. And John Arlett walking round from the hospitality tent with a large glass of probably claret. That sounds like him or the late and great John Arlett. Uh, watched one of the sixes, placed his glass on the ground. This was John Arlett. Clapped twice, picked up the glass and continued to the commentary hut. I'd say the stories I've heard about John Arlett, that would be about right. Outside of the off stump again. Hope the next two days are as good for Lancashire as the first two and keep up the great work, says Peter. Angela Wodehouse, Angela, afternoon to you. Solentcricket at gmail.com. I've been listening with interest to the conversations about outgrounds. End of the over, by the way, that one. 37 for one, Hampshire in their second innings, trail by 195. Both Middleton and Gubbins on nine apiece, the one batter out, Joe Weatherly for 12. As a Hampshire member who lives on the Isle of Wight and travels by public transport, it is a major undertaking every time I go to a home game at the Aegeus Bowl. I go to, um, so I get the bus, ferry, train times two and bus in each direction. Or if I go a different way, two buses, ferry, two buses, taking approximately three hours each way. So that's, as an outground, that's, uh, <laughs> that's some travelling yeah. and yeah. Uh, being put out of your uh, out of way a little bit. I'm therefore glad of any matches that are on the Isle of Wight. But Sadly, I don't believe that they're... Sorry, Scott. No, sorry, I bet, yeah. It makes perfect sense that you That's would be pleased with And there's quite a few, um, you know, Hampshire supporters on the Isle of Wight, as the 50-over game proved against Northamptonshire last year, where the ground was absolutely rammed. Uh, here's uh, Balderson with his right arm medium pace. It's Balster Gubbins, and that's pushed up towards mid-on. Um, so, from a selfish point of view, says Angela, uh, any games that can be played on the Isle of Wight are a plus for me. I also believe it brings the cricket to a different audience, many of whom do not attend the Hampshire Games, otherwise because of the difficulties in travelling there. Hopefully see you at New Close, that's the ground on the Isle of Wight, in August for Hampshire, and if you're over for the Vipers in July, um, yeah, there's a game there. I don't think I'm in the one in July because Hampshire are in Taunton for a four-day game, but uh, I'm sure there'll be a commentary team there that will be every bit as entertaining and probably more so mm. for that game. Slightly more you know, consistent and... Consistent, yeah. on the ball, yeah. knowledgeable. Definitely without a question. 37 for one. <laughs> it's 
against borders and turns. It's around the wicket again to Gubbins. Just pitches and just straightens a fraction, but Gubbins uh, leaves that uh, alone. He's a little bit expensive, wasn't he, that, at, at Bolton in, in the uh, Hampshire first innings. He's a, a short spell. I mean, the damage was done by the other three, wasn't it? Bailey and uh, Williams and Blatherwick. Yeah, seven we overs, none for 29. I think his first four went for 24, yeah, I think. So, yeah. At a time when none of the Lancashire seamers were going for hardly any. Here he is again, though. That's full. That's the off stamp, and it's edged over the slips. Wide delivery. Cummins went after it, but it went very, very quickly. Total will move on to 41 for 1. Gubbins on to 13. Uh, Mike Vokes, Sonic Cricket at gmail.com. He says, What's the latest on Hampshire playing at the Winchester College? John Arlott probably had a field day at Southport describing the trains passing. He, says. he loved Portsmouth as well. Apparently, John Arlott did. Uh, I do not know what's going on with Winchester College. Uh, one or two people have asked that over the last few months. That's uh, left alone. Let's come back a fraction. Phil Salt on the floor. <laughs> Can't believe something. <laughs> He's had a good day. Had a good day yesterday. Had a good day today yeah. with his 100. Yeah. Alderson. In again. From the Grove and the Road end. Bells and Gubbins. Again, leaves that one alone. Doesn't take that cleanly, Phil Salt. That's the end of the over. And we still have 24 overs to do here on day two. Hampshire trailing by 191. Still a good crowd. Mm -hmm. Still packed around this. It's not a small ground, but obviously not, uh, not county size. It's good size for cricket. And uh, just the right amount of crowd for the, for the ground. Plenty in hats, which is good to see, because you do worry on a day like this. I mean, there are one or two people that have been sitting out all day without a hat. You do worry about them a little bit. Majority of people have come prepared. Yep, they have. Come prepared for the, uh, the hot day at the cricket. It's a good day if you're a Lancashire fan. It's worked off the back foot by Middleton. Just allows it to run off the face of the bat, guide it down towards third man. Is uh, <laughs> someone enjoying the sunshine, topping up the tan? Actually, there's not too many in the crowd that uh, don't have tops on. He, he probably is the only one. It's like he's having a day at the beach, doesn't it, really? <laughs> <laughs> 45 for one, he's just missing a dip in the sea and a pina colada. 187 behind. Or, uh, Hampshire, Blatherwick to, uh, to Middleton, doesn't offer a shot. Ball goes through to the, the gloves of the keeper, Phil Salt, and there's no run. 13 to, to Middleton, Gubbins on 13 as well. Missed out in the first innings and a drop, an expensive drop catch as well, so he'll be trying to make amends here and contribute with the bat second time round. Gutsy, determined start. Just leans into this next Blatherwick delivery and works the ball square of the wicket out to, to Will Williams at point. And there's no run. Blatherwick looks okay, didn't he? he looked like he'd uh, got yeah, a little bit did. of an ankle problem earlier, didn't he? Yeah, like maybe he just kind of landed a bit awkwardly, mm. something like that. And a bit of a concern at first. It's a great chance for him. He doesn't get too many opportunities in the county championship team. Played the last couple of T20 matches, he's bowled really well actually in the blast. Great chance for for, for Jack to try and uh, contribute here. It's driven, it's a good looking shot. It's actually no ball by the umpire. Bannon chasing after it. He's flicked away from the boundary rope by uh, Dane Villas. They run three and it's a no ball. It's good work, actually, by... Uh, well, it was left by Barn, and it's flicked away by Villas. He's stopped it going for a boundary. <laughs> 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 
So 50 for one, trailing by 182. 50 on the board. In comes Blatherwick again, defended by Gubbins, up to mid-off, and there's no run. Somebody offering you a drink then no. from the entertain uh, entertainment from the hospitality tent. He's off his old Scott. He doesn't need a second invitation. Blatherwick it is. Number 12 in his third over here. We still have over 23 overs to do this evening. Where are we now? About quarter past five. Could be another late-ish one here. We don't see any spin. Blatherwick in. Oh, Gubbins is playing a missing at that one. <laughs> Again, just every now and then, one just bounces a little bit more short of a length. Causes the batter some problems. Interesting, actually, just to find out, now we're coming towards the end of day two, what the batters really think uh, about this pitch. Yesterday, certainly, when Hampshire were batting, it was doing a little bit consistently, but Lancashire bowled extremely well. Seemed to, as the day wore on, just get a little flatter. But today, generally, for the seamers, there's always been something there. Blathwick in again, Cubbins drives, doesn't time it. Goes out towards extra cover. End of the over. 50 for one Hampshire in their second innings. Gubbins 13, Middleton 16, that one wicket to fall. Weatherly caught in the slips by Hartley off Bailey for 12. The score then was 24 for one. Another email here from Michael Bird. Solentcricket at gmail.com. He says, good afternoon, guys. The sun shines at Birkdale. And after Lancashire's indifferent season to date, it seems churlish to moan about a 374 first innings total and with a lead of 232. But says Michael. I must admit I was hoping we would still be batting at stumps tonight. We desperately need some big wins and I would have loved to have seen Jones and Villas get more time in the middle. Yes, Dave Villas especially not having the best of seasons. Villas made six, Jones made 18. Uh, can any of you gentlemen tell me if you recall many half centuries that included 12 fours like Balderson's? Oh gosh, we'd have to go through some... Scorebooks. Lovely shot off the back foot there from Fletcher Middleton through extra cover. And that'll be four runs. And that takes the total on to 54 for one. And there's a special guest. It's not Scott Reed, no, but it's somebody me. else. Yes, it's not me. But, but we've managed to, 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 to sweet I've managed to sweet talk Farouk Engineer out of the uh, hospitality tent. And he's just gonna come and have a chat with us. Because we've, we've We'll watch Balderson come in here, 54 for one. And Balls, that's uh, pushed up to mid on. There is no run fielder by uh, <coughs> Jack Blatherwick. Farouk, how are you How are you doing? All right, great. Lovely to be back here at Southport, where I played my first game against Lancashire for, for India. And um, I kept on hitting Lancashire's opening bowler for a few sixes. <laughs> on the railway lines. <laughs> it's Paul Then somebody dead. pointed out that, that was the great Brian Statham. You know, and I felt humiliated, you know, because he was such a great bowler, such a great man. But that was my introduction to this ground. And subsequently we played, I think I got a fastest televised 50 here as well. So the John Player League, the first, first game. Fantastic. So, I mean, some very happy memories for Lancashire. And great people, great members, great club, Southport Club. So, fabulous being here. Here's Balderson in again to, uh, to, to Middleton. That's off the back foot and driven to the offside. No run. <coughs> and you've been in the, the, the marquee today. Have you enjoyed a good day? Yes, indeed. It was Malcolm's, the Reverend Malcolm's birthday today. Indeed. 70, 72nd. So, can we wish him a, you know, many happy returns on air? Well, we ha well you, you just have. Yes, indeed. And... Uh, Great man, a great friend of mine, great friend of all Lancashire players, and one of the nicest people you could you could hope to meet. Here's Balderson to, to Middleton. It's left and through to the keeper, no run. So when Malcolm said, would you come and have lunch? You know, the wife and I were delighted. Yes, we'll come and join you. And we've overstayed our visit, I think. We, we came at about 11 o'clock. We're going to stay till three. But the hospitality was so good. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't it, blame it, you. It carried on a bit. Yeah, well, why not? Yeah. This is the final ball of Balderson's over. 54 for, for one, Hampshire second innings. It's driven 
Uh, to the left of mid-off, Villas will chase after it. There's a couple here, in fact, there's four of them for Middleton. <coughs> he moves on to 24, not out, and it's 58 for one, and it's 160, 176 behind. And, and we, we've thrilled you here because we mentioned you quite a bit on commentary yesterday. Did you? Yeah, well, it, we've got an email of th uh, coming through about kind of favourite Lancashire wicketkeeper batters and, and, and kind of your name obviously featured quite highly on the, on the top of the list of many Lancashire fans as favourite wicket oh, keepers nice for the club. Lancashire Lancashire had some great keepers, you know. But we're playing against Hampshire today. Hampshire was the first county to have offered me a professional contract here. I was offered by four counties. And thanks to John Arlott, who plied me with a bit of Beaujolais, <laughs> and he wanted me to play for Hampshire. Then Somerset got hold of it, Dennis Atkinson, so... Somerset offered me a contract, then Don Kenyon from Worcestershire. You know, this happened in the, in the matter of two or three days. And the word spreads very quickly. And Lancashire were the last to offer me a contract. I never even asked Lancashire. As uh, Blatherwick Balls asked defender by Gobin's no run. <coughs> I'm sorry, I didn't realize okay. we didn't come at the okay. same time. Yeah. It's okay. Um, and no terms were even discussed. You know, Tommy Hickson was the chairman. He just said, Farouk, you'll be very happy with Lancashire. And that's the best day's work I've done, signing on for Lancashire. Well, re initially, myself and Gary Sobers were, were in, you know, invited by Lancashire. But Lancashire, Sobers wanted Lancashire to pay off his betting debts. You know, I'll let you describe the next ball. And yeah, it's, uh, Gobin's waiting for Blatherwick, who's in and balling. And that's off the front foot and pushed into the offside. No ball signaled by the umpire again. So Gary Sobers didn't sign for Lancashire because Notts were willing to pay off his betting debts. So Gary went to Nottinghamshire and I was asked to, to, to recommend an overseas player. And I'd played against Clive Lloyd the year before. And he, you know, he impressed me quite a bit. So, yeah, I said to our, our chairman, Cyril Washbrook, I said, yes, I would recommend Clive, you know, Clive Lloyd without any hesitation. But he wears glasses for him. I said, never mind his glasses, Mr. Washbrook signed him on. <laughs> and we had, a, we, had a, we had a great partnership over the years. And the next ball is about to be bowled, so you're in action now. Yes, <laughs> 60 for one as Blatherwick's in again. It's flicked away through the onside. Nice looking shot by Gubbins in front of square out towards mid wicket. And it's gone all the way for four runs. 64 for one. Yeah, and since then, Clive Lord and I had a good, you know, he came a year later. My, my first game for one of my first games was against Yorkshire in the Roses games. Now, Brian Statham dr driven me to Headingley, you know, and introduced me to the great Fred Truman, which, you know, and f f for some reason I got 97 before lunch, really, in, on, the, on the first morning of a, of a Roses match. And a Cyril Washbrook called me aside at lunchtime and said, Farouk, can I have a word with you? I said, yes, Mr. Washbrook. I was worried. What did I do wrong? He said, in Rose's games, we don't even think about hitting a four before lunch. <laughs> 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 but uh, those are the days. Cricket was different. I think I might have survived in this basketball revolution. <laughs> Is uh, Blatherwick to, uh, to Gubbins. He defends, no rum. I think that would have suited your, your, your style of play, basketball. Absolutely, yes, indeed. That. Yeah. Well, the ball is meant to, to be hit and hit hard. And uh, being a wicketkeeper, I had an added advantage. You had a good eye, you know, good reflexes. And it's all about, you can pick up any... My wife and I went skiing. We'd, n we'd never skied before. Now, we were just there for a week, so I thought to take lessons and all would be a waste of time. Here's Blatherwick to uh, Gubbins. He cries a catch as he swats it down towards... Uh, Fine leg, it bounces in front of Jack Morley, the 12th man at <coughs> fine leg. Goes through for a single, 65 for one. So we went to Kitzbühel, you know, in Austria. Never, Sabu here, never seen snow in his life. And uh, my wife said, let's, 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 let's go skiing. So I went to this ski shop where you rent skis and mm. you know, ski pass and all that. Yeah. And um, some Aussie guys were there, they, they recognized me, you know, because I played a lot of cricket in Australia. So they, they recommended a few places, but I completely forgot to tell them that I'd never skied in my life before. 
the next ball is he coming he, he's just about to set off but he's, yeah. he's pushing mid wicket back to deep square leg before he does it but yeah. here comes blatherwick to middleton at 65 for one he's letting the batsman know he's going to bowl a bouncer in he comes and balls it's a fuller ball instead an off stump which he's driven to mid off no yeah. wrong kidology <laughs> it's, it's been done before <laughs> So, I mean, um, yeah, we started off on, on, the, on the black slopes. I never even knew there were black slopes, red slopes, or, or blue slopes, which I only realized later. But we started off with the black slopes. Well, isn't that the what toughest I'm one? To, what I'm trying to say is that if you have a sense of timing, right. a sense of balance, mm -hmm. and a sense of um, anticipation, you can play any sport. You know, and here I was doing cross-country skiing by the end of the week, never having had a lesson. Blatherwick balls short this time and ducked by Middleton through to the keeper. No run. That's the end of the over as well. 65 for one trail by 167. So Bass ball would have been right for you, wouldn't it? Oh yes, it? absolutely. Yeah, I was at the I was at the World Test Championship, Australia India, where India got hammered you know, by 200 runs. And um, the way India approached the game, I don't think it was the the right way to do it, but they thought it was, and uh, they paid the penalty. The first thing, not picking an off spinner against Australia, we had about five top left-handed batsmen, was, you know, was I think a major folly. But I think they paid, paid the price. But um, what I'm trying to say, hmm. that match was a great advert for Test cricket because I all five days were full. It was like a game of chess, the game changing every hour. You know, Australia was the better. Of, of, of the two sides, which was proved eventually by them winning by over 200 runs. But it was a great advert for Test cricket. And Test cricket should, what I'm trying to say, Test cricket should always be played alongside one day cricket. You know, you can have the T20s and uh, hundreds or whatever, but play Test cricket along with it. Test cricket should never ever be sacrificed because that's the real, real challenge of playing cricket. You're playing. You know, you talk about someone scoring the maximum of hundreds, someone taking so many wickets. These are all test cricket records. You know, nobody talks about one-day cricket records. Although, I was I was a one-day player. The way I played test cricket was, you know, as if I played one-day cricket. I, I got a hundred against the West Indies in, in 46 balls on the first morning of a test match, but didn't get it before lunch. First ball after lunch, Lance Gibbs came on to bowl. And I hit him out of the stadium, uh, and I think the ball is still travelling. They never, they never <laughs> found it. Yeah. We're going to see some spin, but we'll let you go in a moment, Farouk. And we thank you for, because uh, I know you're about to leave. And th thank you for, for for popping up and sharing a few memories with us. We've got Tom Hartley with his left arm spin coming uh, into the attack. I just want kind of just y y your thoughts about uh, you mentioned about playing here as Hartley's in and bowls. That's um, beats the four press of Gubbins to the keeper, no run. You you a fan of Lancashire bringing games out to the the outgrounds? Oh yes, yeah. absolutely. I mean, we loved playing at Southport. We loved playing at Egberth. You know, we, we loved playing at different hmm. venues, and that's that's the way it should be. It's getting the reverse sweep attempted. Has he been caught? They reckon that's run off the face of the bat. Not out, says the umpire. Well, the ugly reverse sweep. I don't know if it's really necessary to play that shot because he could have hit that ball on mid wicket for four runs but he decided to play reverse whip looks nice <laughs> anyway it's lovely talking to you buddy yeah and, and, uh, you, and you it's hard we'll just sit this over through uh, Farouk Hartley in doesn't actually release the ball so he'll uh, go back to the top of his uh, mark we'll, we'll wait till the end of the over Farouk and then we'll, we'll it's a bit sure. cramped for so room this, in here is this for BBC Lancashire or well I'll BBC? tell you in a second this is off the back foot by Gubbins through <laughs> mid wicket for for one run it's for yeah. uh, Lancs TV and it's for the BBC Sport website and app. I think we might even still be on Five Sports Extra as well. So it's going okay. across uh, different. Uh, Fantastic. Different my, my warmest regards, warmest regards in this weather. Yes. <laughs> to all all our listeners, thank you for listening to us. I mean, this is people will be driving home at this time, won't they? From the work and traffic jams. Hope the jams are not too bad. And um, being a Monday, I can only wish you have a wonderful week. Oh, likewise, Farouk. It's so nice to uh, to see. I'm sure you've uh, enjoyed a, an excellent day. Hartley in and balls off the back foot and driven away by Middleton to uh, to mid off, and there's no run. So one ball left of the over. We'll have a little shuffle yeah, around. And, and my little tip: if Malcolm Lorimer ever invites you to a party, and it's Hartley in balls, four in defence, no run, end of the over. Never say no because it's got to be a good one. <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks, Farouk. Okay. Oh, there's, one, there's one ball left, actually, um, for this uh, Tom Hartley. Oh, we'll bring Kevin back in, and then we'll, uh, we'll uh, help Farouk leave this uh, commentary position. Hartley in, and balls forward goes Middleton. End of the over. 66 for one Hampshire trail by 166. Thanks, Farouk. I um, hope oh, you've enjoyed a, a good day. I'm sure Pleasure. you have. Thank you. Have a good day yourself. Engineer joining us here on Lex TV, the BBC Sport website and the app. Uh, and uh, some memories, thanks mate, some memories of, uh, of his time here at uh, Southport and how he could quite easily, well, quite easily been a Hampshire player and a Hampshire legend. I, I never knew that. What a revelation. Yeah, and I don't, I'm not sure how many people down our way know that either. If Dave Allen, Hampshire's historian, is listening and watching, I'm sure he's made note of that. He probably does know, but if he doesn't, I'm sure he's thinking, wow, like I am. The great Farouk engineer, everybody. 46 test matches for India. Played 335 first-class matches. 160 list A. And five one-day internationals as well. Made his test debut in 1961 as Blatherwick Bowles. Left alone by Gubbins outside the off-stump. The last of his uh, 46 test matches was against the West Indies. And that was in January 1975. Absolutely top draw. He looks good, doesn't he? Is he well, I've, I've got him down here as being 85. Wow. I remember him playing. I remember him keeping wicket for India, as many of you, I guess, will uh, as well. So here at... Uh, Southport and Birkdale. That's a short delivery from Blatherick to Gubbins, who's on 19. It's 66 for one. Middleton has 24 and Nick Gubbins 19. The one batter out, Joe Weatherly, four at 12. I've just got to disappear for a couple of minutes, if that's all right. I'm not sure it is. I'm just checking with Scott Reed. Yes, it is all right. See you guys in a moment. Cheers, Kev. It was nice to have uh, Farouk with us. It's, uh, Blatherwick comes in and balls. It's left and through to the keeper. And there is uh, no run. Uh, Callum Flynn's back alongside me. It was a major operation getting Farouk in and out of the commentary box. Yeah, well, <laughs> worth having, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely, it like is. that. Yeah. It was. 66 for one, Hampshire in their second innings. A trail by 166 runs with Middleton on 24 and Gubbins on 19. Like I said, a strong position all out for 374 in their first innings. A commandable first innings lead and looking to make the most of that with the ball in Hampshire's second innings. Jack Blatherwick's bowling currently to, uh, to Nick Gubbins and Hampshire a 66 for one trail by 166 runs. Last delivery was just played up to uh, to mid on, and there was uh, no run. Good stop, actually. Very acrobatic stop from Will Williams, wasn't it? Late yeah. in the day as well. In again, and balls. It's a short ball, and through to the keeper, and there's no run. Good to see Blatherwick fit and okay after what looked like a pretty awkward tumble yeah he's got a few f five nice overs there with a decent bit of pace behind him as well testing the batters out with the odd shot ball here and there yeah beat the batter a couple of times thank you she would just like one or two more wickets before the end of play oh, there's still plenty of time to try and get them there's nine 19 overs left today Oh, this cries of catch that's disappeared down to third man. Yeah, it's in, it's off the bat, and it's beyond perhaps Jones at second slip. It's gone down to third man for four runs. It's flashed and flashed pretty hard, I think, by Gubbins. Things are scoring to 70 for one. A little nervous glance over his shoulder at the end of it, wasn't it? Yeah, it was flying through that slip card, and wasn't it? It was a dive in Rob Jones, but I think that was more just a token dive. Don't actually know how close he was from that with the angle that we are. So on 62 behind. There's Hartley. 
And he's into his uh, first spell of the second innings. This is the, the second over of it. He's got uh, Middleton on strike. In and balls. That's uh, Middleton off the back foot. And defends out into the offside for no run. The left arm spin of Tom Hartley, bowling it around the wicket to, to Middleton, who plays forward. And again, there's uh, no run. Short leg and a slip in place. Again, dabbed away by Middleton. Jones at mid wicket to field, and there's uh, no run. So halfway through uh, Hartley's second over, balls to Middleton, who goes back into the crease and defends. Back to uh, to Tom Hartley. And again, there is no run. Gives the ball a bit of a polish. In again to uh, to Middleton. That's off the back foot. Gets a single through the offside. Hampshire 71 for one in their uh, second inning, still trailed by 161 runs. Been a really good day this for, for Lancashire. They're in a strong position in the game. They made 374 in their first innings. Phil Salt top scoring with 103, his first century in Red Bull cricket for uh, Lancashire and the fifth of his career. And uh, batting second time round, Hampshire have lost one wicket. 71 for one, they're trailed by 161 runs. And that was the uh, end of the over as well. With Middleton on 25 and Gubbins unbeaten on uh, on 23. Might see a little bit of spin through the course of the uh, afternoon. Yeah, I think they'll be hoping for Tom Hartley to kind of take up one end, won't they? And produce the seamers from the other end, give a, give the other two seamers a rest each time and, and just have a short, fiery spells from the seamers at one end and hopefully Tom Hartley holds one end up as well. We have a, an email from uh, Joanne who says, I've never been to a county cricket game. I live literally round the corner in Birkdale. Are there tickets available on the door tomorrow? I have no idea. I need to, uh, yeah, I'd better ask the chairman <laughs> if there's tickets on the door. I, I presume there will be. Uh, Blatherwick in and balls. It's pushed away by Middleton. Picked up at second slip and there's no run. Um, so love listening to Farouk. My mum thought he was a fantastic player and uh, attached a, a photograph of uh, what is currently happening on her balcony. Not quite sure what that is. There's a, there's a photograph of a, of a, of a, of a skull with, with sunglasses on and a, some kind of cocktail next to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joanne, I hope you do get to come tomorrow and watch a day of county cricket. As Blatherwick's into uh, to Middleton. That's worked away to the onside. Kevin is, is, is disappearing into the executive media market to go and try and track down the chairman to work out whether there's tickets on the door tomorrow. I, I think there are. I think you can you can just you can come in and, and get a ticket. But if you only live around the corner, you can have a little stroll around. And if if they say no, <laughs> you've, not, you've not got far back to walk back to your house, I suppose. I imagine you'll be able to pay I, on the gate, won't I'm you? I'm pretty sure you yeah. can. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. 71 for one, Blatherwick balls again. And Middleton off the front foot, pushing the ball, beats him. We've seen so much of that, haven't we, in this game? Yeah, Blatherwick's beat the bat a couple of times now. That extra pace is just lifting off a leather as well, um, building a nice bit of pressure. But Lancashire don't need to panic, do they? Yet? They've got so, they're so far ahead in the game, they can keep just being patient and patient. The, the wicket's going to tear up, you'd think, get a get a bit harder to score on, get a bit more bowler friendly as well. So everything's playing into Lancashire's favour at the moment, even though it's a, it's a great little partnership from Gubbins and Middleton here. The partnership is worth, yeah, is worth <laughs> 47 um, between Middleton and Gubbins. Instructions being bellowed back towards the uh, slip fielders here by Jack Blatherwick. There's three slips, and Bell was at a four-slip position, but then kind of retreats to more of a gully location. 
to Fuller Ball, which is turned away through the onside by Middleton. Ball bouncing its way out towards the mid-wicket boundary. Villas catches up with it. They come back and they run two. Well played for Middleton there. They tried to play the old double bluff there, Lancashire, and um, put the deep square out. Test him with the short ball, but he's actually tried to get the Yorker and he just played it nicely for him mid-wicket for two. Um, he looks a real composed player, Middleton. Looks like he's a um, big good talent for the future for Hampshire. 27 not out. Waits for Blatherwick, who's in again and bowls a short ball, which is down the leg side, and he bends underneath that, crouching down through to uh, to Salt, and there's no rum. I think he ducked under that very late there. The slip fielders thought there was going to be being a, a, be a better play there. It was a very sharp bouncer from Blatherwick in into his six over, and he's still sending him down with decent pace here. Final ball of the six over from Blatherwick. It's left outside the off stump by Middleton and taken by Salt, and that completes the uh, over. 70. Three for one, Hampshire's a trail by 159 runs. Only 17 overs remaining in the day's allocation. Elsewhere in the uh, county championship, Kenton made a pretty solid start into their second innings. So now leads three by 269 runs, or 113 for one. Somerset bowled out for 167, so they trailed by 295 runs, so Essex could enforce a follow-on. And Nottinghamshire, 82 for five. Trail Warwickshire by 489 runs, but they are currently off for bad light. Couldn't be further from where we are, really. It's absolutely glorious. No issues with the light here. As Hartley bowls, forward goes Gubbins, and there's no rum. And confirmation for Joanne. Excellent reporting work done by Kevin James. I actually thought he'd just gone to the bar. <laughs> but he's going to confirm that tickets are available. 15 quid tomorrow for a ticket. Hartley in. Gubbins looks to reverse sweep. Farouk wasn't a fan of the reverse sweep. There's, uh, it's an interesting shot with the foot marks there and spinning into him. I feel because Rob Jones is short leg as well. Oh, over the wicket, ball swept. Well, that's a good shot. Thuds into the advertising ball through mid wicket. Timed the pants off that one, didn't he? Yeah. The Gubbins. That's the um, that's a lot safer option. Spinning into him, it's a lot more natural to sweep with that. And it's not a big boundary out there. So if he gets three quarters of it, he's probably going to clear the outfield. Is it George Balderson out there? Deep square, I think. Gobbins moves on to 27. It's that time of the day where we start overhearing conversations in the uh, corporate tent. Which is not always a good thing. Trail by one, trail by 155. Five. Hartley to, uh, to Gubbins. Short leg and a slip, and Hartley's left arm over and bowls and forward with Gubbins. And uh, defends. Again, there is no run. It's suspended for bad light in Nottingham, but it's also thunder and lightning, apparently. Oh. Yeah. Comes Hartley, forward goes Gubbins, squeezing the ball off the front foot into the offside, and darting through for a quick single. 28 to Gubbins now, 78 for one. To bring Middleton back on strike. So the other games in Division 1. Um, four matches in Division 2 taking place as well. We've got one ball left of this over, and then uh, we'll have a look at some of those Division 2 games. Division 1 matches are all quite lopsided, aren't they, with one team absolutely dominating it. Essex well on top, Kent on top, Warwickshire on top, and Lancashire in, in a strong position here. Hartley in, bowls. And the uh, reverse sweep by Middleton gets him a single. Moves on to 28, 79 for one. And 
indeed is the end of the over. So Division 2 scores. If you're watching on the live stream, there are the uh, guests in the hospitality tent. A couple of empty glasses there. That can't be... <laughs> that can't happen for very long, can it? Let's get those refilled. Uh, Derbyshire, 238 for four against Yorkshire. That's in their second innings. They still trail by four runs. So 280, 238 for four, Derbyshire, in their second innings trail, Yorkshire by four. Uh, Durham, a 378 for five against Glamorgan, who made 390. So Durham trail by 12. Gloucestershire, a 340 for nine against Leicestershire. And Worcestershire, 359 for three. They lead Sussex by 11 runs. Sussex make 348. Here's Blatherwick. Bowls. And it's a short ball to Middleton. He's trying to kind of dip down one knee and almost paddle it away to, to backward square leg. Yeah, he's ducked out of two bounces in a row now of Blatherwick, which I think quite un unconvincing um, the way he's played him. So I think Lancashire will go with a short ball tactic for a few overs potentially here. I know Blatherwick at the end of his last over was asking Vilas for one more, so I think Vilas was ready to change him, but I think Blatherwick fancies chances here at the moment. There's a fine leg and there's a square leg. And there are three slips and a gully and point. And a mid off and a mid on. Just getting a short leg in there now as well. Okay. So who's got the job of that? Josh Bahannon? No, George Bell. He's uh, popping on the helmet. He'll uh, nestle in at, at short leg. Where's Tom Hartley going? He's going from. He's going to leg slip, so and, and square leg is dropping back a bit. So yeah, short leg, leg slip, and Bailey now got, goes all the way back towards the square leg boundary and a fine leg. Kind of a short third man as well, a kind of almost fly slip perhaps, Mitchell. He just dropped back from first slip, maybe 15 yards. I'd be surprised if it's an half volley outside off stump <laughs> <laughs> at this moment in time. <laughs> well, it's not gone to plan if it is, is it? Let's have a look. Here comes Blatherwick. He's into p perhaps the final over of this spell. That's a ball of decent length, which Middleton just plays defensively. He's come round the wicket as well, so he's he's really trying to get into Middleton's head here and just try and go a bit more body line, try and see what Middleton's um, mindset's like here. Well, it's uh, pretty well signposted, isn't it? That there's, there's perhaps going to be something short at least once being sent down by Blatherwick bowling right on around the wicket there it is it's short and Middleton trying to try, try to take it on it's gone through to the keeper oh it's been no ball no by the umpire on height it's a kind of interesting shot by Middleton wasn't it kind of pivoting back and <laughs> almost Trying to, uh, I don't know. It was like a scoop pull <laughs> shot, wasn't it? <laughs> it wasn't it? Yeah, Any bat on it, it's probably four or six, to be honest. Well, there's now a um, third man and fine leg and deep square. It's flicked away off the pads out towards square leg. Where Bailey, f Bailey fields. And the score moves on to 82 for one. So exactly 150 runs behind. Uh, Essex are batting again, by the way. They've not kind of been forced to follow on, but kind of halfway through day two there. So they've gone back out to bat. In fact, they've lost a wicket. They're five for one, but lead Somerset by 300 runs. Gubbins is on strike. Good effort this by Blatherwick. Seven overs on the bounce. Running back in, balls again. Left alone by Gubbins. Taken by uh, Phil Salt. And there's no rum. Yeah, he's bowled a nice rhythm, nice pace. And like you say, with his injury problems in the past, he's got through seven strong overs here. Um, and looked pretty looked pretty um, dangerous. I mean, the Hampshire players, of Gubbins and Middleton, have played him really well. Played the pace well, rode the bouncers, um, and just scored off the balls. Um, which they can score pretty easily. Two balls left for Blatherwick. Into to Gubbins. 
down the, the leg side. Salt went leaping away to his right. And they get through for a bye. In fact, that was the final ball of the over. We're just a little bit behind with the with the balls on the on the counter there. So that was the final ball of uh, Blatherwick's seventh over. It's 83 for one. Trail by 149 runs. Blatherwick has uh, gone for 28 from his uh, his seven overs. Ball is used by Lancashire in this. Hampshire second innings. So far, Bailey six overs, one for 19. Williams seven overs for 10. Blatherwick seven overs for 28. Balderson two overs for 12. And Hartley about to start his fourth over. He's gone for, for eight so far. Middleton going, going right back into the crease to Hartley. Working the ball away to backward square leg. Score moves on to 84 for one. So it's uh, Gubbins on strike, apologies. He's uh, slipping a leg, slipping a short leg. It's nudged away by uh, Middleton up towards mid on, and there's no run. Interest is just coming over the wicket, isn't he now to um, to Middleton, just trying to spit them out of that foothold. Yeah, does perhaps just turn a little bit out of those footholds as well. It's flipped away to short fine leg, and they, they get through for a single. Score moves on to 85 for one. Much better second time round this by Hampshire with the bat. Showing some real fight here. Cubbins back on strike. Just dabbed away to the, to the leg side, there's no run. Certainly for the first time in the match, causing Lancashire the bit of a headache, trying to work out ways of prizing out wickets here. Yeah, it looks like one of them wickets that if you get in, you've got to stay in and make sure you do the work. It looks pretty... Hartley balls and off the back foot goes Gubbins, so trying to work the ball away into the offside, straight to Bahannon, no run. It looks pretty hard to get set in, um, but like you say, once you're in, you've got to take ownership of that and make sure it's not down to someone else. Hartley left arm over, balls to, to Gubbins, he looks to reverse sweep it. Ball just uh, sneaks its way past the bat and into the gloves of, of Phil Salt. The end of uh, Hartley's over and the uh, score moves on to uh, 85 for one Tom Bailey returning Jack will have a whip with a nice spell there but no reward unfortunately thank you she'll be open just to nick one or two here before the close of play and really turn momentum into tomorrow yeah, it's a bit of a gutsy spell that, wasn't it, by Blatherwick. He can run in hard, but with a lot of commitment. <laughs> no reward, but two of the Hampshire bowlers will know that feeling. Here comes uh, Bailey returning into the attack and bowls. Middleton defends off the back foot. They got their ice cream though, so they'll, oh be, they did, yeah. they'll be pretty happy. Yeah. Keith Barker came wandering around the uh, outfield, having gone to the ice cream van with two two ice creams, both with a flake in. I think a little bit of raspberry sauce. And well deserved ice cream from for, for Keith Barker. I'm, I'm, I'm with you, I think the other one was for a bass. It yeah, it's been. got to be. Cheer him up a little yeah, bit. Yeah. There you go, mate. <laughs> Have an ice cream instead. Tom Bailey from the Harrod drive end. And balls left alone, taken by the keeper. Except the odd one or two player misses, which you're going to get at this standard and with the quality of attack. They've not really been in much trouble, these two, and 
He batted really well, really composed, rotated the strike pretty well and just put the bad ball away when it's come. And they've had to wait patiently for that as well. A lot of batting in front of Hampshire. 15 overs tonight. And that's left by Middleton. And through to the keeper, no run. A lot of work to do to be in a position to, to well, just to make the game safe to, be, to, be, to begin with for the possibility of trying to put because you're back under pressure later on in the match. Still 149 behind. Bailey for Lancashire. Right on over the wicket. Balls left again by Middleton. And through to the keeper. No run. The end of the back end of a, of a hot second day. A bit of a game of, of patience here, of which Middleton has, has um, displayed a lot of through the course of this inning so far. Barely a false shot in anger. He's on strike, he's waiting for, for Bailey, who bowls again. And again, he leaves. It's been even more impressive because I'm sure the Lancashire lads would have been letting him know about his. Um, <laughs> Unfortunate yeah. <laughs> mistakes in the field, so he's really um, took responsibility and played a mature knock here so far. Yes, if you're just kind of joining the coverage on Lanks TV or the BBC Sport website and app, and, uh, you know, put down Phil Salt in the first over. He leaves his next delivery from Bailey. Came through to Salt, no run. Salt went on to make a century. It's his. Uh, First championship century for Lancashire. See, it was a costly mistake. He's out for naught in the first inning, but he's doing his a fine job here to, to try and make amends and contribute second time round. It's the end of the Bailey over as well. It's uh, 85 for one. With Gubbins on 29. And uh, Middleton on. 30. Tom Hartley to continue. And then Middleton off the back foot. Sorry, Gubbins off the back foot drives to mid on. Well, Will Williams fields and there's no run. Williams at deepish mid on. And halfway back towards the boundary. This is swept. It's in between the legs of short leg and down towards the boundary at backward square by Gubbins. Four more to him. I thought he actually went between the legs of short leg. Actually went to his l to his left hand side. And, uh, down to the boundary for four. I think the Hampshire faithful will be open. Gubbins keeps playing the original sweep instead of the reverse. He's he's got in a bit of trouble pl trying to play the reverse sweep both times. Hartley to Gubbins. There he goes again on the the, the sweep just. Paddling the ball down to, to short fine leg, and they get through for a quick single. And off the three um, standard sweeps that he's played, he's hit two fours in a single, so it's clearly a lot more, um, less risk and more reward in that shot as well. So one, four, and one. And brings Middleton back on, on, on strike. Halfway through the 20. Eighth over of the Hampshire second innings. Hartley in and balls. Gets forward. Middleton in, in defence. Stifled appeal by the bowler and keeper in the slips. Of which is a slip and a leg slip and a forward short leg. Tossed up by Hartley. Middleton come down, comes down the pitch. Drives it back towards the bowler and there's no run into uh, ball again again Middleton off the back foot works the ball away through the onside and Blatherwick completes the fielding 
and that is the end of the over as well and with 12 to go tonight and the time ticking up towards six o'clock players are going to have a a drink he's yeah. coming out with some supplies it's like uh, jack morley potentially there for, for lancashire in the high fizz parky as well is it could Not be parkinson could be yeah so out come some drinks the players taking a refreshment We've got 12 overs left to go tonight i'm sure on, on 90 three for one so trail by 139 runs middleton on 33 gubbins on 34 and i guess coming out second time round, 230 behind the, and the the first objective the batting side has got to be to make sure that obviously you bat better but you make this as difficult as you possibly can for Lancashire to ram home their advantage and there's at least a start here for Hampshire in the second innings. Yeah, it's certainly their session there. They've played absolutely excellent. Very mature and that's just, just playing the ball as they see it, just rotate. I think they've been really impressed with just how they've been rotating the strike. Um, not been absolutely plenty of boundaries, but the run rate is at a healthy 3.32 and they've just rotated the strike really well and not let the um, Lancashire bowlers settle, especially now with the left-hand, right-hand combination of Gubbins and Middleton. Um, as a bowl, there's nothing worse than keep chopping and changing your line and length to, to suit a left-hand, right-hand. So the message from the Hampshire boys will just be keep batting and bat as long as you can. Well, there's a lot of batting ahead of them, but they've, they've made a start. We'll have a little uh, change in the commentary box. I'll um, hand over to, to Kevin Callum after a, perhaps a few more thoughts from you. You can keep those headphones on. I'll give these to, to Kev. You're right. <laughs> the teams are out now. After the refreshments, hopefully the Dean Villas will be opening the seamers and the, the spinners for Lanky will be got a bit more energy to to sneak one or two more wickets in before the end of play here because that'll be another fantastic day for Lancashire. If so we won't be too worried if they don't get another wicket or two with with the lead they still have. But Hampshire will be thrilled if they can um go into the end of the play with, with only losing one wicket after after a uh, pretty poor start with the bat yesterday. Yes, yeah, much more fight shown, but uh, still a long way to go. 139, they trail 12 overs to go tonight. That's still a lot. The ball is still getting through for the seamers. Still a little bit there, isn't there, time to time? Yeah, it's still lifting as, as well, isn't it, on that length. Spinners just starting to get a bit more out the pitch as well as the where he gets drier and the footholes get bigger. Here's uh, Tom Bailey then, uh, right arm over and drive from Fletcher Middleton. Not quite where he was aiming, it's going through mid-wicket and he'll move on to 34. And the Hampshire total on to 94 for one. In fact, they're going to get another single. A bit of a lazy bit of fielding there as the throw went into Phil Salt. And they come through for an extra. A bonus run. We'll take them all, says Fletcher Middleton. Certainly help. You haven't given me much in this game. Hasn't helped, of course, with the drop catches. Middleton been involved in them mainly and uh, needs to get a few runs here to sort of get himself back in credit. Here's Bailey. Comes in and Middleton just works it away down to fine leg. 94 for one, the score will be now. Training by 138. Is Middleton an academy product then? Yeah, come Hampshire? through the system. Yeah, his dad used to play. Yeah. Tony. A couple of decades ago or so. A bit more than that, actually. And, um, yeah, I mean, everything he knows, I guess he's learned from his dad. And his dad was a decent player. Played quite a bit for Hampshire. Up till about the mid-90s, I think, I'm right in saying, off the top of my head. I'd have to check that out, actually. I should know. Played with his dad an awful lot. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's, he's a good player, Fletcher. He's... Um, you know, he's working hard here. And uh, he's done that most of the season. Actually worked hard for his runs. He has a bit of a tendency at the moment to sort of get out when he's got in. Outside the off stump, yeah. left alone. But he's only young. Um, he, he'll learn. But he's he's got the right credentials. You know, you when you see guys come into a side, you think, oh, yeah, you know, give him a bit of time. And, you know, he might develop. I think he's developed. I think he just needs, he needs now to sort of... Um, 
work things out as from a yeah. first class level point of view you know what i'm saying you know it's how to build your innings and how to play situations yeah. and because he's got he's got it all there's no doubt about it he's got it all it's just now the experience and working things out as bailey comes into gubbins he's leaving that one alone at this kind of level it's more like you say mental isn't it than, oh. than physical you you're clearly good enough as you're in the you're in a county setup it's just more how you handle them pressure pressure situations in there often the best players in the world handle them pressure situations the best and that's why they are the best players that's right i've often said that uh, there's a lot of county cricketers who have made a decent living out of the game that haven't necessarily been the best but they've made the most of what they've got yeah whereas a lot of good players and you've probably seen it when you've grown up a lot of players you think oh that guy's going to make it he's going to do it and just somehow there's something not quite there yeah and you think why because they're actually <laughs> seriously good players as bailey bowls and he's on the back foot there gubbins plays it late Ball works its way out towards third. Gubbins moves on to 33. Sorry, 34, I should say. Uh, the score seems to be going down. <laughs> Hang on. So I might have to... Uh, it's 94 for one I've got. If I look to my left, it's 93. If I look at the board, it's 96. So take your pick out of that. Here comes Bailey. Cubbins again leaves that one alone. Again, it's good carry through to Salt. How often have we said that? Seam bowlers love bowling here. Yeah, shoulder right carrying through there. It's just hitting that ridge, isn't it? It's just we're seeing that with the Somerset seamers, uh, oh, Hampshire seamers, sorry. Mm. Um, Abbott carrying it through um, to shoulder right, sometimes head out as well. S Scott is taking a picture of the crowd via Lynx TV. Sorry. Oh, it's your dad. Oh, that's your dad there. Oh, no, look, there he is in the cap, in the light green polo shirt. That is Scott Reed's dad, if you're watching the live picture feed. And Scott's taking a picture of his dad. I, I, have it, when was the last time you saw him then? <laughs> is this just to jog your memory? Because you might not see him again for a few years. <laughs> <laughs> so there is Mr. Reed in the crowd and he's staying overnight and he'll be back here tomorrow apparently here's hartley he's over the wicket to fletcher middleton he gets wrapped on the pad as he tries to flick it away oh that was nice isn't it that was a nice moment are you not sending that picture to your dad <laughs> i think he knows what he looks like <laughs> here's hartley down the wicket comes middleton just pushes out at that one he's trying to find the bit of rough isn't he just outside the leg stump, but Hartley. Uh, some would say this is negative bowling coming over the wicket. Yeah, but I can also understand why he's doing it with them rough patches there. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's one of them awkward ones if it spits and bounces, isn't it? That's right, that's what he's looking for. Middleton pushing forward again. Of course, the line that Hartley would bowl if he was coming round the wicket is pretty straight, there's no marks. So it's not really going to do anything for him. As you say, he's just hoping that something hits the bowler's foot marks and does something. That's really all he's bowling for at the moment. The back foot there whips that away. Fletcher Middleton has gone towards back of the square leg. Middleton moves on to 34. Like you say, coming round, coming over the wicket to a right hander, you're taking two dismissals straight out of the equation, aren't you, with Bold and LBW, really? Um, but he's just opening it, spits and bouncing, catches a glove. They've got men round the bat. Um, and they'll be quite happy if Middleton keeps coming down the trap because if one spits and bounces, the, the, the stumping will be on. That's right. He has to be very careful, doesn't he? Coming down the wicket, stays over the wicket to the left-handed Gubbins, does Hartley. Barnes, Gubbins forward, gets a thick outside edge, Ball just rolls out behind the square. Uh, I know many of you uh, enjoyed Farouk Engineer's uh, chat a little earlier with uh, Scott Reid. Uh, we were listening, weren't we, in the background, and we really uh, enjoyed it. A good talker is Farouk. So thank you for your emails saying you enjoyed listening to that. I'll just pick out one or two. as forward is Gubbins this goes out square on the offside David Forsyth southerncricket at gmail.com he says dear commentary team first of all I'm enjoying your commentary and the pictures from Lax TV very much as usual it was particularly pleasant to listen to Farouk Engineer's recollections uh, the middle day of that rearranged game against the Indian touring team that he was talking about in 1967 was my first visit to a first class cricket match the following year Lancashire's game at Southport versus Derbyshire was at the beginning of the school holidays and I was able to attend all three days at the finish of 
that game, many of the Lancashire players were very welcoming to us youngsters and signed autographs for us. Unfortunately, at some point in the intervening years, I managed to lose my treasured autograph book. I live in County Durham these days, and it isn't easy to get to Lancashire matches, but once again, thank you so much for your excellent coverage. That's David Forsyth. David, lovely email. Thank you very much. It's going to be Bailey to continue, I think, isn't it? Yes, it is. One yep. for 24, he has. The wicket of Joe Weatherly, of course. As Middleton plays forward and misses. That was close. Yeah, that looked a Jaffa out there. It did there. look, yes. Uh, yes, that did look a Jaffa. Not done much wrong again, Middleton, there. Like you say, he's just tried to play a forward defence. It's not exactly like he's trying to reach out in front of himself, play it through the covers. He's still staying nice and compact. Yeah. Oh, straight back, couldn't do much else really. It was just a good piece of bowling. 97 for one. Andy Girling has emailed silentcricket at gmail.com. Says it's almost midnight here. He's in Thailand. There's Bailey's in again and off the back foot there, Middleton. Trying to force that into the covers, does so, but a bit of extra bounce means he can't quite get the power he wanted. Uh, is that Glenn Chapel sitting on the boundary in a red shirt talking to someone else in a blue shirt? Uh, well, we can't see him. Uh, so we can neither confirm nor deny. But I would say it's a fairly good assumption to he's being a red shirt. Yeah, I think the kit's navy for the coach. Oh, is it? Staff is oh, it? I think the Lancashire like stuff. Yeah. Uh, apologies, we can't. Yeah, we can't see him from here. Here's Bailey, just whipped away by uh, Middleton behind square on the leg side. There's nobody there. It's rolling out to the outfield and rolling all the way. Four runs, and that should be the Hampshire hundred up. I know. One or two uh, areas of the ground are showing different scores, but I think we can safely assume, yeah, it's 101. Scoreboard is back in action at the far end. The Lancashire TV have caught up. So we're back on track. And 100 up for uh, Hampshire, but they still trail by 134. But a much better effort this time around. Yeah, looked really comfortable. He just turned his hands on that nicely and timed it. Certainly did as Bailey comes in again, and that's uh, left alone outside of the off stump. So we are into the last 10 overs of the day here in a scorching Southport and Birkdale Cricket Club venue. Temperature's actually just getting nice now, yeah. isn't it, really? It was about an hour ago, it was like, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Sweating just sat down. Didn't, yeah, that's right. You didn't really want to move. It's been that hot as Bailey comes in again and bowls and Again, there's the extra bounce outside the off stump, and Middleton leaves alone. So I'm just double checking the total. It is 101 for one. If you're watching on the live picture feed, it might just be behind again a little bit. Middleton 38, no, Gubbins 37. Came together when the score was on 24. Bailey into his ninth over here. Takes his time coming in again from that Harrod drive end. That's Middleton forward. And that is the end of the over. Nine to do then. Hampshire are 101 for one. And they still trail by 131. There's the scoreboard there, you see. On the TV it's 99, the scoreboard is 101. You can split the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Back up and running, like you say. A few malfunctions we thought. Yeah, it's just the odd one at times. I, I, I'm not sure if that scoreboard is sort of run on Wi-Fi. I know some of them are, aren't they? Yeah. They, they get caught up a little bit. We have one at our club cricket, and it, if it's a bowling hot day, the sun actually shuts it down. Oh, really? Yeah, just with how warm it gets. Gets too hot, yeah. Actually, my phone here was supposed to be charging, and then I had a little message on my phone saying it will start charging again when it cools down. <laughs> so That gives you an idea of just how yeah. hot it is today. Hartley bowls. Forward is Gubbins, gets wrapped on the pad. Hartley has, I'll give you the proper figures for Hartley. Uh, he's into his seventh over, none for 17. It's not Bailey bowling if you're watching the TV feed. He's a little quicker. And he also bowls with a different arm. As uh, <laughs> Gubbins is on the back foot, steers that up to mid on. So six wickets for Felix Organ earlier today. He's a career best for the Hampshire off spinner. 
previously it was five for 25 so even though it's gone for more runs it's just more wickets that's how you work those things out lovely reverse sweep there from Nick Gubbins has gone very fine up to the far end of the ground where there is some shade there for the spectators that's the ground is it northern end somebody said I think Callum mm. so the northern end of the ground has got some shade just past the boundary so they're the lucky spectators but maybe it's already too late for some of them third time lucky there for Nick Gubbins with that reverse sweep and he's played it really well has played it well Hartley again Cubbins plays that quietly out on the uh, on side so we're 105 for one back in the game as regards the uh, score on the TV feed and Hartley it is Barney 0 for 21 Middleton 39 Gubbins facing on 40 Gubbins is forward gets an inside edge trying to push that in the covers it's gone down on the 45 on the leg side Hartley has his hands on his head maybe that was one that's just come a little bit out of the rough yeah, it's probably the only one he's tried to force as well of Hartley. He's, he's played everything um, either really deep in his crease or really far forward, but that one he's really reached out at. Yeah. Um, and luckily just got an inside edge and just took the one. 106 for one. Still trailing by 126. It's been a good effort from Hampshire so far, but they still have, as I say, a lot to do. As that's kicked away by uh, Middleton, which is perfectly normal when the left arm spinners coming over the wicket. End of the over. Robert Acton has emailed silentcricket at gmail.com. He says, another scorcher and another day's excellent commentary. Thank you. It's very kind of all the comments, actually, by the way. Thank you. Uh, we've had some fun today, haven't we? Okay. Yeah, it's Scott, been good. It's been good fun. Been really the subject good. of the cricket live stream was brought up by listeners earlier in the day. Personally, for me, it's a godsend. Having retired to Cromer from Cheshire a few years ago, it allows me to watch Lancashire on a regular basis. We had somebody else from Cromer around the area. It must be a bit of a hotbed, hotbed for Lancashire people in, uh, around that area in Norfolk. Uh, it takes nearly six hours to get from Cromer to Manchester Piccadilly by train and costs over £180 for a return ticket, so not a practical proposition for me. Having said that, I did get to Old Trafford uh, to watch one day of last summer's England-South Africa test as Bailey comes in and he's kicking that away. He's not playing a shot. Bit of a mistake there from Gubbins, but not out, says uh, the umpire. Nice to hear Farouk Engineer earlier. Thank you for all your nice comments about that. Yeah, as I say, we enjoyed that. Keep up the good work, guys. Uh, P.S. We got the K back in Blatherwick earlier, but we're back to the missing K again. That's right. That's on the ticker tape when he's bowling. I guess there are too many words in his name to fit in the caption. That's right. Rob, the Manchester exile living in Cromer. Thank you, Rob. Don't know if he's just not picked that there, Gubbins. Yeah. A bit weird, wasn't it? Yeah, for I don't think it's swinging that much at the moment. Oh. A bit weird for somebody that's been in for 70 balls now. Here he is again. That's left alone again outside the stump. He's been a, he's bowled a probing line, hasn't he, Tom Bailey? And he's hitting that length. I don't know. I know you said earlier that maybe it's just a a fraction short. I still feel that actually. Do you? I mean, I know the ball's not moving, so if he bowls it too far up, there's a, there's a drive on every time. But I do think sometimes they're almost leaving it on length as much as anything. Yeah, I can't remember. I reckon I've seen one or two shots go through the covers for convincing drives. I don't think I've really seen many cover drives um, in the Hampshire innings. They've rotated the strike really well, but I've not seen them driving too much. No. Bailey in again. Oh, and he's hit on the pad coming forward there. He's well forward, though. It's a much better length as well. It's good length, isn't it? Yeah. Getting the batter forward, well forward. You're bringing all the dismissals into play again as well. Just causing Gubbins some problems in this over. As uh, Callum says, probably just the ball's just a couple of inches or so further up. It doesn't sound a lot, but it actually does make a difference. Bailey, it's <laughs> just saying to Dane Villas there, it's, uh, it's nipping a bit off the seam. Just got to keep it there, though. Put Gubbins under a bit of pressure here. Just over seven overs left in the day's play. Hampshire would dearly love to get through with nine wickets intact. Here's Bailey again. Full again. That's a good length. Bringing Gubbins well forward. Dave Taylor emailed silentcricket at gmail.com. As Speaker Secretary for Lancashire and Cheshire Cricket Society, I booked Farouk, Farouk as a guest speaker. He was only one of two people in my memory to receive a standing ovation when he entered the room. Uh, the other person, well, it was Sir Geoffrey Boycott which goes to prove we don't hold a grudge. There you go. Thank you for that one, Dave. It's Bailey again. Pass to Gubbins, and Gubbins happy to leave that one. That's a little wider. 
to legends like that you could just listen to them talk all day couldn't you the stories they've got about cricket and the, the players they've played against in the local leagues yeah, and that's the thing isn't it really and, and and it's how they put it over as well isn't it really if they f if you you know i think some people that played a long time ago it can, their speech can sound out of date but actually a different person delivering that speech would still make it sound very very interesting i'm sure you've been to dinners i've been to many uh, where um, you know i'll be honest with you you think oh, you know okay fair enough but others are probably telling almost similar type stories actually you you're, you're on edge you know yeah you and Frug's one of those He's, he yeah. just delivers things very well doesn't he 85 incredible here's bailey again it's wide of our stump yeah he still looks no very ball. well as well doesn't he yeah he does yeah yeah, I think the last time I saw him, he was in a corporate box at the UGS Bowl, actually, a few <laughs> years back. I mean, he obviously, obviously still gets invited, doesn't he, on his name. Very recognisable name, especially up here. But a great uh, great line that uh, Hampshire were one of four counties that offered him a deal. What were the other ones? Somerset? I think he mentioned Somerset was one, wasn't it? 108 for one. Still Gubbins facing. As Bailey comes in, it's good length. But Gubbins is right behind that one. Good over. Yeah, very, very good, good over, over there from Tom Bailey. One for 30 from his 10. Yeah, a couple of um, appeals in that over. And I'd say much better line and length, I think. Bringing all the dismissals into play. Bringing that LB and that them slip cordon back into play. Yeah. Tom Hartley carrying on from the tennis court end. David Burke, another who enjoyed uh, Farouk. One of my favourites of the 70s, along with Sir Clive Lloyd. Many happy memories, says David, and uh, saying thank you. Yeah. Speaking to Scott Reed and Tim Singleton, also said uh, had many happy childhood memories of his time at Lancashire. So it's going to be the left arm spin of Hartley. Is he staying over the week? No, it looks like he's coming round. Yeah, changed it up, come back round now, hasn't it? Yeah. Now, there shouldn't be as much on offer here, should there? Still early days. He's flighted that one. Middleton drives. I think, if anything, it'll be a bit more comfortable for Middleton here because, like you say, there's no rough patches to really think about now. No. And the wicket isn't really breaking up as yet, even if indeed it does. Comes in again. And Middleton's on the back foot. Steers that to Bohannon at uh, mid-wicket. Sun getting a little lower in the sky, providing some shade. Yeah, particularly in our area here, although well, we've had the umbrellas up, which is uh, given the shade anyway. As Middleton's on the back foot, steers that to extra cover this time. It's this, this side of the ground now, which is beginning to find the shade. Just this side of the boundary, the, the whole of the playing area is still bathed in sunshine. Middleton again off the back foot, steers that pleasantly up to mid off. There's the bobble in the outfield, which you see from time to time, but. I think that was uh, George Balderson in behind that nicely. Got his body behind that. There's a group of guys who have been warming up for a while, haven't they? Yeah. Just to our right. Getting looser and looser. Yeah, the, it's been, a, it's been a slow burn. Well, they seem to be getting there. So let's push back to the bowler. Uh, but there were three or four. Now they've been joined by three or four others. And... Uh, yeah, well, we've got six overs to get through. <laughs> <So> <laughs> hopefully, we'll get through it unscathed as that's driven to extra cover. And Villas throws the ball in at pace to Salt behind the stumps to end that over. Middleton 39, Gubbins 41. 108 for one, Hampshire in their second innings. We have six overs left. Hampshire trail by 124. Kevin James and uh, Callum Flynn from the England Phys Physical Disability team uh, taking you through these last few overs. I think Scott Reed probably just had enough. He's probably had enough of the day, isn't he? I don't think he'll come back. <laughs> he had his few minutes with Farouk Engineer and probably thinks yeah, I've done my bit. Exactly. Why does he have to now? <laughs> but good interview. He's an old pro, Scott Reed. Will Williams going back on? Hasn't bowled many overs from that uh, end. Even yesterday, I yeah. can't remember him bowling from the Howard Drive end at all, actually. It was all from uh, Grosvenor Road end. Bowled seven overs so far today, none for ten. Kept it real tight, as he always does, and Lancashire will be opening Nick's one late on here. Yes. 
So it's going to be Gubbins to face. 36 balls in theory to bowl this evening. Where are we in time-wise? All 23 minutes past. So it's going to be at least about a quarter to finish tonight. Even though we've had quite a few overs of spin. Here's Will Williams then. Bowls. Gubbins, I think, has played the line. I don't know what you think there, Callum. Yeah, it looks like he's just hit the bat behind the pad, hasn't he? Just, yeah. just one of them is where in the field you feel like you're interested, but the bat is totally under control. We're keeping very much half an eye on this hospitality area, just to our right. <laughs> <laughs> as much as the cricket. Looks like there's some WWE moves coming out, actually, from a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> Williams in, right arm over. Balls to Gubbins. Gubbins with a bottom hand, flicks that away to widish uh, mid on, but uh, can't find the gap. This guy remains on 108 for uh, one. So Bailey's completed 10 overs, one for 30. Uh, Jack Blatherwick has bowled seven overs, none for 28. Balderson, two overs, none for 12. And Hartley, six overs, sorry, eight overs, none for 22. Williams is in his eighth over here. None for 10. Economical as he was in the first innings, but uh, so far, unlike the first innings, wicketless. That's a good delivery as well. Gubbins thought about playing at that one. Just withdrew the bat away. Bold a probing line. Bailey and now Williams testing Gubbins here a little. Yeah, and that's what he always does, Will Williams. He always gets you challenging whether you have to leave or, or play the ball. He's always within that um, third, fourth, fifth stump channel. Constantly keeping you thinking on your toes. Right. Got an email here from Joe Parks, who, uh, if it wasn't read out earlier, apparently uh, it was sent in earlier and we missed it, so we're going to read it now. That's outside the off stump and that's left alone. Solentcricket at gmail.com. If you want to get some in today, you've got uh, just over five overs to do that. Hi, guys. I'm sending this again because my little boy says he hasn't heard it read out. Apologies if you have and he's missed out. Well, we don't matter. Even if we have, we'll do it again. My five-year-old son, Rory, is a huge Hampshire fan and has come back from school and tuned straight in to see how his team are doing. Uh, well, I have to say, Rory, they're doing a little better than they were uh, earlier today and even uh, certainly yesterday. Uh, but uh, they still have a lot to do, 108 for one. But some good batting between Middleton and Gubbins. Gubbins edges. Has that fallen short of first slip? It was low. We've seen a few the edges that haven't quite carried. It's difficult to tell when it's that low. Did it carry here? If you're watching on the live feed. Gubbins pushes forward, edged, short. Yeah, just, yeah, short. just short, about the half volley. So uh, Gubbins okay. Uh, so uh, he absolutely loves uh, both watching and playing cricket, does Rory, and he wants to be a Hampshire player in the future. Well, good luck with that, and uh, glad to give you a mention. As Gubbins flicks that away to wide mid on. Throw comes in, the bowler's in and hits the stumps, but Gubbins is home, I'm sure. Even though several of the Lancashire fielders have got around Gubbins have got excited. Didn't look as though he was in too much trouble. Would have been interesting if I got given as well as he... Him and Williams collided. They did, didn't they? So I don't think um, Gubbins would have been too happy. Yeah. There was definitely a collision there a little bit, which uh, hampered uh, Gubbins. Piece of fielding, uh, nevertheless. Uh, somebody was trying to talk to me there, just walking out of the tent. I had to ignore them. Uh, clearly, having microphones and head uh, headphones on doesn't uh, deter anybody. 109 for one. And uh, Hampshire trailing by 123. Both Middleton and Gubbins coming together with a score on 24. So they put on 76, 85 by my reckoning. Scott Reed is back. Thank you, Callum. Yeah, thanks, Callum. Yeah, 85 off 165. Excellent stuff, though, isn't it? Gubbins and, uh, and Middleton. Um, if, you, if, you, if it is getting a bit loud in the background, oh, but nothing too untoward is coming out. Uh, but so there's not much we can do. They're enjoying a, a, a good day in the tent. As Hartley's in and balls forward goes uh, Gubbins. There's uh, no run. Somebody's walking out with a half drunk bottle of Merlot. <laughs> Are you allowed to do that? <laughs> just, just pop it in the jacket, you know? No one will notice. But he's walking out with it. <laughs> Gubbins goes back, tries to cut the ball, but. And, uh, there's no run, 109 for one. 
It's a trail by 123. <laughs> Off pot the wine. Smuggle it out of the culprit tent. Over the wicket balls. Forward again. There's it. Gubbins. Pushed that away into the offside. No run. 109 for one. Trail by 123. So we have four and a half overs left. And today is Hartley. Balls again. Gubbins off the back foot. Punches into the offside. And there is uh, no run. Remains on 42. Slip. Leg slip and a short leg. Hartley again to Gubbins. That's defended away into the offside and there is no run. So the final ball of the over. Hartley it's the ninth of the innings. Balls again, a little flatter this time. And Gubbins goes right back and just nudges the ball away into the onside. And uh, there's no run. It certainly brought in the possibility of that short leg and the leg slipped the way he played that. But it completes the over. Four remaining tonight. And Hampshire doing a pretty decent job. It's 109 for one in their second innings. Trailed by 123. If you're watching the picture feed, there's the guys in the corporate tent just next to us. Uh, not Gubbins and Middleton, which are picture sweet <laughs> too. They're no, well away no. from that. No, uh, it's probably for the best. <laughs> Paul Williams has emailed silentcricket at gmail.com. He is the man who's in Portugal. And I think when he emailed earlier, I think today it was warmer here than it was in Portugal, I think he said. Uh, he says, the streaming has made my move to that country so much more enjoyable, as I do miss cricket and our friends a lot. As Williams comes in and bowls Middleton forward. He's gone out towards... The covers. Uh, hope, though, we do not see the counties adopt the Kent method. Lancashire TV is excellent. Do you know what, Kelly? Colin just went inside then when I read that out. He did, didn't he? He's always around when there's negative comments. <laughs> and then leaves, there yeah. was a chance to yeah. say a nice positive thing, and he weren't around. Actually, one positive thing all week. I know, and he's not there. <laughs> uh, but anyway, he's, well, he's sort of hanging around. He's, oh, he's back again, but he sort of missed that. Uh, no, you're right. And uh, if anybody's wondering what the Kent method is, uh, Kent, for this season, as Williams comes in, forward is Fletcher Middleton. Good stride into that one. Uh, for the T20s, Kent have decided to charge 5.99 for a home T20 game. Right. Uh, the, as my understanding was they didn't charge for the first one, okay. uh, but let everybody be known that they were going to. And I think members are free, but everybody else pays 5.99. Uh, for me, that's uh, for me. I think that's a first. I don't know any other counties that do. So I know what you're saying, Paul. That, uh, he hopes that's not catching and goes around the country. It's a wonderful service. I suppose it's a wonderful service even if you're paying, but it's obviously better when you're not. Outside the off stump, and that's uh, left alone. All the counties are offering it for free, but it's only T20's home games that can do that. Uh, and I was told when we were, because we were down there on Friday, uh, I was told that the first time they charged, 600 people paid the subscription. Okay. And uh, I think they played a game or two after that, right. and the numbers had slightly gone Good south, down, right. just slightly gone south of that, yeah. So make of that what you will. As Williams comes in, Middleton pushes that up to mid on. Stays on 39. Cubbins, 42. Good partnership from yeah. these two. Just what Hampshire needed, really, Absolutely. just to steady the ship because Joe Weatherly going at 24 for one it was a oh dear could this be another day where Hampshire's batting is not really up to it but these two have worked very very hard to get themselves to this position and certainly with three and a half overs left in the day they will not want to get out now no they've done all the hard work here haven't they they try and try and be there to start again in the morning certainly do Williams off the back foot there. Oh. Fletcher Middleton steers it through the covers. And that could be rolling down the hill, and that's going to be four runs. George Bell doing his best in the covers, diving to his left, but just hit with enough power from Middleton and just found enough of a gap. It's a good shot, isn't it? Nice shot. Waiting for it. Off the back foot. Punched away through the offside. Good looking shot. Good knock this. Good response. He's, he's, he's not had a. It's not been a, a game so far that's gone his way. He out for naught in the first dig, and we mentioned the, the drop catch when Salt was batting, but he's making amends here. Yeah. Nicely put together, 43. 
been impressed with him. Yeah, he's, he's got a nice technique, hasn't he? Nice temperament as well. Yeah, as I was saying, I think, um, you know, he could be in for the long haul, I think. Don't often say that about players, do you? You wait a while before you can make your minds up. That's outside the off stump. And that is left alone. Hearing of thunderstorms in Lee, in Lancashire. OK. According mm. to uh, Steve Pictall. That's where Callum's Indians. from. Oh, is it? Mm. Well, don't, well, don't rush back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you just had a text to say the same. Oh, really? Oh, it's hit a tree near your dad. Oh, my gosh. He's OK, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So violent thunderstorms was uh, not over the top as that's pushed back to the bowler. There was talk about one or two here, but uh, we're so far we're OK. Yeah, so, uh, there's nothing scheduled on the forecast to suggest that it will uh, materialise on this part of, uh, of Lancashire. And 15 for one, that's the end of the over. 91 run partnership. Middleton and Gubbins. They got left to try and get through tonight. Is it three overs? Yeah, three overs r remaining tonight. And if they're back tomorrow, it uh, represents a, a, a very solid start to a, a recovery and a way to try and fight themselves back into the game for Hampshire. Yeah. Well, there was talk about this game ending tomorrow, but I think uh, a bit more of the same. We're into day four. Hartley bowls. Goodwin's off the back foot, and that's uh, played gently back down the pitch, and there's no run. Have a little look at some of the scores elsewhere, actually, as we come towards the end of the, uh, the day's play. I don't know how many games are currently uh, in action. It's forward in defence by Gubbins, and there's no run. And just this game and the game at Canterbury in play at the minute in Division 1. Hartley to, uh, to Gubbins, left arm over the wicket. Forward again in defence, no run. Essex 15 for 1 in their second innings. They lead Somerset by 310. Oh. Going into the third day. And Nottinghamshire 82 for 5. At the close of play, still trail Warwickshire by 489 runs. Whoa. Good side this year, Warwickshire. Mm. Seems to go in cycles for Warwickshire, doesn't mm. it? They seem to have a good year, followed by a bit of a dodgy one, and followed by a good one. I'll be honest with you, two years ago, when, of course, it came down to that game at Liverpool, virtually, uh, and Warwickshire won it that year, I, I, I'll be honest with you, my personal view was that Warwickshire weren't the best team that year, and yet they won the championship. I think, you know, I think more deserving would have been us or you. I agree, yeah. In fact, I think Paul Farbrace, I think he was at Warwick at the time, was saying that maybe it was perhaps a little bit ahead of schedule as to where they wanted it to be. Mm. So, in a strong position in that match at Trent Bridge, as indeed are Essex. So both those games have come to a, a conclusion on the second day. A bit of a delay while an extra helmet being brought out. So, four around the bat. There's a Oh, they bring us Gubbins, Gubbins forward in defence. And there is uh, no run. 115 for one. Gubbins on 42. Tossed up by Hartley. Oh dear. Oh, that, the <laughs> thoughts of a run and they've decided against it. It was all a, a little bit kind of frantic, that wasn't it? Don't do anything silly now. No. Could have been sent back. There wasn't really much need to try and run there, really. Final ball of the uh, of the over. Lamb into Gubbins. Just snakes past the edge of the bat and uh, through to the keeper. That's the end of the over. So 115 for one, two overs left just to, to complete those uh, those scores. Mentioned the Essex and the uh, uh, Nottinghamshire games. Uh, both have reached a, a conclusion on uh, day two. Kent and Surrey is, is in play, but uh, I think the old Wi-Fi has given up on me. 
<laughs> Tell me to help you out. Yeah, if, you, if you've got it. Yeah, I'll just go through it. Yeah, I've not got them. Sure. I'll come to those in a minute then, just gonna. So, two hours to go on day two. 115 for one. Hampshire trail by 117. And Will Williams. Not for 17 from his nine overs. Will bowl his last over today, his 10th. Comes in right arm over and bowls, driven by Fletcher Middleton. Out into uh, the covers. And uh, there is uh, no run. Right, here we go. Uh, you mentioned Essex Somerset. Uh, Kent Surrey, you've mentioned, haven't you? Oh, I think you've uh, mentioned all the Division One ones. Didn't you? mention Kent Surrey. No. Oh, Kent Surrey, okay. So uh, they're still playing. Kent are 159 for three in their second innings, lead Surrey by 315. Sorry, all out for 145 earlier. Who would have thought Kent would be leading by such a large margin against the strongest side in the division outside the off stump, and that's uh, left alone. So well done to them. Their batting hasn't been that great this year either. Uh, so that's all the Division 1 it scores is. taken yeah, care of. Yeah. Uh, division 2, uh, apart from Sussex, Worcestershire, they've all finished. Uh, in the game between Sussex and Worcestershire, Worcestershire 401 for nine, replying to Sussex is 348 all out, so they lead by 53 with one wicket remaining. The other games that are already closed for the day, Derbyshire 248 for four in their second innings against Yorkshire. They lead by six with six wickets remaining, that's outside the Ostump left alone. Uh, Durham 4, 11 for 5 against Glamorgan, 390 all out. So Durham lead by 21 runs with five wickets remaining. And the other close of play score in Division 2. Leicestershire 23 without loss, replying to Gloucestershire's 368 all out. So they trail by 345 with all of their first innings wickets remaining. You are up to date with all the county cricket that is going on around the country. All those matches are day two of four. Is uh, Will Williams coming in once more to Middleton? Middleton just plays that late behind square on the offside. Call through by Gubbins. 116 for one now, Hampshire. Uh, just uh, read out this email actually that I've got from uh, Michael Brennan, son of cricket at gmail.com. Probably not worth really mentioning the email anymore until tomorrow thanks for the coverage says michael feel hot watching but we'll see if i can get in tomorrow having forgotten my password to buy online yeah, apparently um, i got an email earlier to say that uh, you could get tickets uh, online via the old trafford uh, website but uh, as we also learnt, that 15 pound on the gate will also get you in there's no worries about uh, turning up and being turned away apparently uh, i did speak directly to the gate people so they said no worries so don't worry about the password. <laughs> As uh, Williams comes in. Lost to Gubbins this time. Short one. Gubbins ducks underneath. Uh, Michael just finishes off by saying, um, well done competing with the guys just to your right. Uh, my late uncle Gerard was a wicketkeeper for the RAF during his national service, and he often spoke about uh, Mr. Engineer. So, uh, yeah. It's been a highlight of the day, isn't it? Yeah, Hearing great. From Farouk. Have you not had him on before? Yeah, yeah. I've had him quite, oh, a, quite a few times, but probably not for... A probably four or five years actually probably since last time we, we got him right. on comms for a bit thunder and lightning in Hesketh Bank 10 miles from here Ooh. every time I mention a place these two look at me as if I'm asking them about somewhere in China that's a push down to th oh it's misfielded down at third <laughs> they'll come back for another one. well that ball was just trickling uh, down to Jack Blatherwick and somehow he's made a complete hash of that and I, how many how many have run there three yeah, three. And there was a just a jog through one, really. Uh, so 10 miles away, there's thunderstorms and lightning. Actually, the temperature has dropped a fraction. It has a bit, yeah. yeah. Apparently, the guy in red was Glen Chapel. Oh, no, it might not have been, says Glen Woolworth. Nobody's sure. <laughs> uh, end of the over. <laughs> Six balls left. Hampshire, 119 for one, trail by 113. Yeah, I think we're going to. I think, well, obviously, yeah, could be in for a bit of a wet evening, perhaps, potentially in Southport by the looks of the uh, radar. That uh, horrible thunderstorm that passed over where Callum lives. I can see that on the radar, and that's potentially coming our way. So, might get a bit of rain later on. Final over of the day. Hartley in, balls. Gubbins defends. No run. 45 to Gubbins, 44 to Middleton. 
It's 119 for one. And Tom Hartley with four around the bat, all crouching down. He's in and bowling. Forward again goes Gubbins. Back the pad together, just leaning into it. The ball deflects away past or back towards the bowler. So there's a silly point, leg slip, short leg and slip. Again, Nick Gubbins off the front foot. Angles down into the ground, picked up at slip, and there's no run. So th three dot balls to start the final over of the of the day. Hartley balls again. And Gubbins with a good stride down the pitch, <laughs> and there's no run. Big stride. It was. I just wonder if the spinners are slowly but surely coming into the game. I just hope from a Hampshire point of view the game's not too far gone, even now. Hartley to Gubbins goes back this time. And gently, calmly plays it back along the, the ground to Tom Hartley, gives the ball a bit of a polish. And this is the final ball of the, of the day's play. Tom Hartley to, uh, to Gubbins, who goes back, I suspect, maybe just a little bit quicker from... Uh, Hartley fizzed in for the final ball of the of the second day's play. And that concludes play for today. And that's an, an excellent partnership between Middleton and Gubbins. 95 runs they've put on together. And um, both batters missing out like many of the Hampshire batters did in their first innings. But both these two batters making amends second time round. And... It's a good fight back by Hampshire at the back end of this second day in a game that has largely belonged to Lancashire, but Hampshire have, have really fought hard there, Kevin with the bat, and they give themselves something to, or plenty to work with, actually, going into the third day. Yeah, I mean, they played a missed a bit, a bit like uh, uh, Lancashire did in their uh, first innings. There's still a bit in it for the pitch, and, of course, the second new ball, when it's due a bit later on, will also provide... Uh, another stern test, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think Hampshire will certainly be happier with the second half of the day. But uh, you just feel that uh, too much damage has already been done, and it's just a matter of time for Lancashire. They might have to fight a little harder uh, to win this game, but uh, yeah, at least Hampshire has shown something. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks, Callum. Comes back tomorrow, aren't you? Yep, lovely. Kevin's still here with us tomorrow as well, which is excellent. Um, so we'll, we'll, three of us will be back with you uh, tomorrow for the uh, the third day of this uh, of this game with 119 for one on the board for Hampshire in their second innings so still trailed by 113 runs it's a start second time round for Hampshire can they continue it on the third day in a day where Phil Salt picked up and secured and scored his first championship century for Lancashire from myself and the team that's the match summary that's where we're at to at Hampshire 142 all out in the first innings, three wickets for Williams, three for Bailey. Lancashire roaring past them, thanks to Salt and Mitchell in particular, with six wickets for Felix Organ to make 374. And then Hampshire with a close of play, 119 for one. And there's Gubbins and Middleton to resume uh, unbeaten, the pair of them tomorrow morning. End of play on day two, Hampshire trail by 113 runs. That's it from Southport and Burtdale. We'll catch you tomorrow morning. <laughs>